All right. Hopefully. And let me just check. It's on a different window. Can we hear everyone? Let's see. Well, it says we're live. Okay. Make sure that they can hear you and then they can hear me. Yeah. I also need to change the name of the stream. Let's see what it should be. Okay, it's all my things are not muted in OBS, so I can I can see the bar on my end going up. And yeah, I, can you see uh, my bar yep, moving around? I can. It, it's also okay. captured on my microphone, but my setup's not exactly perfect. Uh, okay, just make sure that there's not reverb for the audience to hear. Yeah. Oh, people are actually watching. Hello. Let's just ask chat. Can you all hear us? Yeah. <laughs> Volume's very low. Okay. Let's bring that up here. Bring mine up around here. Yeah, if you have to, just you could turn down your headset like I have, and yeah. then just you know, usually you want yeah. the the average thing being said to be dipping into the red. Okay, that's what I do. Make it loud enough so everybody can hear us and nobody complains. Okay, I'll I'll do that. Um, I don't actually wear headphones because I'm one of those unfortunate people who <laughs> who build up earwax in their ears. Um with prolonged ear headphone use. So I actually can't do that because it'll just block my ears. Cause that's oh, okay. fine. Yeah. So I don't, I don't wear headphones if I can help it. Did it's you get that through earbuds? Uh, yeah, uh, both. Um, I think with earbuds, it's worse. Headphones, headphones, I yeah. at least, um, had some breathing room, so to say, so I can wear those a bit longer, but yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> All right, everyone says we're good. Uh, I can hear you, but I recommend bumping your volumes up. I'll do that. To the yeah, like I said. Usually, when it's uh, when the you know the audio is uh, bumping around, you want it to be yellow on average for just speaking normally, yep. and then um, mm -hmm. a, when you speak up a little bit louder, then it bumps into the red. That's mm -hmm. where I like to keep it. And people are usually able to hear everything. And then you just basically turn down my voice on your end for what you are listening to. But you, you know, keep everything high when it comes to uh, Streamlabs OBS. If yeah. That's what you're uh, using. All right. Yeah, that's the way that I do it. Xander.exe says it's perfect. So, okay. Hello. Okay. Hello, guys. Today, we're going to discuss the ethics and the viability of the Weeb Ethnostate with Louis Laveau. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, back to Laveau. Formerly <laughs> Levi, back to Laveau. Yeah, well, I, I, I was, I was a long subscriber. I don't know if you remember this, but in 2015, um, Sargon shared a video from your channel. This is when you were really new, and I actually tweeted, mm -hmm. "Was like, hey, Sar Sargon recommended you, so I subscribed." And I'm like, "Yeah, you're a great channel." That was five years. Ago. That was six years ago, actually. Mm -hmm. So it's that been was a long while. fucking time ago. Yes, it's uh, been quite the ride, I can say. <laughs> yeah, I, I was around when everyone thought it was Lewis. But Sarge... yeah, it's when I was saying Lewis. It's yeah. when I was saying Lewis. But then I had I had uh, Carl come down on me. He's like, you know, you should be saying Louis Levi, and I felt like a fucking asshole for not <laughs> saying it. And then here we are, years later, where I, I like I don't know if it was with the stream with him. It might have been that, but. I just had a ton of people, including a bunch of Frenchies, come down on me 
yeah, and say you should I, not be saying Vi. It's not Vi. It's yeah. Vo. It was a and I it was a stream after he left. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, he yeah. Left. Well, I uh, I do know that you are supposed to say Louis because I have actually talked to somebody who is French and they say you should say Louis. But yeah, this it's is why, not. This it's is not why really. Don't trust. Don't trust Brits to know how to pronounce French names. They don't like them. Yes. Anyway. Yes. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they have a stake to to have it be said wrong just to put a little salt in the wound. Yeah. But uh, you know, being that it is a pseudonym, it's not really I'm not really that serious about it. Um, but you know, I guess it pays to to not embarrass yourself. Although even in the case that it is somewhat embarrassing mm -hmm. uh of a mistake, I don't know that I would necessarily uh really care that much about the mistake. Because I think that uh, if it's really only the people that really get into sort of like playing up the character of like, basically you invent a character for yourself and then you really start getting into it. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of cringe. Yeah. So that's not really what I'm about. So <laughs> I just left chat. It is what it is. I just left chat a sneaky little present in the browser. I wonder if they'll find it. <laughs> All right, so for the topics, uh, what yeah. would you like to get into? Yeah, so um, we got a few topics today, but we're not we're not going to be too strict as we go, and we'll try to try to I'll try to look at the chat as well because I'm actually sitting a bit far from the browser. Um, so today we're basically going to talk about um, why gatekeeping is good, uh, why why Australia should stop banning light novels. That'd be nice. Thank you, Sterling. Uh, anime. We're going to talk about some games. Uh, we'll talk about some politics stuff, so like conservatism and how to defeat the left and how we can we can hurt our our progress trying to do that. Um, and just stuff we've been doing lately. So I guess we'll start okay. off with, and we'll start on the topic I'm actually familiar with. We'll we'll do the we'll do the light novel bands. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with this, Louis. Um, what what do you know about Australia and light novels? Well, I am aware, obviously, through the you know the the closeness to the source. I would imagine that there's a a lot greater cultural uh, exchange, <clears throat> um, and it may be one sided because it seems like. Japan, despite its many culture, uh, societal issues, I'll put it like this, um, even though I see people deny them, and I've seen people use, um, a variety of people use Japan as basically like a superior state. Uh, yeah. it, uh, uh, I can say into, that we're I... Gonna get into how, we're going to get into how that's not true, despite my name. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I don't, really, I don't really want to get much into that because I find it to be an incredibly self-defeating argument that if you take like a real objective look at Japan, like there, there isn't really much to it that can, it can actually brag about other than a very sudden and swift uh, rise in cultural significance in the world. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the only thing by which that you could actually praise Japan. Um, yeah, the, that, the cultural exports are, are why we even consider Japan on the global scale. It's because they export yes. so much good cultural stuff, stuff you but would enjoy. Out outside of that, I don't really think there's anything more that Japan could <laughs> brag about because yeah. despite what people like to say, like, oh, lol, they got a base uh, domestic policy as it relates to immigration. That's basically the one area in which that that people can even say is a strength because outside of that, their government is really stagnant, contradictory, um, incredibly establishment that they don't really seem to be doing much to sort of try to get out of the the very clear decline that their country's in. Yeah. And this is coming from an American. Like I, I'm well aware of the fact that the, our country is falling the fuck apart. But I'm not Can't in be any worse than Australia. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I would say are. that if you say that, but I don't know if you really understand how bad it is here. Things right here uh today are getting really bad. And it's 
getting to the point now where I think that there is like, and I've heard through basically the grapevine of even friends and family that the the worry in the United States of like basically the like all the agencies underneath the umbrella of the Department of Homeland Security, which includes a lot of domestic security agencies and and the rest of it, intelligence mm-hmm. agencies, that they are basically going into and vetting all of their agents. They're trying to sniff out anyone that is basically a Trump supporter. They are hounding them. They're going after them. They are raiding them. They are arresting them. They are investigating them. They're launching Mm -hmm. investigations on them. So basically imagine the, imagine America after nine 11, except for in this case, the enemies are, are Americans. Like, there's a lot of scary things that are going on here. And I'm not just saying that for the sake of like, oh, woe is me. Like I've had friends and family basically say that uh, ICE, like I have somebody that's a friend of the family that works in ICE. I have somebody that works um, in the DOJ. And it, it's like across the board hmm. that all of these agencies, and I'm, I'm making a point about DHS because that seems to be where it's significant, that they're basically doing what Obama did, except for it's basically like we're going to set it up so that no matter what happens in the future, you know, if a Republican comes back in power, basically you're going to have nothing but just naked partisans as agents for the state that are never going to do anything you tell them to. Mm. So I would say that while I imagine that Australia has its fair share of problems, you know, People have all kinds of like defenses for the United States, like you know, hella based Second Amendment and all that. But it's like I would, I would, I would say First Amendment personally. No, nah, that's that's going away. That's that's kind mm. of like a piece of paper and a, a, a like a myth. Um, I I I like I am very glad that I like into college. I made the decision to switch all of my social media from. Uh, public where i had my name out there to anonymous to the best of my ability i'm yeah, very I, glad I, that i, I made I did that, that decision over time as well except on my facebook which no one it, that's a private account anyway so no one can see it right but i can <clears> tell you that based on my own experience of when i was a private investigator all the way until now like we are we are in the united states we are getting to the point where i mean it's scary it's like if you have any opinion out there that is in any way contradictory to basically the permanent narrative of the establishment, the you will not be able to get a job anywhere, and you may be investigated by the federal government, mm. and you might lose all your friends and family who are shit scared that they are going to be tainted by you. Like, uh, you know, it, I, I can't compare exactly what other countries would be like, because I'm sure every... Every nation has their own tale of woe, but in the United States, I can say that at least from my position, things have really taken a turn for the negative. And I'm just talking about within ten years. Like the dif- the difference between 2010 and now is unbelievable. Hmm. And the issue is, is that like people say, like, and there's a sort of like this general idea of, well, they can't fire us all, they can't arrest us all. Uh, and there is some truth to the idea of like, they can't arrest us all. There is some truth to that. And and Sargon and I, Carl, Benjamin and I debated that very recently Yeah. because I think that he's actually a bit too black filled on this particular topic and he's failing to understand the nature of basically the difference between power and the ability to wield it. Um, that basically if you have nothing but of an army of incompetence to enact what you want to do that you basically set yourself up for failure because if they're unable to do anything but fall on their face and it provides the people you're trying to oppress a lot more mobility to move around them. So um, there's a, that advantage that I think he's not really taking on as, as, as a position. But it's really different to the point where now, um, to where the argument is basically we need to try to take over the system before we're basically genocided or freaking Tim pool's argument that we need to uh, move into the middle of the woods and pretend they're never going to come for us. Like that's basically where we are. 
Mm. And I saw like a poll the other day where it's like some unbelievable amount of people in the United States, like tens and tens of millions of people think that we are inevitably heading to a civil war. So yeah, I, all I can say is that things are not very good right here in this country right now. Mm. And uh, like I said to you before we went live, it seems that there are, um, despite the insistence of people like uh, Stick Sexenhammer, who I think is a good guy, who is generally right about a lot of things, um, he constantly craps on the mainstream media for obvious reason that it's awful. But one of the things that I have learned over time, especially in the last year, are the amount of people that are are that from our position would be normies who have been basically radicalized by the mainstream media to view anyone who differs from basically the mainstream consensus, the narrative, as basically evil or domestic terrorists or insane. Or it's really amazing to me to the degree that um, it's people you run into on the street or even friends and family in my own, you know, in my own place where I, I'm not becoming like you could say that I've become more radicalized as an argument and I, I wouldn't exactly deny it. But at the same time, it seems that a lot of people that are regarded as normies have really radicalized to where they are just whatever they're being told, that is the truth and they're not questioning it. And if you are questioning it, like either you're going to be shot or you're evil. And all I can say is that as much as people crap on the mainstream media, it is it is indoctrinating and radicalizing tens of millions of people. Mm -hmm. So things in the United States, they're not good at the moment. Sorry, I'm just getting a headphone out because I've been getting comments saying that um, you're echoing and I and I know why. It's because oh. my because of my microphone picking up the picking well, up the, the thing. Uh, but I don't know. Put, put one ear on. That's all I can say. Put one ear on because that's uh, what well, I. This is the only. This is actually the only um, um, headphone that has one ear anyway because it's a shitty fucking PS4 thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we could talk about Sony Sony all day, but. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I, I guess getting back to your your point about. Um, uh, was it was it just the this the state of um, uh, just the Japan's of, influence or no? Um, so so basically, basically the story goes that in Australia we had uh, last year we had this um, these politicians from a party called the SA Best Party, which is a South Australian party, um, and there was a. There was a campaign led by two politicians named Sterling Griff and Connie Bonaros. I think is how you pronounce her name. Griff uh, and Con. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Connie the commie, I called her. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Is that her politics? May as well be, considering what, what ended up happening. So they started this campaign um, to get the Australian Classification Board, which is a government-regulated body, not, a, not an independent one like the ESRB. Yeah, um, I know. They yeah, they did a campaign basically to say there are all these anime and Japanese things that are uh quote unquote child porn and uh they're just slipping through the cracks and they're being used to groom children by pedophiles, which is complete fucking bullshit by the way. And if if anyone dares say that to me in my to my face, I will punch their throat. Um so so they had this whole thing where it's like, "Oh, anime is an e is a blight on society and you need to ban it because of incest and pedo and all that shit. So he started a whole inquiry about that and it it got to a point where um the classification board for some reason was like we can't just ban anime because it's not real, right? And I'm like, wow, if only you said that about literally everything you banned, right? But yeah. Um so so they decided, okay, we won't do the anime thing. We'll go after the light novels instead. And one of the ways they went after light novels was Connie, but Connie the commie um, called a bookstore in a completely separate state in Sydney, New South Wales. So she doesn't even work there. She called them up, harassed them, and threatened them with government action to get rid of these books. 
and then they acquiesced and got rid of them. And then that same bookstore submitted those light novels to the board to get them rated. And guess what happened? They got banned because you submitted them. You didn't need to submit books to the board because there are so many books that would take forever, right? So books actually have an exemption from classification, which is very different from video games and and movies. Yeah. So, so we just had fucking books being banned left and right. Um, the there's now a a fucking third party black market of these books where they go for hundreds of dollars each because they're banned, but they still have stock somewhere. And right. Well, and as a result, um, the publisher for for these books um, decided to just blacklist the entire fucking country from getting stock directly from them. So now all businesses in Australia have to go through third party sellers or resellers to get any stock at all from Yen Press is their name. So that's just a whole clusterfuck of bullshittery. Well, I, I can say, you know, one of the things that I found, because I don't really think that it's unique to Australia, although the the particular dynamic of what occurred, the you know the events that occurred in this, are are maybe somewhat unique. But I can say that the 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 mm. angle that the government, uh, the governments and the politicians primarily, I, I should say more of the politicians, because mm -hmm. it seems that they they take up this issue for the sake of you know it's it's sec it's effectively a red herring for mm -hmm. doing something that they want to prove that they're doing something so they'll do this because they yeah. know that if they, they basically know that the 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 demographic of the people that are concerned um about these things are going to be uh Boomers. very generally white and nerdy mm -hmm. and male and they do not fucking care about those demographics. They don't care about like nerdy men and their hobbies. They don't care. They don't see that there's any money in caring. They don't see that there's any political capital in caring. And they know that if they attack these uh, either hobbies or materials as media, that no one is going to defend them publicly. So yeah. it is the perfect is the perfect uh, topic or. Um, what would be the best way of it's basically a way of garnering like what would be like uh, free real estate the the equivalent of yeah you're headed in the right direction it's basically <laughs> taking the the meme of a crumb of pussy to a <laughs> crumb of political capital yeah like they're so desperate to stand on any issue that they find this one mm. that it's so easy to attack it and say well like listen here's some like like they'll they'll take something where it's effectively like close to lowly, but it's maybe like something where um it, it's something like it's really it is like a light novel where it's it's like sort of like manga, but it's not really hentai, yeah. like like sort of etchy kind of stuff where it's implication or innuendo or it's it's not really fan in, like in the insane shit yeah. that's out there. Like they're not taking the most extreme examples, and I've seen this before. When they could take the most extreme examples, and then it would make it far harder to defend that. But the thing is, they don't even do that. They will, and I've seen this a million times back when I covered this years ago. That they would take the most tepid examples and then lie about the material. But the issue is, is that like no one defends it no one actually says like is this material like are you actually accurately representing the material yeah i actually and the have, answer is no yeah i have a perfect example of what you're saying so a lot of the light novels that have been banned so far um all have lolly fan service or at least lolly characters represented but one of the one of the one of the shows that sterling went after was goblin slayer um if you know what goblin slayer is you ever you remember that i whole I didn't watch it, but I'm relatively familiar with it. Yeah, you're, like that. so you're aware of the of the stuff that drove SJWs crazy, where it's um, yes. goblins raping people. Okay, Sterling decided, in a brilliant smooth brain tactic, to say that Goblin Slayer is about little girls getting raped by goblins and enjoying it. The, specifically, the words "enjoying being raped." 
He said that just in front of parliament, no evidence given, just said that's what it was about, which is not at all. I, I own all the, all the manga so far. I own several light novels from that. It's, it's not banned, thankfully, because, because he's just, he just fragrant, fragrantly fucking lied to everyone. So yeah, that, well, that, the, the that issue is, is that most, most people, um, and this has been my experience, just wh whenever I've talked about these kind of things, mm -hmm. uh, and it's one of the reasons why I, I basically stopped talking about it and it's not for any noticed, real reason, yeah. like with, with intention, but it's because like, I, I would say that basically the feminists, and that is basically the perspective of why these things are being attacked. It's, it's the feminists that are largely going after those things yeah it, uh, in the united well, states connie, like we have yeah with yeah, connie actually she is working with a she is because they did a whole article a fluff piece about it she's in she's in talks with this japanese activist group that also is trying to get lolly stuff banned in japan itself yeah so, so yeah I, are, i'm also aware of like um there there's like a, a part of japan where i've seen this to the new york times actually that basically the the american export of like woke and feminism and all that kind of like base and and even like not even like traditional like what you could consider third wave but like fourth wave sjw insane woke shit mm -hmm. like that is now in japan it's now spreading in japan they're getting coverage they're getting promoted they're going to get eventually they're going to get ngo money from somebody mm -hmm. and then it's going to be everywhere in japan and I think that the people that think that Japan is based and all that, they're they're very much in for a rude awakening because as far as I can tell, Japan is they they're very much clinging to certain ideas and they're very much clinging to the idea of like what is Japanese and what isn't. Yeah, they're very but the insular. fact is Yeah. They're gonna find that eventually the NGOs are gonna manage to thread the needle. They're gonna manage to find a way to to bypass that particular issue as they have everywhere yeah and then they are going to steamroll because the fact is is that there is no actual as far as i can tell like a right wing in japan like it doesn't exist like there is no nationalist movement in japan it's basically not, not explicitly a hand, no i think there's like the, um some politicians maybe or there's a handful the Democrats of are in charge but a handful right of of a handful of fringe politicians mm -hmm. and some random faggots on like image boards <laughs> like and i and this is the thing like i've had a couple run-ins with japanese nationalists and they're kind of just like they're they're i, I don't really want to name drop any kind of audiences but there are certain audience that that would consider themselves to be nationalists that are just awful mm. like they're just really mean and really nasty and they just talk a lot of shit um that's been my experience with Japanese nationalists. They're just yeah. kind of like, they're not like I, I had exposure to other nationalists, including like British nationalists and even some Polish nationalists and other sort of nationalists, French nationalists, Canadian nationalists. I've had exposure to uh, Brazilian nationalists and they all seem to basically like, Hey, let's get along. We're all basically on the same team because we're not looking to interfere in each other's nations. We want everyone to be prosperous in our own nations. And so we basically can link up, in that we want national sovereignty and other such things for our own nations. And we're not really opposed to one another and we don't really shit talk one another, <clears throat> but that's, I've had the opposite, opposite experience with ja uh, Japanese nationalists. They yeah, seem to be I've particularly had, nasty. Yeah. I've had a similar experience, not with nationalism from Japan, but from a, uh, because, uh, should I just bring up the whole Twitter drama I got into? So basically, um, you you mentioned the whole steamrolling thing in Japan, and they just won't be ready for it. Um, I agree, and one of the reasons they won't is because, from the in the online sphere, that uh, a lot of Japanese users who cling to their laws like God, like Socrates, like God, um, yeah, they they see, they seem to believe that the whole SJW problem is just going to be limited to the internet, and therefore you can. You can purity test They're and insane. gatekeep um, foreigners who are trying to help you because, well, you don't agree with my particular copyright law, so you deserve to get kicked out, you savage. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, come on, dude. This is the, this is not the hill to die on. I, 
it it <laughs> went from being like that was the argument of like we're gonna eventually get to the topic of you know basically conservatism dying yes yeah. and uh i can tell you that in the united states i mean every i mean every freaking agency in the united states government and i'm talking about marines army air force any anything related to the pentagon any intelligence agency they're all woke hmm. they're all actively promoting these things now so what, what went from college campuses in 2010 is now in the fucking dod and there's yeah. nothing more taken more seriously in washington dc than the pentagon all the intelligence agencies there's nothing more serious than that which is and exactly what it's, it's, um joe mccarthy warned by the way um, yes I've, yes I've been, I've been reading a book um it's written by m stanton evans it's called blacklisted by history and i've been reading basically his journalistic journey into um clearing joe mccarthy's name like the more you read the more it's like Oh my God, McCarthy was one hundred percent right. We need to kick all these fucking communists out now because yeah, it, yeah. I, it, I mean, the infiltration the, the is, is that... so bad that, like, I remember a section where he's talking is like, um, there were communists in the U.S. government that were deliberately trying to get the U.S. and Japan to fight each other. Yes, which is, yes. So there's not, there's he a wasn't million saying that examples there were, like that. Yeah, he wasn't saying that. Oh, um, they caused Japan to bomb Pearl Harbor, but there are what he's saying is there are agents there are people in the government that want certain outcomes to happen yes and it's yes. so fucked and, up. and so to, crazy. It, to to deny that i mean it, the problem is is that in the united states context you have to understand that um the idea of um mccarthy and the idea of uh he was in the senate i believe and there was the house uh committee on un-american activities yes which, which was he in, was not a member house. of from what yes I he was not part of he was in the senate this was the house mm -hmm. they had two separate things and the problem is with both of those examples it was it in in our history i was raised through my parents through education through the media through movies that the consistent view was all of this was nothing but a witch hunt. None of this was real. And the reality is that they kept catching communists. Yeah, exactly. So you can't call something, label something a witch hunt if you keep catching witches. And the only time where you stop catching witches is when you stop looking. And that's what happened. Yeah. And the perfect example is that in New York State, localizing to my state, I forget the name of the committee, but there's basically an anti-corruption task force that was created in New York State because this state is very much like Illinois, where it is insanely fucking corrupt. Yeah. And the thing is about it is that it is simply extremely incestuous so that I know somebody, you know somebody, therefore you get the job your buddy gets the job and we all get kickbacks through Nepotism. taxpayer dollars that's basically standard operating procedure for new york mm. it's that kind of model and the thing is about it they created that committee to take on corruption it kept finding corrupt politicians and it got it convicted it like pursued investigations prosecuted and, and convicted like over a dozen and a half politicians in a short span of time and they eventually, Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo, our current insane governor, got rid of it single-handedly because, in, in, in basically in cooperation with the other politicians in the state, the reason being, they kept getting, on both sides of the aisle, insanely corrupt politicians. Yeah. So they got rid of it. <clears throat> the reason being, it wasn't that they weren't finding anyone, it was because it, it was, was too effective. Them. It was finding them. Yes. That's why. And what was amazing about it is that it was basically like looking at like you're playing a game and it's like one of the mafia games where you're trying to get to you're starting at the bottom with like the, basically the associates to the soldiers to the lieutenants to the captains to the boss like it was working its way up to Andrew Cuomo hmm. and that's when they got rid of it. So How it's like a meme, is. but the, yeah, yeah, it really was. But that is the state of New York hmm. and um. The, the point is, though, that with the nature of uh, government, you should <clears throat> it, it, like the problem is basically trying to get people to approach the situation in a manner 
where apathy and just it's either denial, apathy, or um, I, I don't know, just I guess laziness. Although that's a, it's like a synonym for apathy. Yeah. Unfortunately, everyone is willing to accept the idea that the government is corrupt and these co- politicians are corrupt. But then it's like, okay, what should we do? And a lot of people just aren't willing to take that step forward. And I saw some, a few people actually, the uh, you know, in, in the last few days, talk about this. Hmm. And it's something that I find to be true as well. That unfortunately, irrespective of what nation we're talking about, I think I could apply this just as easily to Australia or any other nation that's at least to some degree Western. I won't speak for Eastern nations because they have their own little way of doing things over there. <laughs> yeah. But to any sort of Western standard. Um, it seems that the, what we could call the majority, it, you, when you say that you're speaking for the silent majority, you're not, you could, you could basically say that, but a more truthful way of putting it is that you're speaking for the apathetic majority, mm. that the majority of people may want some sort of change, but they don't want to fucking do anything. The, they don't want to have speaking about any the, involvement. The low information voters. It's not even that. It, like I, I, I've had way too much exposure to the idea of, you know, because the idea was saying low information voter. The implication of that is that these people are either ignorance, so they don't know, or they're just dumb. <laughs> and I don't find that to actually reflect reality. I find it that people understand certain things, that things are going on. But they just either, I find the more true analogy to be they don't give a shit or they don't really want to rock the boat. They don't really want to do anything. And it's like, well, you say Andrew Cuomo is corrupt. What is the response? Well, what can you do? Or, well, every politician's corrupt. Hmm. And those two statements are two sides of the same coin, which is apathy, Hmm. not wanting to do anything. And... I the the problem is basically the the thing that I've changed over time. If you were to say that I've radicalized in one way or another, it's through the idea, or basically you could say, you know, evolved on my politics. It is to say that I think that the the idea of wanting to win over the bulk of society is the totally wrong way to look at politics. Well, yeah, because the majority would just do, vote for welfare ahead. states. Because it's just easier that way. They vote for convenience. A not form for, of it. Not, yeah, they vote yes, for convenience. I, I not would real say politics. for convenience. Yes, I, I would say that that's that's the more likely way uh, or the more truthful way of putting it. Yeah, uh, which is why reflective um, way. Yeah, which is why in the Western Australia election, um, Emperor Labor Labor leader Mark McGowan won a supermajority in like forty oh, wow. minutes after the vote was counted. Um, I I did volunteering on the day for the election because I was doing it for the uh, the liberal. Oh, good Democrat. for you! Yeah, thank you. I was doing it for the liberal Democrats, which is our libertarian party, our classical liberal party. Um, mm-hmm. Their name is not great because um, one of the problems. Yeah, it's, is you can associate it with um, the liberal the liber party. Demo- yeah. Yes, and the liberal Democrats in the UK. Exactly. Which yeah. are not good. No, <laughs> they're the opposite. Yeah. Um. So I I was helping with that and. Um, I had I had a few people who I offered offered pamphlets to. It's like, hey, would you like lower taxes? Would you like um a mental health facility for the lockdown stuff? Would you like free speech? Um, some people said I wouldn't even waste the paper. <laughs> some guys said no. <laughs> um, other most people were polite. I will say most people were polite, which is yeah, I guess it's a good sign. Um, yeah, but most people voted for Labor anyway because um the narrative in WA is that when we had one case, literally one case of, of, of the Chinese flu, Mark McGowan just decided to throw the entire state into lockdown for two weeks for one case. Um, and, and when the lockdown was lifted, it, it lifted on Valentine's day. There was this whole fucking narrative going like this whole sense of like, Oh, Mark McGowan saved the state from the evil coronavirus and oh we get to be together with our loved ones on valentine's day how romantic i'm gonna vote for him that that's the kind of like strategy they went with and it carried and it carried them into the actual election because um oh well he did such a good job because of one case so surely um 
surely things will be better now, right? It's like, no, you just throw us back into lockdown again because of three cases. So the, you, you voted for this, by the way. I didn't vote for this. You voted for this. Um, and yeah. now, now we're, just, yeah, now I, we're dealing with much, these inconsistent you know, policies. Oh yeah, believe me. I I was going to mention that in my own regard because man, it is mm. it is so schizophrenic here. It is just all it is so it's so all over the place in every regard like of of basically what's opened, when it's allowed to be open for, mask, no mask, mm-hmm. vax, no vax, like they can't make up their mind on fucking anything. And it's amazing because like you you basically have people like my parents who are basically a hundred percent believe it all pro vaccine. Although my mother, for example, is just schizophrenic on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's pretty much like you have to do it because if you don't, you're going to get waco Like that's her position. She's Yeesh. basically terrified of the States, but my father believes the whole deal. He believes a hundred percent of what's going on. He thinks it's the bubonic plague, all mm. this shit. But the thing is, is that, uh, I, I don't know if I want to speak too out of turn Susan here, but ba- tags my channel for get more information. Yeah, well, about it's not even that regard because it's getting a little bit too personal. But basically, <laughs> I have people that are associated with my family who basically got the vaccine and died. Hmm. So it's like, well, what can I say? You know, yeah, <laughs> uh, my friends aren't getting the fucking vaccine and they're alive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what can I tell you? It's not to say. You know? It's not to say, Susan that vaccines like oh they call it autism it's like nah it's not when like we're not going down that route of of skepticism it's just no no the, the I, science I want, is rushed i, I rushed. i want everyone in china to be vaccined i want everyone in israel to be vaccined i i want you know vaccines all over the place i'm Me sure too, you know yeah. all all the different nations that pfizer got kicked out of they they want everyone to be vaccine hmm. so we're pro vaccine on this channel susan come on <laughs> I'm pro. I'm pro vaccine, but I'm also pro sensible science. I'm pro. I I well, like I like taking your time and testing things, and I'm not going to be a guinea pig. Well, so exactly. I, I was literally about to say the same thing. Yes, yeah. that is that is also my position. That yeah. when I when I see the scary shit that even the the mainstream news reports about, you know, you know, getting the shot, getting the just getting the quick jab, save Dr. the world, Fauci, just get the jab. Bring and it's like, vaccines. yeah, by the way, and I'm not like, what I love is like, they turned that blood clot story into a big thing. And it's like, yeah, I'm not, I don't know if I really buy too much into this, but it's all the things that are very quietly being reported on. Mm. And when I see stuff like that, of the other issues that are going on, it's like, yeah, nah, nah, I'm not, I'm not getting I'm into this. I'm not, I'm not doing this. Yeah, I'm uh, literally waiting. Well, I, even waiting, I mean, you can wait, but I, I basically, what's the basic, what's the normal duration in terms of testing for an actual, like a normal vaccine? Yeah, uh, good question. It's years, it's mm. years. So it's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not interested because the thing is, is that I, I know uh, of several people who like an example uh, is my father. My father got the first and the second vaccines. He got sick on the first and was like fine with the second. So it it didn't really face him. But my mother, man, it was like, she basically got the flu for like Mm. a week and a half. And it's like, yeah, I'm if given the, the chance, the choice, I'd rather take my chances. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I mean, you and I are not in the, in the risk group anyway we're both still no. in our 20s or actually no you're you're 30 no now, you? and, and, I, and the thing is is that like <laughs> you're 30. if basically it, it when it comes to the vaccine itself and it's basically a roll of the dice of of how you're going to react to it yeah if you're like eight like you're you're my grandmother okay my grandmother is very much in the risk demographic for for covid mm-hmm. she fits several categories for the risk demographic by all means if she says yes i want to get one she voluntarily voluntarily wants to take it by all means put her at the front of the line have her get it done make sure she's safe and all that jazz okay yeah. if we are gonna if it is a, if it is a matter of probability and statistics by all means do that but when it comes to like oh we need to start getting vaccines to pregnant women and all these yeah, other demographics nah, were like no way yeah, yeah i don't think that's a very good fucking idea guys and now it's like and again too they're all over the place about what you should actually do. Like yeah. they're changing it every other day about what the standard should be. And it's like, 
I said this last year during the summer when my parents were basically ready to shit themselves. And so were a few other people that I'm aware of were ready to shit themselves over COVID. I was like, I'm not, I, I, it was like right after I lost my job, I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't care. I, I leave me out of this. The government can feel free to pay me to do nothing. And you guys can go fight this fight. I don't fucking care. Yeah. Um, I, for perspective, I remember in 2020, I remember, um, not liking the idea of lockdown, but I remember thinking, okay, I understand going into lockdown, but at, at this point I am just like, no, <laughs> just stop. I, I was, you, I was, you created a problem that one. you're trying to solve government and I don't, and, I, and you're just yes. ruining the economy and making things worse for everyone's mental health in the process. I'm not, Oh yeah. I'm not up for this. Oh yeah. It, well, the thing is, is that like, I, I, a anyone that, especially the people on the left to make a big deal about like, Oh, we need to basically open up asylums. But basically my thing is like, okay, open them up. We'll start sticking some motherfuckers in, mm. you know, I I'm in favor of opening, reopening the asylums. Cause there's plenty of fucking people that need to be stuck back in them. Yeah. But, we got a few they basically, in Australia, yeah. They, they, they basically, while I, you know, I live in New York, so believe me, we got quite a few head cases here. <laughs> but uh, but the, the, the point is, is that, like, they, they, they basically want people to be in arrested developments. Like, they don't actually want anyone to get better in terms of mental health. They don't actually want. It, it, it's just another sort of subsistence, you know, bureaucracy that they can create and dominate so they can get a permanent amount of money a permanent salary permanent career being an apparatchik accomplishing nothing yeah you know it, it's the perfect kind of you know the war basically think of it as the war on drugs the war on mental health the war on poverty it's a permanent bureaucracy that there is no light at the end of the tunnel yeah I also, you, you know, you, yeah. your son, your grandson can all have a career in that same field and never also, accomplish shit. I also think, um, well, especially in my case, I think the gov, I think a lot of governments are trying some conditioning, you know, like the the kind of conditioning you do for dogs with saliva, right? I think they're, I think they're trying to condition us to, to basically enjoy lockdowns, but but the thing from my own experience, um most people don't seem to enjoy the mask mandate at all. And it's like, well, you voted for it for one thing, but yeah, it, assuming... it's actually, it's actually strange. I, I agree with you completely. It mm. seems like I would disagree to say, like, it seems like most people are in favor of the lockdowns. Mm -hmm. That is, appears to be the case. I would say like, for example, I've always been against the lockdowns. As soon as they closed all the churches, I was like, yeah, I I'll be on the side of the constitution and all you people can go kill yourselves because <laughs> you know, I, I am demonstrably more American than every one of you. You guys can all feel free to get deported. Yeah. I am an actual American. You guys are not. And all, all I can say is that is as much as people claim that America is basically a Christian nation. Uh, I have been very disappointed by the Christians in the United States who mm. rolled over entirely on the issue of lockdowns. Yeah, that they will, suck yeah. the dick of the state, and so I, I, I basically, I don't want to hear any more Christians say that like, oh no, it's God's law, it's not man's law. It's like you guys suck the dick of the state and rolled over completely, and and any of the Christians who didn't basically all went to jail. Yeah, and the like so, and that was that that kind of that kind of. Um, mentality was the entire reason we had a huge left-wing pushback to authoritarianism in like the 80s through to the 2000s it was because we had yeah. the evangelical christians or the more authoritarian strains of christianity just trying to um basically force you to comply with their particular standards and ways and it's like well well sorry but we just don't we just don't see things the way you do. Like, for example, free speech is like, okay, you don't like atheists. Okay, fine. You think they're Satanists. Okay, fine. Um, that doesn't mean you can f throw us in jail, for example, or, oh, these these comic books and, and video games are causing violence, um, even though Democrats started that that particular crusade. But we'll put I, that aside. Um, it's like, okay. It's amazing. Be I don't want to interrupt you, but it's yeah. so amazing about that, like that, that particular phenomena, because... I, I think that in large part that the conservatives, at least in, in, in regards to like the, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, um, it's because it's because it's my mic. I'm trying. Uh, the the way to the way to get to make sure you don't get on my mic is to just mute it and then unmute it while I, when I'm okay. Okay. Play. So, I'll okay. I'll do well, that. it's just okay. Go ahead. No, no, you're good. Okay, so um, the issue as it relates to I'm still getting feedback. All right, let's see. Uh, you got this... more than one mic plugged in? Uh, I guess technically I do. It's this headphone set. Yeah, go under uh, sounds. Turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I did that the uh, the one stream I did just yeah. recently. I um, I say I learned OBS. But I am still a fucking boomer in a lot of ways. No, you gotta do that on your own settings. Okay. All right. Let's let's see. Sounds. <sighs> All right. Wait. Let's let's fucking get some tech support going, guys. This is the best part of the stream. Well, the way you do it is you go under recording, and don't speak. Tap your mics. Like that? What do you mean, like tap, like turn them off? Or... It, it, you you go under recording under sound, yep. and you see your microphones that are plugged in that are enabled, okay. and you tap each of the microphones to see which one you want to turn off. Okay, I only have the one mic though. Let's... Well, you're getting pretty crazy feedback now. All right. Uh... How about now? I just disabled a couple. Okay. Uh, I don't hear anything. Okay, so you don't have any more feedback, or can you still get the... No, I, I don't hear anything anymore. All right. All right, cool. That was we weird. We fixed it. Yay. Yeah, it started up. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. where was I going with what I was... Oh, yeah, the Sorry conservatives. Sorry for the technical uh, difficulties, guys. So, uh, to the issue of... make Check OBS that I, you can still hear me. Yeah, I I see your yeah, you I see voice. your thing going. Up. Okay, yeah, good. You're good. Okay, perfect. Just making sure. In, in any case, uh, with the particular issue of the conservatives during that time period, so mm -hmm. we're talking about like the the whatever it was called, like the Satanist panic or whatever it was the called in the satanic panic. Yeah, satanic panic into the '90s, into the 2000s, the aughts with the anti-video game stuff mm -hmm. that. A lot of what the conservatives were arguing, like basically the, the, if, if you take the, the end results of the argument, you basically have to have several presuppositions in order to actually get to the end arguments of these video games are harmful, this music is harmful. Um, and, the, and they did it about like violent video games, rap music, uh, anything relating to like Satan, so like going all the way back to like, um, Black Sabbath, you know, that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, like yeah. any anything that invokes like the Antichrist, Satan, um like the end result of the argument is basically several steps in several presuppositions. And the problem is is that at the core of the argument, there actually is some truth to what they're saying. But the problem is is that they basically have gone into their own echo chamber and have basically created the foundation of through these presuppositions and then launched their campaign into the public. Mm. And the, the problem is, is that one of the main problems, especially then, was that because they were so ascendant to the coalition that they had coming out of the 80s, and that's what happened, was that you basically had the Christian movement um, come together in the late 70s that formed like this unholy union with basically the internationalist right, like basically the Reaganite types that are around today that everyone fucking hates. Mm. Like despite everyone sort of like kissing the ass of Reagan in the United States, and there's still a lot of that today, um, including with Trump, Trump mm. and Ronald Reagan had nothing in common. Like Reagan, Reagan was, was one like- of the, a, He was one of the three presidents that the, uh, who were they? They were called morality and media. 
a long time ago. Yeah. Reagan talked yeah. with them a lot, trying to get a lot of anti-pornography well, legislation passed. That was the coalition, and and yeah. that's making a resurgence today, that the anti-pornography uh, pornography movement is coming back. But the problem is, even with that, the underlying, like, one of the presuppositions of pornography is effectively that it is a vice. And I would say that that argument, that presupposition, is effectively true. Mm-hmm. That like drinking or like smoking, like any kind of thing that be, that can become a habit, that that is a vice or could, in fact, be a vice. But the problem is, is that they don't really debate anyone mm. until they actually get to the end result of the argument, which is porn is bad, shut it down. Yeah. And um, their, their biggest problem they, is they what they do is they take they take these vices and rather than just applying it to the individual and giving recommendations or suggestions to the individual that they can overcome it in their own terms, they want the government to do it. And that's the biggest problem well, that's, that, that they run that's, into. There, there's, a, there's a variety of reasons why they get to that end result. But one of the things that I've, I've, I've talked to a few people about and I've pushed back on a few people about um, uh, rel- relative to several vice issues, but um, I, I have changed my mind over time on several different things. Um, mo- most importantly, like uh, prostitution and drugs. Mm-hmm. I, I have moved from basically being effectively what you could call a libertarian on those issues live live to just be kind of basically yeah. becoming a, a, like an actual conservative on the issues. Mm-hmm. But it's through a lens of just pragmatism, where the question is, is this issue going to empower the left? or empower us? Is this issue going to make society better or is it going to make it demonstrably worse? And so the issue of prostitution and drugs, I see the left being empowered and our society just getting worse. So fuck you. How about that? How about that's my <laughs> argument? You're going to help the left. You're going to weaken our position. You're going to make the society closer to Gomorrah. How about we just don't do it? And fuck potheads, the stoners. You're useless. You contribute nothing. You claim to be on your side. You don't help us. Hmm. So... I, the libertarian movement has collapsed, and this is one of the reasons why, that the arguments that they have don't actually have any real thrust to them, and they're not actually contradicting the left. And that's one of the reasons why I think you're accurate to say that one of the topics we could get into is basically the collapse of conservatism. Yeah. And it is because that they have underlying truths to some of their arguments, such as you know forming a habit around pornography or drugs or a variety of issues is not good but the problem is or even video games i'd be more than willing like you know if i had a choice did you want do you want your kid to be basically as invested as a hardcore gamer as you were during your childhood and i would say no Hmm. that would be my argument i no i wasn't really because growing up because um because i because i sucked at games when i was when i was a kid so i kind of would rage quit more often or i would just not play as as many games but um yeah, the thing. Well, the thing with video games is the the um the kind of like coping mechanism with video games yes. is, is is more of a symptom of a of a deeper mental health issue. Ex- exactly, exactly. That's exactly my point. That the issue with so many of these issues of whether it's pornography, video games, I don't know, heavy metal music is a little bit of a you know a stretch, or like rap. Rap is a better example, mm-hmm. but. So many of these things are actually downstream from a source, that these are actually symptoms of something else. And I would include many things. Um, Drugs, the more hardcore drugs, I would say, um, and pornography, uh, video games to some degree, although I think it's a little bit of a different issue. Hmm. But pornography, I think, is a big one for the right, that they're moving in that direction of basically opposing pornography. But the issue is, is that, you're actually skipping past so many of the things that you should be addressing. And they're actually, the right is actually very good about this as it relates to crime. Of yeah. Well, fatherhood actually, in a variety uh, of other you issues. mentioned that because I've been, I've been trying to find an opportunity to mention that I actually have a degree in criminology. So I have some oh, understanding good. of, um, of what actually causes crime or like the, the biggest factors. And I can, and I could tell you, and you'd agree with this because you've, you've worked with, You've worked in that kind of sphere as well, from what I understand. Um, basically, mm-hmm. adverse child ex- childhood experiences, so like um, 
domestic violence or sexual abuse, et cetera. Um, what's it called? FASD. It's like um, fetal alcohol syndrome, something or other. Um, so basically, yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, basically you have, um, you have a, a shit childhood, your mother drunk alcohol while you, while she was pregnant with you and, and you associate with really bad gains and groups that yeah. those are, those are the big, those are a lot of the big reasons and single motherhood as well. Um, that lead you down a, a path of delinquency and deviancy. Those are the big yeah. ones. It's not, it's not, um. It's not solely porn. It's not solely video games. It's not solely anything. There well, are no, I, so many it, factors to go into one person. My my yeah. arguments is is that the the addiction, like if you were to say like addiction to video games, addiction to pornography, addiction to drugs, that which is what China. I would to, say that yeah. many of these things are actually symptoms, and the problem with the right is that they understand this as it relates to crime. Mm -hmm. And they're more than willing to get into the arguments of fatherhood, responsibility, growing up, you know, your environment, your role models. Yeah, it's like the only and, conservative value they have that they stick to, basically. Yes, like the only but value. the issue with pornography, and I've seen a lot of this from a lot of people, that the one of the main problems of, especially as it relates to young men, and this is the, one of the and do whatever is the thing that they want them to do. But the problem is, is that they've arrived at the conclusion. They've, ar they've arrived at somebody who, let's say the, you know, it's not really a nice equivalent, but let's say the guy's on, on drugs. Okay. The guy's a cokehead. You've arrived to the, to the so-called addict when he's years into his addiction hmm. and you're coming up to him and you're saying, Oh, well, you're a piece of shit. You're lazy. You're this, you're that. Then it's like, well, all those things may be true, but you're not actually saying the things that you would be if you're speaking to somebody who you actually think had a bad childhood or is somebody that you want to reform or get on the right track or do whatever. Like you're not speaking to them in a sympathetic manner. No. You're not – or an empathetic manner. That would be the better way of putting yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, um, they're, not, they're not corrections officers. They, they don't really know – they don't really understand the, the kind of process of talking to um, offenders who are looking to get out of, of the prison system, basically. They don't really have that experience. Well, the, 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 the issue I, is, though, is that, that you know, I think that the conservatives are actually fairly good on the topic of criminal, you know, deviancy. Let's just put it like that. It's like a broad issue yes. uh, in relates to criminal behavior that they've basically figured out <clears throat> the source. They figured out a good idea of what's going wrong to begin with. So that's what they're sticking to. But as it relates to the issues of, and I think that this is where you see the alliance, because there is an alliance as it relates to pornography, as it relates to, let's say, anime, yeah. as it relates to video games. There is an alliance that exists between the left and the right. And it is the left's from the left's perspective, we want control over these issues. We mm -hmm. want control, whether it's video games, we want control. And from the right wing perspective, it's we're not getting the results we want. Hmm. We want these people to behave in these manners. And they're, and they're not getting married. They're away. not getting kids. Yeah. They're not working 80 hour, hour weeks. You know, they're not doing what we want them to do because they're too busy playing video games. They're too busy jerking off to pornography. They're too busy doing this or that. Mm -hmm. And we want them to do this instead. But the problem is, is that they're not actually addressing the source. They're addressing hmm. Video games is if they were a source. Yeah, exactly. So, and it, like, I imagine the scenario in the head, they're it's just wrong. saying, it's like, they're just saying, you need to stop playing video games, just doing this, this, and this. And they can't answer the question, why should I not? Exactly. Yeah. You got it exactly right. They're not actually addressing it. They're trying to say that it, you, you can find a more fulfilling life in, let's say, being a father mm -hmm. or uh, being a good worker or starting your own business. I think that's a good example. Or creating, because I think it's or creating true. something in general. Like, um, yeah, I, you're sure. I doing something that announce, is more fulfilling. Yeah, I won't announce what I've been working on for the past few months, but I have been working on a personal project. And I'll tell you after the stream, Louie, but I won't announce it here. Sure, but sure. I have been, but I've been working on something because I need to... Basically, I need to do something that doesn't make my life feel worthless, basically. Yeah. 2020 was yeah. just a time sink of, well, it's like, okay, well, what do I do now? I can't hang out with my friends. Yeah. I, can't, I can't do anything. Yes. I'm paralyzed yeah, I with agree. choices. 
So yeah, yeah, I I agree with you, and that's good to hear because mm-hmm. I think Thank it's you. better to go down that road than others. Uh, but the point is, is that while the right wing has a lot of, I think, well intentioned and in 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 many ways actually true arguments as it relates to what you should do with your life. The underlying issue that they have with addressing these particular topics of categorizing basically vices or things that are probably not good for you to fixate about or develop a habit around. Like, yeah, like I um, think I think most people, and we can tell by the crime rate going down globally. Uh, although maybe that's on the increase because of Antifa. Not true for the but, United States. In the United States, it's across the board. It's rising. Okay. Um, well, I'm talking more about the, like the focus. And I, I know in where, general, in general, yeah. what you're talking about. We're, we're we're talking about the general rate in the American context. We're talking about six fifty seven. That's yeah. what we're talking about. That's the actual statistics <laughs> yeah, that are that. changing. Oh, yeah. Would be like the actual like Despite. right now. IGN is hosting a stream anti you know anti Asian hate. Anti-Asian hate. Welcome to IGN. We're talking about anti-Asian hate. It's like, yeah, we all know what that fucking demographic is. That's less Stop Asian all hate. Across Center the, the Japanese country. video games. <laughs> all the same Let's people. play some Japanese video games that we want to control and censor uh, and not talk about the fucking elephant in the room, but who's bashing in the brains of fucking Asian women with a cinder block. And that's an actual <laughs> reference. Yeah. That's an actual reference to wow. something that just happened, I think, in San Francisco. Oh, Jesus. It's bad enough that they shit on the streets, and now they have cinder blocks flying. Jesus Christ! Just flying magically, oh, yeah, by the way. Uh... Just, just like pigs flying in the sky is like a cinder block. Like, Ooh! Just magically appeared on this Asian lady's head. What? Can, <laughs> what can we say about that? <laughs> well, it's it's it really is that sort of Joker moment of you you get what you deserve. That's a fantastic and it movie, isn't... by the way. I watched it twice. In yes, theaters. it was so fucking good. <laughs> I wish I had a second chance to watch it in theaters. I watched it with yeah. my my good friend, and oh my god, dude, I was, I couldn't believe it. I I was watching it, and I was like, Jesus Christ, this movie's so fucking good. And it's been a very <laughs> long time since I was in a movie theater where I had that kind of reaction yeah. to a movie. I think the last uh, it's one it's been I had quite a while. Before, yeah, before Joker for me, it was Pacific Rim because I'm a fucking weep and I love giant robots. Okay. So that was like the last moment where I was like, oh my god, that's so fucking good. And then I watched Joker and I'm like, oh my god, that's so fucking good too. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I, I, bought, it I, on, it, I bought it on I, Blu-ray, the special edition as well, because I, I like that oh, movie yeah. so fucking much. Yeah. I'm a buy fan. I haven't actually bought it yet. I, I only watched it the one time. I, I said a while ago that I was going to watch it a second time, and I, I mean to, but I haven't had a chance. In the meantime, I've watched it's freaking... Worth buying, I think. Lo- yeah. What's that? It's worth buying, like not like I, oh, absolutely. I'm one of those guys I, I plan like, on buying it. I, I, I'm an advocate for sailing the high seas, but when when something is genuinely good enough to to be worth your money, I'd say go for it. That's me. It's worth it, even in the case that you're supporting a bad studio, mm-hmm. because it it really grinds the gears of the right people to yes. have somebody like uh, uh, Todd Phillips massively succeed at a movie like that. Yeah. I, I'm I'm glad I'm glad Todd stood by his film and that and, and against the oh yeah quote culture we need this is okay so this will get into the topic actually of strategies to defeat the left and one of the things you got to do is be based and the original definition of based is to basically stand your ground and be true to yourself you have to do that more often stop apologizing ever to these people because they don't do it in good faith like that they're, they're not. Like yeah. they, they like to say, oh, I'm offering criticism or I'm offering feedback. No, what they are doing is pressuring you into agreeing with their presuppositions and their, their particular their framework. standards. And if you say no, they can't do anything to you except try to cancel you. And if they try to cancel you, you can, you can drum up a campaign. It's like, look, these people are literally trying to destroy my career. And you will have people who go up, who go up to you and it's like, okay... I will give you money and support you because you're standing up to the right people. I don't like these people either. And then you you can yeah. make more more money than before, arguably. It it depends on the on the case as well. Like, um, not not everyone can care about every issue that comes up at the same time. But if you right, but it's better doing that and not getting as big of a of a 
rallying cry in support of you than just apologizing and going to them because that's not going to help you either. It'll be worse even. Yeah, I I think that this this issue ties pretty neatly into also the topic you want to address of like um what was it like basically internal policing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, or uh, whatever the pu phrase purity used. testing, purity testing, purity testing. Um, yeah. An example, I don't really want to segue into that, but I wanted to touch on that. Yeah. Um, oh, we're getting a little bit of echo again, by the way. <sighs> so check that again, if you don't mind. Yep. I will six. Your this. mic Get might be re-enabling my... itself. Yeah, I'm just checking it now. All right. Enable, disable. Enable, disable. Okay, I'm just gonna black out my mic for a sec. Okay. Well, I don't hear it anymore. Okay. Don't hear any echo. And, and, and I'm back. Okay. So that's better. So we're all well, good. Okay. Oh, I was six fifty. Well, now I can't setup. hear you at all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't hear anything. <laughs> oh my god! Hang on. So I might want to re-enable at least one of those mics. Oh, Jesus Christ, what is that? <laughs> it's probably a bad idea if you if you disabled all and, um, of them. Uh, can you hear me now? <laughs> can you hear me now or not? Not uh not really a good idea to do that. Uh if you have, I would say check uh Discord to see if uh uh if you accidentally disabled it for that and switched it to something else. Did you hear that? No. Oh man, this, is this it? Is this how it ends? How about now? Oh, there you go. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. All right. I figured I figured it out. It was on Discord. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, 25 year old boomer it. here, not knowing how technology yeah, yeah, does. Yeah. Oh my lord. So sorry, right. everyone. Well, uh, Getting back to the actual uh, topic of uh, policing, I'm trying to remember exactly the point I was going to make. Oh, the an example of where it becomes an issue of of like internal policing and basically like effective strategies against the left. The, the basically the the sole argument of like how do we de how do we defeat the left? And mm -hmm. basically, the main thrust of where we are is. One, we need to organize and coalesce. Yes. Two, we need to basically find all the people that are on our side who are working for our enemies and eject them. Mm. Or, and if we don't eject them, we need to neuter them. So that it's basically the analogy, or, or I guess uh, the metaphor that I would use, is you have a snake. You can have a snake in the room. That's fine. Um, the issue is, is the snake going to bite you? Mm. And if you don't trust the snake not to eventually bite you, rip out its fangs. Now it doesn't matter if the snake's in the room at all. The snake can't do anything. And mm -hmm. so basically what we need to do with the people on our side that we don't trust is effectively, uh, metaphorically, rip out their fangs so that they can't bite us. They won't be able to bite the other side, but no one expects them to do that. We expect to get bitten. So in other it's words, basically finding that people... We need a, yeah, go ahead. In, in other words, we need to cancel Chris Ray <laughs> Uh, I don't know why you want I, to cancel somebody who's irrelevant. No, no, I'm, I'm just joking. I'm not, I don't, I'm not actually calling for canceling. I'm just poking fun of Chris. I know, it's I a joke. Like I, I haven't, I, it's the, what is it, the, oh god, what is the line? I, it's, uh, there's two people who said it. It's, it's from a movie, I think, or a television show, and then mm. Ayn Rand, um, of, uh, her opinion, I think of, what was it, Reagan, of, like, I don't even think of him. Like that's the opinion. So that's my yeah. uh, opinion of Chris Reagan is that I don't think of him and have yeah. him for uh, quite a few years. Okay. Uh, yeah. I apologize. So I wish for him well. That up. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, the point is, is that uh, to to the issue of of right wingers and what to do on our side. Those are basically the main two points of we need to organize and there's a variety of things that need to be done. And, and part of that organization is coalescing. And I see some of that. There seems to be some of that going on now, but the problem is, is that we basically need to identify the people on our side that are not actually working towards what we want. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily like 
need to start purging those people. Like if it's effectively, okay, they're Republicans and you're a Republican, you expel them from the Republican party, even though I have called for some of that in the past. Yeah. Uh, the issue is basically you, you effectively need to neuter them so that at the very minimum, they just can't backstab you anymore. They can go do their own thing. They can exist. They can say whatever they want, but they can't backstab you. Mm. And that's the problem, especially in the American context that we have a problem with, is that there are a variety of people on the right who are actively working with the left wing, trying to defeat us. Mm. And it is a massive fucking problem in, in the American context. And I think that whether it's Australia or the UK or the Western world, you go around and it's probably true in each nation. Because I've seen people say similar things about Canada as well, is that the problem that they find is the that there's people on the right that claim to be is more conservative than both of us who are actively working with the left wing to pursue the left's agenda. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, once you start effectively fighting the left wing, once you start having a chance at winning an election, suddenly at four o'clock in the morning, a bunch of ballots are dumped on a table. Mm. And then all of a sudden, a blood red state is going blue. And then two Senate seats are lost because no one's trying to win. Mm. So... That is the problem that we have on the right, at least in the American context. We need to organize. We need to coalesce. We need to get around one agenda, fight for that one agenda, defend everyone who's actually working towards that agenda, and rip the fangs out of the mouths of those who are actively waiting to bite us the minute we start actually winning at something. The minute we start seeing some kind of small victories and all that that are going to be going behind the scenes, trying to get people banned off of social media, which definitely happened. You know, people on supposedly on the right, back channeling the people that are actively working with people getting banned. Mm -hmm. there, that clearly went on with some of the people who have banned off of social media. That yeah. is clearly going on. This is why and, I, um, yeah, this is why I mentioned purity testing because I consider purity testing a flaw as opposed to gatekeeping. Um, with gatekeeping, I see it, I see it more along the lines of like, okay, like, welcome to the office of, of immigration. How can I help you? I'm a fucking cisgender furry communist. Get out, please. Kind of thing. As opposed to purity testing, where it's like, um, well, within the context of the drama I had, where it's like Japanese copyright law is superior to yours, and you're a savage. If you if you pirate, you, 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 that kind of shit, like that kind of like petty little. Um, pet issue shit that that is that just called i don't even know infighting. if that's purity spiraling like i think that's even worse than purity spiraling that's just like being like an anti-social retard and i don't even I mean, regard yeah, that as purity it, it's spiraling. specifically within the context of trying to fight the left right it's like i i would rather it's the kind of attitude where it's like i would rather die on this one particular minor issue that doesn't actually matter in the long run and and let the SJWs win, then then compromise on that particular issue, like that little well, little I, thing, not 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 like a big, not like a big strategy. The thing, arguments, but. I know what you're saying, but the issue is is that I, the way that you get around that issue is basically if somebody stomps their feet and says, "No, I'm not moving. You need to come to me." You literally just ignore that person. Yeah. You don't you don't try to convince them. You don't fight for them. You don't fight with them. You just ignore them and do your own thing. Yeah, that, that's essentially uh, that what is I the said best thing that well. I can perform because I had this. I had a stream or a, an argument on Twitter. I don't remember what it was, but basically, um, I I did something where I criticized libertarianism and libertarians. Oh, is this about and the I, the tampons and male bathrooms thing? I think that was a may it may have been that it may have been that but yeah. i basically got into like a big scrap with people who were actually i think my own audience um mm. who were libertarian and i really came down on them and i basically was saying that your your movement is not helping us that you uh, you know i can't exactly remember the gist of it but it was basically like you you are lost on cultural issues and that you are you you've been taking major l's and you won't recognize that um 
and you're, you're basically you're you're splitting off and you're doing so by your own volition like it's not us doing this it's you yeah and you're, you're basically making big issues out of things that are not worth you know me fighting for and lead i weagle. don't align with yeah it's <laughs> it's lead it's lead weekle kind of things yeah. where the, the question <laughs> is is this Thank actually you, going to help us is this is this even going to help the cause of liberty and my answer is no hmm. my answer is simply no like i view the issue of pot as you're just going to get you're basically increasing the longevity of states like new york who are the the classic example of of tax and spend so called liberals? You legalize weed, they tax it at thirty percent. They use those ta those taxes to give breaks to their friend friends and increase power for themselves. You're not actually increasing the cause of liberty. You're not actually helping the right wing. You're not actually bettering society. You're yeah. just perpetuating the left wing, who are who are basically using you as a pay pig. I just wanted and to you're doing it for a, your own hedonistic desires. Yeah, I wanted to address a quick question in chat. It's like, how is weed not legal in Australia? I thought we were left hards. Uh, the the thing about Australia is we are we we are paradoxically left leftist and also ultra conservative, and I think yes. part of that is because of our geography, which is why we have a pretty good immigration system. Um, because we're isolated, we don't, we don't have the issue with America, for example, with Mexico, where we literally just have like oh, yeah. a, a line separating the countries. Um, for us, we literally have entire oceans separating us from from everyone else. So we have this we have this conservative mindset of like fuck off, we're full. That's a very classic Australian slang. It's like fuck off, we're full. We don't don't want you here, kind of thing. Uh, but and that that would kind of extend to weed as well. Like that that particular kind of I want to say ethos that particular like, yeah. spirit um i mean we have we have, we have seen some progress legalizing marijuana specifically for patients like medical people because it's like oh i need to deal with the chronic pain for example we have yes we have that, some progress still... in that regard but um you generally the government is very boomerific we we have a very oh yeah a very specifically boomer government in Australia, and and weed is one of those things that they will pretty much not budge on, honestly. Yeah, I would say that that in part with that as well, and I think it's especially true for the American context as well. Mm -hmm. And I I don't think it's any different. Is if you get rid of that, you've basically just eliminated a bunch of jobs for permanent apparatchiks, mm -hmm. and that's not the nature of the state. Yeah, it's not the nature of of the state to simply eliminate enforcement over a controlled substance. Because you just eliminated a lot of jobs. And I think that like, oh no, now instead they're going to go pursue heroin and all this stuff. shit. No, they're yeah. not. No, they're not. That's like, not think, how it um, works. You don't understand the nature of the state. Yeah, I think I think with the, the problem with libertarians um, within the American context, I'll say, because we don't really have a, we don't really yeah, have. Yeah, I, I, if you, yeah. The, it, whenever you're talking about libertarians, it's basically either outgrowths of American libertarianism or just American libertarianism yeah. because it is, we, we are the worst example. Yeah. With uh, the biggest problem with libertarians in America is they are fighting for an issue that I think generally people don't really care all that much about. Like I'm, I'm kind of applying this with my Australian thing, but I don't really see that many people caring that you smoke weed, for example. Like I think, that there's a there's always a, a difference between legal attitude and social attitude and i think weed is one of those topics which is why i think um libertarians are kind of falling to the wayside in some respect because they they're trying they're trying to like we need to make lead weagle lead weagle lead weagle but it's like okay why don't we talk about um corporatism or why don't we talk about the border or why don't we talk about something that's actually more important than your fucking well they your can't grass. they can't they can't yeah. like the, the problem is is that i i have spent a good amount of years talking to people that are self-described libertarians and the problem is is that you basically have three shades of libertarians um you have your well-meaning libertarians who are actually reserved in their actual like belief set like they are libertarian and they are philosophically libertarian like that is their worldview and they believe in it but they're not utopian 
They don't think that like we should live in basically a right wing commune, Mm -hmm. which is essentially what libertarianism is, is like we're going to live in a capitalist commune and we're just going to have like, you know, I'm going to bake this and you're going to grow that. And like, it's stupid. Mm. And most people like the idea of that, but they don't they don't see it as ever happening. So they don't actually want to pursue that. It's just we want limitations on this and that and the other thing. So it's basically the spirit of the thing rather than the ultimate ideological pursuit of the thing yeah because well, so there's the thing with ideology is it's all it's always it's never perfect in practice anyway so well you say that but the problem is is that people nonetheless believe in it yeah and there's a there's a gradient on that like i i would say that still even at this point i am a philosophical liberal like that hasn't changed but i am far more practical mm-hmm. in terms of that liberalism that i am you know, somebody who believes in the idea, well, true, li- true liberalism is basically having a society where no one has anything in common and we all live in our separate ethno states. Like, <laughs> that's true liberalism, which is something that some people believe. We and they think they're now. morally superior to me. And it's like, well, it, it's it's just they're, they're basically those kind of liberals are um, what I would describe as pacifists. Tim Pool would fit neatly into that category. Mm-hmm. He is a pacifist. He he does not have the actual wherewithal to ever pull the trigger. Like if you're ever in a life or death situation, he is the guy that would not pull the trigger. He is the guy that would hesitate. So he's I the virgin. He the he's the virgin to the that. Chad who would kick out the fairies from from the wee Bethno state. Is what you're saying? Um, it, it's not, you you it's in a meme sense, maybe, but I mean, basically that the, the Chad in that sort of, um, metaphor or maybe even analogy is the person that doesn't want to pull the trigger, but, uh, getting some echo, uh, oh. but is it discord? Is it discord it, that's doing it? I don't know. I don't know what's the issue is. Oh my. But in any case, the, the the point is though that okay now it's fine. Uh, okay. It that, is Discord then. Fucking Discord. This is why I okay. didn't want to use Discord. But whatever. Yeah, sorry. I don't. But I don't have Telegram. That's fine. It's it's not your fault. It's just Discord is it's full of furry pedos and they're also bad at tech technology. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in, in any case, this relates to the issue that. Uh, Oh yeah, it relates to that metaphor, or, or I suppose analogy depends on how you want to look at it. But it, it's mostly just it's, a meme. I'm just poking fun at Tim, really. Well, it, it's really the the issue of the the ability to actually back up what you believe in a real matter. That like again, it's I've I've debated this many times, and I've actually argued about this and talked about this on my own channel and in streams and with other people, Mm -hmm. that it's the entire concept of law, is that you can pass any law you want to, and you can write any law you want to. Let's say, let's say, um, and I I like this sort of uh, analogy, because I think that it really speaks to real politic, it really speaks to real politics, the actual concept of power. I like the, I like how your accent kind of um, accentuates politic. I like it. Well, thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, But it's to do with the nature of power. And if you're on an island, and you say, well, you know what, guys, we're on this island, we need to survive. And there's ways that are important that that will drastically increase the chances that we survive and that we're content and so that we can thrive and all the rest of it. Mm-hmm. It's okay, we need, you know, a uh, latrine, we need food, we need uh, men who hunt, clean women water. who gather. Well, it, it, it's more about the, the basics of like resources, yes, a uh, uh, time need survival like all those concepts and also order that once you have the water and um it it includes uh, i should say the breakdown of labor who does what but even if you get past the point of like let's say you got the system in place of this person hunts this person gathers this person fishes this person is responsible for construction this other person you know digs latrines and is responsible for managing water we we need structure 
to yeah to your get organi- done. it's organization that you're basically setting the foundation of of what is a state mm-hmm. you know you're 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 going from a a group of individuals uh, that have nothing in common to people that are actually working cooperatively forming a community and then basically the more structured you get the more comfortable you get the more resources you have your the na- the, the basic disposition of humanity is then to is then to bicker or to you know once you create luxury or once you create comfort or convenience it doesn't stay cohes- uh, co- the, co- the cohesion that you have doesn't remain past yeah. that point you then have have to have something else to latch onto you have to have some other factor that keeps that community together that keeps the cohesion in matter this that is scarcity why, is the thing that binds yeah. us together but it's not the thing that keeps us together I agree. This is why in the Weep ethno state, not only will your free speech be guaranteed, but the government will give you a free waifu body pillow and host a panel well, where you can discuss who's <laughs> trash. <laughs> well, I, I would say that that would be good for entertainment, but I, I would say that... Um, that that's the, the whole the joke of, that my, you have... of my name, by the way. That, that's, that's the whole joke. My, sure. my name is a joke. Yeah. Well, the, the problem that you're looking at it from is that it's the difference between rights and actual responsibilities. And mm-hmm. I would say that rights are nice, but <clears throat> the problem with rights, and I think it's actually important to what I'm saying here, is that r- like rights, before you can even get to rights, let's just create rules. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now let's say that you are basically nominated um by everyone else let's say there's 12 of us on an island you you know it's you and i and and 10 other people on an island based and everyone everyone but me nominates you to be the leader Mm -hmm. and you come up with 10 rules of like you want everyone to follow Mm -hmm. and everyone agrees to them but me okay Mm -hmm. and well okay we'll, we'll stay there how do you convince me to follow those rules? Because I didn't elect you leader. I didn't agree to these rules and I didn't agree to follow them. So the, the question is, how do you get me to follow these rules? And to the pacifist, which yeah. is an option, and I agree with that the first thing you should do is, and this is the moral thing to do as well, try to persuade that person to agree to the rules for like the beneficial aspect to actually getting along with the group, following the benefits of the rules, like this, these rules could benefit you in these ways. Like you try to persuade that person who disagrees as to why these rules are important. And that can also demonstrate through that conversation why you are the leader. Mm -hmm. And that is the first thing that you go to is persuasion, or at least you should, if you're actually a moral person. Yeah. I was was thinking in my head, um, in that particular scenario, what I would do is I would offer certain responsibilities that they could take care of, like something that would benefit them, but also benefit everyone else. Because it's like, oh, like, let's say, oh, I put you on, um, gathering fucking shells on the beach and you're like i don't want to do that well the the persuasion aspect would then be okay well what how about you look for this other thing then for example it's like and a a good way to 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 play off of what you're saying Mm -hmm. that a good leader as well would know that if this person is you know i don't want to go gather shells Mm -hmm. is you know to use your example and instead they go gather coconuts you play up the importance of gathering the coconuts because it's a source of food or whatever it would be, I guess. Um, uh, coconut nourishment water, of some I think, sort. is one thing yeah, you yeah. do, yeah. But and you also play make up bras. the importance of that, <laughs> and you can use that to give that person a sense of 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 pride in actually doing it, that mm-hmm. th- that could be the persuasive thing for them, that it actually is an ego boost to them, that they feel good doing this thing, because it's important for, in, you know, everyone's relying on them. And it, you know, that could be the thing that pushes them from, you know, not wanting to do anything and not listen to you to actually just joining the fold. This is why but, offender rehabilitation is a good idea, by the way. It is. But the problem is, is that the only way that that's going to work is them actually understanding that what they did in the past was wrong. And that's yes, the problem. Um, I have, I've, I've been thinking an awful lot about why we have such high recidivism rates with criminals i think it's like 
what was it, twenty five percent chance you reoffend, or is it the opposite? It, it's pr- uh, it's, it's that significant. That sounds pretty fucking low. It, it's. <laughs> It was like some sort of significantly high number. I can't remember. It's been as too far as I remember, the the actual statistic. It also depends on the actual crime committed. But as far as I remember, it was like something like physical crimes of some sort. I, I think it's I remember violent taking crime. Courses in college. Yeah, I think it's violent. It's, crime, it maybe. is. It's like fifty five to like sixty five percent. Yeah, is somewhere around there. Like it is. A, it is the majority. Yeah, it is the bulk. Like one of the things with. I know we're going on a tangent, but it's I really like the topic, right? So one of the things violent offenders lack is um, the concept of consequential thinking and decision making skills. The, these it, are it's these are things control. they lack. Yeah, impulse control, exactly. Um, I I remember my one of my lecturers talking about a story where he had this one guy who was coming out of who got out of the prison system. Um, he was a violent offender, and one thing he was taught about is um, there is a there is a window before you act violently where you can think to yourself, I don't need to do this kind of thing. Like there is a moment before that yeah. where you can control yourself. The guy ended up punching the other guy anyway, but he told um, he told my lecturer at the time, hey, you're right, there is a window of opportunity. I still hit him, but it was there <laughs> kind of thing. So well, it's like, hey, progress. All, all I can say is that, you know, I, I'm... I'm very realistic in terms of my thinking as it relates to the issue of deviancy, mm-hmm. which is a word that Criminal you do pick up when you take yeah. courses. Yeah, it's it's the issue of um, the the problem is is that you're not dealing with normal people. No, and exactly. I think the recidivism rate is actually a good example of what I mean by that. That if you go to prison or jail for a while and that is a bad place Ooh, yeah. and you're not free, if you mm-hmm. get out of that place and you say that it's worth doing whatever it, and you ha- stand a very strong r- risk of going back and going for an even longer time, if you're more than willing to do that, because the thing is with recidivism, it seems to be very quick. You get out of jail, you yep, get out of prison, is. you reoffend pretty fucking quick. Yeah, it's like within the first two months, maybe. Yeah. It's very fast, and yeah, I agree. So the, the the point is is basically that you, you basically have of two models to go down, from my understanding, as it relates to this. Which is um I guess the more Scandinavian model or somewhere close the village to basically thing, yeah. treating them. Um or you basically have the school of thought that is now very much out of fashion, which is basically uh, we will scare you Mm. to not do it and we will threaten you to not do it. Um, And I would say that that's pretty much the the school of thought where I am at, because it seems that the people that like, from my perspective, the people that are in favor of rehabilitation have given up. Mm -hmm. They've just thrown in the towel. They have just given up. They're not serious anymore. They're just on the side of criminals. And that's about as far as it goes. Hmm. So that's going to be the case. Then my position is, if you come out of prison and you violently reoffend, you should be shot and killed. <laughs> and now we're done. Now there is no more recidivism. <laughs> well, and if it's... <laughs> yeah. Well, you're violent. And I, I stand by I it. I know. I think um, that if you... I think, if I think you, my... De- I dangerous... I think me owning Go a ahead. degree prevents me from agreeing one way or the other on that particular well, topic. <laughs> I would say that, again, I will reassert that the side in favor of real rehabilitation have given up. They have given up entirely. They I mean, are done not arguing. Wrong. Like, there was a, whole, there was a big, there was a big, um, wasn't a literature review. It was like a big, me- like a big mega study um, uh, in the 80s, I think it was. And the guy basically concluded that everything that we are doing to try to rehabilitate people, or everything we have tried to apply doesn't work. Nothing works kind of thing the the only examples that i've ever seen where rehabilitation has actually worked has been incredibly unique really intimate cases like Mm -hmm. i worked with this particular offender personally for six fucking years Mm -hmm. and did literally everything for him and basically was his father and he stopped offending Mm -hmm. but outside of that exam those examples there's a bunch of examples like that but those are the examples of basically I played the role of this guy's father for 10 fucking years or something like that. And he stopped being a deviant. Yeah. But I think, it's like outside I think the, of examples. Ex- you yeah, I think the, I think the level of the, of the kind of offending that they do also is a, is a major factor. It's like, Oh, 
like petty pettier crimes they're easier to kind of lower the recidivism rate on compared to violent sure, crime because sure. violent crime stems from a deeply disturbed psychological state that they that they developed because of child abuse or a bunch of other factors growing up I, I would say neglect is probably the neglect biggest factor. As well, yeah, I, I absolutely. think I, I know that like there is a, a good argument about like sexual abuse and um, uh, physical abuse that leads directly like it's a direct correlation to deviancy of a broad variety. Sexual um, abuse. I've is, seen a bunch uh, of people like eighty. Con- sexual abuse accounts for like over eighty percent of pedophiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Is that like it's not just that particular issue, but mm-hmm. it's like. Uh, a variety of different symptoms that yes. that come from that of, of sexual abuse as a minor and as well of physical abuse. That, uh, it uh, basically it, it splits off into different sort of symptoms that come from that. But yes. I would say that one of the big things when it comes to like the general criminal, I don't think it's physical abuse. I don't think it's um, uh, sexual abuse. I think that it's neglect. I think that is the biggest category. Mm-hmm. Mm, but um yeah that, that's and, an and argument neglect, that's an neglect, argument there. i mean just I can, I can say, yeah. ignoring them mm-hmm. i think it's just ignoring the child i i don't mean like even like not feeding them or shit like that i think it is simply ignoring the child and the child is like well my parents or my parents literally does not give a fuck about me at all mm-hmm. does anybody and i think that's what it is i that's think why that's why they go the to majority. gangs that's why they join gangs well yeah. it, it's it's I I think that it's it's not just a matter of gangs. I think it's an extreme issue with either I don't know what the psychological category uh, categorization would be, but it's basically the kind of mindset of my life doesn't fucking matter. Like whatever category that would fall under, that that is the the way by which that those people operate. Yeah, is um, that it's a, it's a, yeah. Go so, ahead. Yeah, someone mentioned in the chat. Um, they. Z Z Star, uh, he said the current criminal justice system basically imprisons people until they age out most of their aggression. The average age is usually thirty five. Uh, yeah, that's a that applies. That also applies mainly to um teenagers, because what you find is with um with um minor crimes like more minor offenses with teenagers mm-hmm. when they turn eighteen, that's when their aggression levels and their and their offending levels kind of drop over time that's not the case for more violent offenses yeah Um, and violent offenses is like you need to be over 65 or something i think is what the studies say yes um because you're 65 years old that's why you're not violent anymore kind of thing i i'd agree with all of that i Mm -hmm. agree with that based on my my own individual research and not even from what i remember from college but even just my own independent research on my own time i'd agree with that entirely Hmm. but the issue is is that um you know, everyone, and this is what I mean about rehabilitation is given up. Like even my own professor, when it came to corrections, he was a corrections officer and he introduced this idea to me. And I talked to my law professor about it when I was like in my senior year, uh, where he called it, uh, he, he spoke to arrest incarceration. He referred to it as warehousing. Hmm. That's how he referred to it. And my law professor who is not, he, this is like a high level guy who he, in this area gives regular interviews to the press because he's like the expert of the area of certain legal issues. Mm -hmm. He like laughed to himself and he put his head down and he said to me, he got close to me, he goes, don't say that during class, but you're right. And I was like, (laughs) wow. Like, and that's what it is, man. That's what it is. Is that the thing is, is that I honestly think that it, the the kind of thing with that is that the people in the know are the people that are involved i think that the people who are deep thinkers about the issue of of crime and corrections you know criminology is just in general is a broad topic or deviancy it, yeah, is the way that broad, i phrase yeah. it that it's that the people that are serious have like they realize that the side that even if they see themselves as wanting to be in favor of rehabilitation, that that side has basically given up Hmm. that the arguments that did used to exist when I was in college and there were arguments being given serious arguments from a variety of sources as it related to rehabilitation. They're even in the news that they, that those have disappeared Mm -hmm. at least in the American context. Like they've, they've just given up. 
Would you say? And would you say it's because a lot of the the field around rehabilitation is full of leftists? I kind of get that feeling it, that that's a, that's one of the reasons. I would say that it's that's broadly the reason, but it's because that so it's in the American context, it's because of six fifty. Yeah, it's because every single year in the United States of America, the crime statistics as it relates to black offenders grow worse and worse and worse yeah it's the and same with um the last time this in australia yeah. yeah yeah very similar well the the thing that i don't really i mean i don't really want to speak to the australian context but it you know in terms of like my position now it's like like well who who founded the country hmm. who founded australia was it the aboriginals did they found your country well, in Aboriginal culture, they believe Australia is made up of like diff 250 different countries within the continent, from what I remember. It's like their their interpretation of Australia is um, basically their little segmented tribe is basically their own country, which is why if you look at a, a quote-unquote Aboriginal map of, of Australia, like it's just all over the place. There are so many fragmented pieces that are like a country is it, in their mind. Is it based around ethnicity? Uh, I think it's based around, um, I think it's based, mm, well, if they're all Aboriginal, is it really? I think it's mainly their, they, they believe their particular communities to be the state, the state itself, um, which is why I, th I think one extension of that is because in a lot of Aboriginal tribes, they still do something called spearing, which basically um, when you're, when you're punished in an Aboriginal tribe, um, they literally throw a, a spiky wooden spear at you and, and it goes through your leg. They literally throw Jesus. a spear at you for punishment, um, which is which is why you see quite a few Aboriginal um, offenders ending up in hospital because they had to get rid of a, 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 a spiked up spear that has a bunch of like splinters and stuff in it. And it's fucking nasty, right? It's, it's, it's yeah. any wonder why that call it's any wonder why that civilization didn't survive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's why Prince Philip asked when he was alive, he asked one of the Aboriginal men in Queensland, I think it was, it's like, do you still spare each other? And he said, no, we don't. And I'm like, actually, hold yeah, on a, a second, lie. mate. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe all, in all his tribe they that, don't, uh... but in others, in others, they still do. All I can say is that in in the American culture, the the Indian victimhood nature, uh, oh, like it's yeah, it's yeah. basically the equivalent lot, yeah. to what of your Aboriginal issue. Yeah. Um. Although I don't even know which who's worse because the suicide, drug addiction, and alcohol problem among uh, Indians in the United States is worse than any demographic. That's the same here for Aboriginals, with the addition of sniffing petrol. Oh really? Oh, yeah. Okay. I I don't really know the statistic I mean, around that. In the sniffing States, petrol but... that that's a drug related problem because it gives them a high. That's why they do it. Yeah. They're, they're too poor to. Afford it's drugs. what's it called? Uh, not whiffing. What's it called? Huffing? Is that what it is? Uh, it's mm. called something. Yeah. But anyways. Uh, yeah. It, uh, the, the issue is, is that the Indians in that in that particular like community dysfunction. Well, I can tell you that you know as it relates to the. You know, that's where I think if any if anybody's, you know, based and ahead of the curve uh, on those particular issues, I know that I am because, yeah. man, I can only begin to tell you how unsympathetic I am as it relates to that particular issue. Yeah, because it's like a there was a war you lost. B, this is our fucking nation. We fucking founded it. You didn't found shit. You didn't build shit. We gave you what you got. Yeah. And C. You're dysfunctional as fuck. <laughs> D, you're fucking ethno states. You have no moral, you have no moral like to stand on. You're nothing but ethno states. So fuck you. Mm -hmm. In my my view is, and I think I had again, I'm ahead of the curve on this, <laughs> is that all of all of the reservations in the United States and whatever you got over there should just be dissolved. Mm. And my position is if you don't like it, get the fuck out of our nation. Because that's the difference. It's why it's the difference between saying country and nation. Mm. Because the fact is, is that I don't know the history of Australia that well, but it, I know the American history decently. And I can tell you that it's our nation. Mm. It's my nation. 
And if you want to say, no, we're on our own little ethno states and it's all it. Well, it's like, okay, well, it's still our nation. You're in it. Hmm. And I, I, I wait with bated breath for the day that we get somebody in the Republican Party or somebody on a national stage who basically says, you know, because this, this is the difference. I mean, maybe this is the difference between like basically you're sort of like nationalist light versus like an actual nativist. Mm. Uh, but it's like th- this. I mean, this is definitely out of left heel for what we're talking about. Yeah, but... I know. I've been trying to find yeah. a, a segue back into the island. And I, I, I guess but... we can just go back to it. But I, that's my whole <laughs> yeah. argument is basically I, I'm an American. I'm an American citizen. I'm a proud American I I live in the United States of America, founded by a particular men that were not Indian, and none of the Indians actually did anything to actually found this fucking nation outside of, in, in a limited capa- uh, capacity, playing the role of mercenary. Hmm. That's about as good as we got here. But outside of that, we founded this nation. It's our nation. Yeah. And if I it think, were uh... your nation, mm-hmm. you still wouldn't have invented the fucking wheel. <laughs> And that's the fact they yeah. were, dude. And the fact is, is that not only do they have their own ethno state, so they have no moral ground to judge anybody, but they were the most barbaric fucking slavers in this entire continent. Mm-hmm. Okay. The Indians in the United States were barbaric fucking slavers. So all, all I can say is that, that, the English colonists who became Americans, and it wasn't just the English, but that was the original colony or mm-hmm. the, the British, whatever, that they created civilization in this in this area, in this region, and they spread it from coast to coast. And thank God they did it. Mm. Because what they replaced was nothing more than disgusting barbarism. A immoral barbarism. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the I think the whole idea of uh, will extend it into white guilt, basically. Um, I have no reason to apologize for anything that happened um, to Aboriginals back when Australia was um, in its like infant years, because my ancestor actually, um, what he w- he was a, I think he was an Irish soldier. He w- he was sent by the British Navy to go to New Zealand, and he was ordered to kill the Maori people there and he said no i'm not doing that so he was sent as a prisoner to tasmania for not killing maoris so so my wow. heritage is the least racist of them all basically no i'm not killing this other people okay well to prison with you kind of thing and that's how <laughs> that's how my side of the family wow. got started here so it's like yeah i have no reason to to feel bad for for anything that happened before because i have no heretical response not heretical. I have no responsibility for that from my own heritage. If we must well, go down that, you say you say heretical, but that is the perspective that they take on it. Yeah, they, that they, is the yeah. fact. It, they see it as. I mean, I can't really speak to them for for the Indians in the United States and for blacks. It's blood guilt. Yeah, that's how they view it. Absolutely. That is how they view it. And if you say if you look in the other way, they would call you like every word they could come up with. Yeah, but um, the in, fact is is that they, yeah. they treat it as blood guilt. Yeah, in in Australia, um, there's a there's a there's a there's a lady named Jacinta Aunt. Um, she's she's a I don't know if she's half Aboriginal or, or full Aboriginal. I know she's an Aboriginal like activist, p- politician kind of thing. Um, and she speaks. She was at the forefront of discussing a lot of issues within Aboriginal communities, like surrounding um, child sexual abuse and drug drug problems and violence and all that. And she gets called a coconut. For, for, for yeah, criticizing I mean, the it's community. no different it's here. Like, yeah, it's like, fuck, fuck me. Like, this this is why you, this kind of attitude is not the, the path to integration. Like, you, like you, no, lament, it never will you be. lament your own circumstances being shit because white man kind of thing. And, and then when I, we I, offer I, you help can... and when we offer actual suggestions, you're just like, no, white man, I don't want, I don't want your help. It's like, okay, well, well, well if, you, if you keep going I, down that I... road, then. What can all, we do? all I'm saying is that in the United States, that the way things are going, um, especially here, and um, I don't really know how much you read into American news. It's very presumptive of me. It's uh, Twitter it, shows but... me a lot of news, regardless of what I, how I feel about it. So. <laughs> but the uh, like I mentioned before we went live, the Asian hate crimes that are yes. going on here, like it's yeah, it's brutal. That. It is all over the fucking place. Every day there is an, uh, another fucking brutal story. And the the fact is, is that like 
there's a difference between you punch somebody to rob somebody and what's going on. Yeah. I guess they and, got tired of um, attacking the Jews. I guess that's what happened. Yeah, basically, that's. I talked to somebody the other day who lives in Brooklyn about this. Yeah. Um, about the Orthodox Jews, and as far as I know, it's still going on. Yeah. It's just not making the news. That's, it's fucking terrible, um, honestly. It really is. Well, the the thing is, is that basically either um, you you basically have two paths to go down, and um, this is kind of the debate that I just had with Sargon, aka Carl Benjamin is that his position is basically it's only ever going to get worse. And my position is, and this is like I say, I, I am a liberal, but it basically comes down to the fact that like, well, you're limiting my choices. You've binded my hands. So now we're limited in choices of what we can do about this problem. That you can't go around beating, you know, old Asian women in the head with a concrete block. Yeah. That you can't do that. I'm sorry, but that's immoral and it's illegal. You can't do that. And, I can just imagine um, I can just imagine a movie scene is like, you can't just drop cinder blocks on old Asian ladies' heads, nigga. What are you doing? Well, the the issue is is that it, we kind of get back to like the the metaphor that I was really taking a long time to draw about us being on the island. Yes. <laughs> so that, sorry it took that long to get back on. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. So here we go. We're circling all the way back to that, yep. but it's basically you got these rules. You got these rules, and the question is is whether everyone's going to you know Abide enforce or, you know w whether people are going to agree to the rules. Yeah. So the problem is what do you do with the one guy who doesn't want to obey the rules, who will tell you, I'm not going to obey these rules. So they're just overtly telling you, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to obey these rules. Well, that then introduces the actual, like, it gets down to the very, like, basically, what would it be? Um, uh, I forget what it's called. It's basically not osmosis. What's it called? Uh, like, the, the original pool or whatever it's called mm. of, like, uh, oh, what's it called? Chat. Help. It, it's basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what's it called? Where it's basically the 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 origin, like the spawn of something. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, it's basically. Also, thank the you spawn, to the guy who like, said hereditary. That's the word I wanted to say. Hereditary. No, oh, well, yeah. that's not the word I'm looking for. I know. Uh, it, I just uh, wanted but, to acknowledge chat. See, You're not invisible. Yeah, see if somebody says it in the chat. If they say it in the chat, it'll, it'll be nice. Primal soup. To... <laughs> yeah, the, 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 primal, the primal nature of humanity. Like, you're, you're getting to the very bare primordial. basics of what makes yeah. you... Yeah, primordial. Thank you. That is the exact word I was looking for. Hell yeah. It, it has to do with the exact basics of humanity is... What if somebody doesn't agree and you can't persuade them? Mm -hmm. Well, the answer simply is force. That is the answer. That is the only that is the only option that you have left. And mm -hmm. the opposite of that is we're on an island. You set up the rules. You're the leader. You've been elected. There's 12 of us, you know, you and I, all the same yep. situation. But you got your rules. There's everyone against me. And it's you as well. You're the leader, but I have a gun. Hmm. Who has so, the power? So basically, this is beyond the realm of civil disobedience. This is this is now going into well. Um, the the question violence. the question is an, the the actual nature of power. It, it is violence, yeah. but that is like it, it's like it's already accepted that no matter what it is, if you're exerting power, it is force. It doesn't mm -hmm. make it always you know me punching you in the head. But it is always in some form coercive. This is why Starship, and so, Trip, Starship Troopers is a good film, by yes, the way. <laughs> yes. It's this actually is, really this good. is it very much played out in that. It's actually explained, I would imagine, more so in the books. But yeah. the, the nature of power is there is no real debating it. So you can claim to be the leader. All the people can claim, no, we voted him the leader. We voted on this rules. They're all, these are all the rules. But I have the gun. Mm -hmm. So that means, in truth, I'm the one in power mm -hmm. because I'm the only one that can actually execute their will. Yeah. And that is the thing that as it relates to what's going on in, in, in the course of the world, especially in the United States with the Asian hate crimes, with what blacks are doing in general, with, you know, the debate around policing and all that it, is it's a variety of things. A mm -hmm. lot of things that could be talked about. It, it really gets back to the basics of, 
you might have laws, you might have rules, you might have social norms, but it is the question of power. Who has power? Who can actually wield that power? And do laws really matter? And it's why, you know, I sort of, I, I, I'm pushing back against the, the concept of you talking about rights, because you can claim rights, but can you actually enforce those rights? Mm -hmm. And I think that especially in the American context, that is the thing that is now being called into question, the way things are progressing, because you can claim that like, oh, there's all these laws in the books about violence. There's all these rules in the books about um, you know, hate crimes. There's all these rules in the books for the, the police and all these things. But if you are a black man with a cinder block in San Francisco or New York, and you are caving in the head of some old Asian lady, mm -hmm. who actually has the power? And it is the black man with the brick because, or the cinder block, because he knows that there's no bail. He knows the charges are going to be dropped. He knows that there's not going to be any repercussions to his actions. And that's why we have seen this rate of violence skyrocket. Mm -hmm. Because I can guarantee you that if, and it's basically, it's basically all one long road from the permissiveness towards crime, the permissiveness towards criminals, the permissiveness towards looting, the permissiveness, permissiveness towards violence. Like it's all one long road to where they're violating more and more and more and more laws and it's getting more and more and more violence, but there still is no actual repercussions outside of isolated incidents of prosecution. Yeah. And this is, so um, this it, is kind of one of the, um, one of the things I remember hearing a lot of, um, I think leftists, like left-wing people are particularly fond of saying this and it's like, well, the deterrent effect doesn't really work kind of thing. And, um, in a really specific context, if, if you're talking about in the, uh, deterrence is a mixed bag, right? Like, yes, there are, there are no. th like, it's a, like, I'll try to explain. It's like, like, okay. The laws themselves are not going to deter a violent criminal, right? Like, okay. Yeah. In that sense, like, obviously deterrence doesn't work because they are not operating on the same rational framework that everyone else does when they follow the law kind of thing. Right. Um, what, what we, what we're talking about here mainly is, um, like your, your rights won't be respected unless you exercise force to protect the rights. Right. Yes. Which is why we yes. have, um, prisons. We have to, we have to imprison people who are a danger to the community in such a way that their rights will not be respected kind of thing. Um, and that, that it's not really deterrence, but it is, um, incarceration like you need like no, you need any, like you need something to keep them away from everyone else and that will yes that is that the, the practical thing, effect yeah. but de actual deterrence would be public displays to inspire fear mm -hmm. that is deterrence and that's what i'm more in favor of now than so in the past because i think that um if anything i've been proven absolutely right about that because everybody's talking about their rights everyone's like a big has a big dick about being free and all this yeah they, and then they COVID say they comes have rights but they the, don't want the to government them. shuts down yeah well the, the government shut the government shuts down every fucking thing in the world mm. and what do people do what do the bulk of people do they put their fucking head down and they submit it and without a second thought yeah so i think that the real phenomena is if you want to have a real effect on stopping certain criminal behavior, you need to have a response that is public, that people see, it has to be and that, is, that uses over immediate and it, it uses overwhelming force. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you have, and basically th this would be my example. Um, I am, uh, what would it be? Not is a county commissioner. I can't remember what it is. Uh, what it is for my area, even what I had to look it up. No but worries. it's basically you're in charge of the county. But you're whatever. You're the mayor. You're the governor. You're whatever. You're in some executive position. So it's something separate from um, a legislative. You're you're in a, an executive position. There's a riot in a city. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have two choices. You can either enable the riots by basically having a soft touch and allow these businesses to be burned down, thinking that that's going to pacify the rioters and that it won't happen again. Or you can have a level of deterrence. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, someone mentioned and the level the, of the yeah. Someone mentioned in the chat. It's the same guy as Zed Star. The actual deterrent is to crime is to catch criminals and prosecute them. Research from criminology shows this. That only really works when you're talking about someone who operates on the same ra rational framework of of deterrence. If you're a violent criminal and you go through the court system and you go to prison. That's not yeah, a deterrent. They don't give a shit. Yeah, they don't they care. They don't give a shit. They have no reason to care. Watch, watch, so they, some, watch they these people, some of these people get sentenced. Watch some of these people get sentenced. They don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. So if it, we're talking about like relatively normal people, yes. If we're talking about deviants, no. Yeah. Like a, and, deter uh, a deterrent so any would case, be for a normal person, oh, I got a speeding ticket and I have to go to court yes. to explain why I haven't paid yes. the speeding fine. You, 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 your That's insurance goes deterrence. up because you lost some points off your license. You mm -hmm. go, God damn it, I got to slow down now. I'm losing, I'm lost points on my license. My insurance going up. You know, I got to stop speeding. That's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. I used to speed all the time until I lost points on my license and my insurance went way up. Mm. But I've been really fortunate. Case, I have never, I've never received a, a ticket. I've never been pulled over by the police. And I'm, and I'm yeah, 25. I used to have so. a lead foot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in any case, getting back to the issue of deterrence. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Bad echo. Again. Uh, yeah. yeah. It has to be Discord. Let me just. Yeah, straighten that out real quick. Keep that window open. <laughs> yep. Anyways. Uh, better? Okay. So, as it relates to the issue of deterrence, and especially as it relates to looting and sort of the crime that we're seeing. You you basically want to go above board or, or over the top. Like you you like I, I don't know what to say. It just seems like I'm just surrounded by people that just have given up that have that they've inverse they, they've either given up or their morality is inverse. Um the idea is like, to you want to stop looters, yeah. okay, shoot some. Yeah. I mean they they go on about I proportionality. Mean, you want to stop people well, okay, me, pro or? proportionality only works when it comes to violence if you actually meet it with overwhelming force yeah yeah like they they say that, proportionality but when they but i think when they apply it in practice they really just think uh, just leave him for alone for a bit he'll be fine kind of thing like that, that yeah like that's not proportional kind of thing it, it's like, like what are you well, actually it, doing I mean, to help them you you basically get two two kinds of stupid people that look <laughs> at criminals like bona fide violent criminals as basically children throwing a tantrum you just need to let them wait them out wait them out and they'll eventually calm down mm -hmm. and then the other ones are basically the fucking cocksuckers who just want to let them go those are the two the two ways of the people that have inversed their morality that feel sorry for violent criminals it's they're having a tantrum so look at them like a child you know, like somebody like George Floyd, who's like fucking 60 years old or some shit. Mm -hmm. And and then you have the other side where they just want the criminals to be let go. And it's like if yep. you it, oh, like, oh, by the way, here, here's here's so my whole position. Like it's ridiculous. It, it, by the way, here's my position. If you actually are on that side of we should live in a society where criminals are allowed to they should just be allowed to do whatever they want. Fuck this society. Fuck this country. Overthrow it straight up. <laughs> Not even, I'm not joking remotely. I, I like, we live in Gomorrah. Then we live in, we live in a biblically evil fucking place and fuck it. We all, we all deserve to die then. We all deserve what we get. I'm not even joking. I know you're all. not joking. It's just so funny. <laughs> like, <sorry>. we, we, <laughs> we live in a legitimately immoral and fallen society at that point. Hmm. Because, like, I don't, like, like to live in a society where you're like, you're going to watch some kid be raped in the street and you think that it's wrong to stop that rape mm. like that's your mor moral beliefs like oh there's a little kid getting raped in the streets but we don't want to inter interfere because that would be wrong to use violence against that violent rapist criminal mm. like i it, it like it, i it, it, like we're, we're getting there we're on that road mm. and I don't know why so many people have been seduced by this mindset, but it is it is basically a mindset of weakness. And all I can say that what we should do are those of us with any kind of moral clarity just need to assert ourselves and say, all of you are fucking weak. All of you are either pacifistic, amoral, like morally relativist fucking weaklings. Mm -hmm. You need to shut up and st actually stand up for living in a decent nation. And the fact that 
It's just like, again, it's like the issue of tiptoeing around like, oh, well, prostitutes are sex workers, workers and uh, like you need it. Like, and it's, there's a lot of lot of right wingers that are tiptoeing around these language games. It's like, no, fuck these degenerate criminals. Fuck these fucking people that are irredeemable, that are evil, that are sadistic, that would kill you and take your shit and not even blink and would laugh as you are fucking rolled into the pit. Hmm. You know, these people are not worthy of any fucking sympathy. And I don't understand why that the, I do see some positive development from our side, at least in standing opposed to the people that have basically inversed their view as it relates to this particular issue, that they are sympathetic with the criminal and that they are actively antagonistic towards the innocent hmm. or the police. Like it's, you know, they use the police as basically the scapegoat of like, Oh no, the police need to do X or they need to do Y. Mm. And no, I'm not really sympathetic with this violent felon. I'm just, I'm just very critical and skeptical of police power, whatever fucking shit they want to dress it up as. <laughs> but the fact is, is that in that you are Michaela also Bryan condemning was the just innocent. an innocent victim after all. She, she yeah. I mean, she, yeah, she tried to stab a girl, but that's just like totally normal guys. Fucking teenagers always try to stab each other with knives and uh, in the streets. I, you gotta, you that, gotta just that, stop being racist, bro. Kind of thing. Ugh. That, Those people, that yeah. issue itself, that in it, that issue itself, I think, is actually not as offensive as the George Floyd issue. Mm. I think the George Floyd issue was far, far more offensive yeah, because that, so that was, many people allowed themselves to be seduced by such a fucking horseshit narrative, and they're standing up for this cocksucker. I mean, you could paint all the murals you want to this guy. This guy was a fucking piece of shit. Hmm. If this guy had survived that interaction, he would have gone on to be a piece of shit criminal. He was irredeemable. Yeah, he, I was, remember, he was like 60 I years when, old. Yeah, I remember when the George Floyd thing happened initially. I, um, I, I wouldn't say I was like, oh yeah, Black Lives Matter. No, not even, not even the slightest bit. But I remember thinking at the time, I was like, oh, his knee was on his neck. That's pretty fucked up. That's not good. Um, but as the evidence rolled out after the fact, I've since changed my mind on the whole thing. It's like, no, he didn't have his, like, yeah, putting your knee on your neck is not a good idea, obviously, but he didn't do it in the first place. It was between the shoulder blades. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but so, the, yeah, the, the issue is, yeah. is that you and you, you and I are actually having, like, even if we really got into it, which I don't want to, mm -hmm. as we're related to that particular incident, yeah, there is actually a debate there and all this and that. But the problem is, is that, like, you're one of the, rant, like, you're one of five fucking people on the face of this earth <laughs> who are like, hold on, let me look at this video. Let me look at the actual facts. Let, let me look at, like... Most fucking people, like, they haven't changed their minds slightly as no, related to the haven't. issue. And I haven't either, because even while there is an actual discussion to be had about that particular interaction, the fact is, is that, like, like I say, my my beginning and end is George Floyd was a piece of shit. His life didn't matter. <laughs> Fuck him. You know who I'm concerned about are all the people that he victimized during his lifetime. Hmm. That's who I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about the innocent in society. And I don't give a fuck about the criminals. I don't give a fuck about them. No, I don't care fair. how un unjustified the shooting was or how unjustified the throttling or the knee was. Fuck them. Because they're... They, I just don't understand. It's like, I, I try to debate people about this. And it's like... And I've had limited interactions with this. And it's just like, I don't understand how far gone people are. It's like, if we were in this situation where a criminal is about to th cut your fucking throat, would you like me to stop them? <laughs> and it's just like even people can't even address Hold on, it. Let they me can't think even about acknowledge it. Oh, <laughs> that if it was even their life being threatened, yeah, that they would be like, "Yes, please stop them." We, like that's how far we are, and that's why I say, as it relates to our side, we need to totally, totally just fucking pull back, just like decouple from this argumentation. And just say, if we are going to get into the nitty gritty, fine, have the nitty gritty. But that is the completely, that is the minutia that doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. The, that is a minutia that doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. The nitty because gritty the people, that you and I um, could get into if we really wanted to, which I don't, it, I don't really for this one. But um, it, yeah, most people don't operate under nitty gritty circumstances. They say they do, but really they 
um, no, a reactionary it, it is a according to what Twitter feeds them on their timeline. It like, is a fucking fringe. Thing. Yeah. It is a fringe of people that are actually concerned about the the facts of what occurred. And we're getting a little bit of reverb again. Okay. It might be my fault for yelling. But... Maybe. Hang on. Let me just mute the mic again. Yeah. And we're back. But, yeah, okay. The important part is, though, that the, the, the nitty gritty, while it is persuasive to, like, the rational actors and the people who are actually concerned... The problem is, is that it is such not a, what the culture a considerably is. small amount of people. And the problem is, is that basically, while the other side is basically saying criminal lives matter, fuck the innocent. Mm. I want to live in Gomorrah, rape the fucking angels. Like, that is the other side of this, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and this and is this is the, why, just to, just to kind of sort of mention another topic, um, this is why Billy did nothing wrong. This is why one angry gamer was right. <laughs> yeah, if we want to get into that particular issue, yeah. then that's fine. But I think that they, it is, I do think that is a good swag, segue because it is basically the same point. I, I'll end by saying on the point of the George Floyd matter that mm -hmm. if the other side is basically saying, rape the angels, fuck the innocent, we're living in Sodom. Mm. The problem is on the other side, you can't be the piecemeal, let's get into the nitty gritty. You can't do that. Because yeah, it is, we're, it, we're is long it is past a matter that. of we truth. We tried in 2014. Um, we tried since yes! 2012, and it's since been like because the communists have just just refused to debate you well, on it, anything it, it unless is, they can just is, shout their opinions at you. That's that's where we're at. I can't remember the the Italian phrase of it of like we don't care. I forget what that Italian phrase is for uh, the Italian yeah, fascists. Fredo something whatever. I, I remember. Yeah, yeah, we can yeah. look it up. But that is literally their position. Yeah. They don't fucking care. But so in my my point is to say that what we need is the overarching overarching narrative for our side. That is what we need. That is the essential. We need the overarching side. So when the left comes out and says, "Oh well, you know, like I say, rape the angels," and I'm not even I'm not even exaggerating, rape the angels and let's live in Sodom. Fuck God and the rest of it. Like we can't answer that with here's the facts, here's the statistics, here's this this. That's that's fine. Let's do that as well. Like that's fine to have. I'm not against actually proving a point using the truth and actual like uh, demonstrating the truth. I'm not opposed to that in slaves, but that no is si secondary no to si having the, no no idea what the fucking phrase is. It, it is yeah. what we need is the overarching narrative. That is should be the primary focus. Yeah. Basically, um, yeah. Basically, what you're saying is we need like some form of muscular liberalism i think is one of the things carl mentioned from a uk politician was it, it david cameron who said it or something no not david cameron i don't um, i don't know it it's just the been. idea of like yeah we we like our individualism and we like our american values and all that and if you go against that in such a in such a ridiculous way that you want to overthrow the state fuck you we're going to take you down kind of thing that's what we need we need that particular like well overarching narrative it, it, you we need to stop we need to stop again. being friends with them because they don't they we're, right well that's, we have that's, people who are trying to be friends with them where they want us literally dead kind of thing yeah 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 totally agree uh fix your reverbing again real quick oh my fucking lord yeah what can oh. i say but in any case yeah um oh, hold on i will i'll mention with billy because i think we i, I was we going to get on to that yeah with Billy. Um I wanted to say with Billy, um most probably don't know this, but I was I don't know if you've seen me in the comments, but I was a very frequent commenter on One Angry Gamer back when they when they had discus. I think stuff. so. Yeah. I I was I was very particular about my mission when I when I would read these articles and I would share them. I am very anti censorship, especially of the kind of things that I like, even for things that I don't care about, like like oh I like I don't care about F one Grand Grand Prix racing or whatever shit. But the the booth ladies, for example, should not have lost their jobs, right? Like I'm very against that kind of like getting well, rid of I the, mean, getting rid of the culture the, of a thing. Um, the obvious is basically that's the first step. Yeah. So so that's 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 one thing I really I always wanted to discuss with Billy when he was still around, and I would always make sure like I've always. I've never had a problem of disagreeing with Billy on something. Like he would talk about, for example, like 
uh with propaganda in in media right like he would he would make arguments along the lines of like um you're propagandizing children and you're teaching them this this and this thing and i would always be very particular to say look we can argue this stuff but as long as we don't go down the route of video games cause violence that kind of like thing because they'll use that against us as long as we don't go down that route then yes i'm in agreement but i'm always careful to make that kind of argument for example or if he um for sure. example if he's like oh um michael jackson was a pedo and i'm like i don't agree with that he's a pedo kind of thing it's like i i'm i'm not an echo chamber kind of guy but a lot of the people who went after billy seem to think that it's just a fucking alt-right echo chamber i've disagreed with the alt-right on many things i've always stood my ground that i'm not a white nationalist and i'm not this or that even if we have one or two issues that we agree on just because we're talking about video games kind of thing right ne never ever have uh, ever been alt-right and i never will be alt-right um and 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 another thing with billy um i don't i don't think he was alt right either because i don't remember him ever blaming jewish people for the problems it's always been in the comment section that did that yeah like like yeah he would he would talk he would talk about neil Druckmann going on about oh i'm israeli and i'm a i'm a jew and he would talk sure. about in an argument like that and it's like well that's because neil racialized himself it's not billy doing yes. that neil did that um yeah i think the whole the whole um the whole thing we our, our side did with billy was absolutely fucking deplorable because he was the he was basically the only news outlet we had that actually talked about the things one of the things that made gamergate what it was and that was video game censorship he was the only one that would actually stand up for video games even if it's one he didn't necessarily agree with like um some fucking yaoi visual novel or whatever if that got banned on steam at any point which most of almost none of them do by the way right but but he would say like no okay this thing was censored kind of thing this is still bullshit but but everyone's like oh but he said fucking the nigger word and he said B -b 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 -b. It's like, oh my god fucking oh we got we really got a purity test people for their language when fucking <laughs> we're, we're gamers we we're going to purely test people, even though we as gamers say some of the most horrendous <clears throat> shit to each other anyway, and we want to promote that culture. So it's just the utter hypocrisy well, of the drug you're saying. I, I would say that you got to fix yourself again, Reverb. Okay. All right. All right. Anyways, so the, the, the problem with that particular idea of, like, what happened, because... I, I'm not 100% sure of what happened at the end. I was aware that basically the people that... There was a plenty of people that w were originally happy with it. One Angry Gamer that turned against it. There was things yeah. that apparently went on in the, the background of the actual website that I'm unaware of. From what, but, from um, what I understand, um, because Billy, Billy um, surrendered ownership to these new SJW people, and they're explicitly SJW. Um, they say so. Um, and the last thing he retweeted before his account was shut down was my tweet saying I'm, I'm withdrawing support from the website because it now no longer um, has the mission statement I agree with kind of thing. And then he just disappeared. That's basically it. Okay. There, are, there are theories that he was sued or the feds got him. There are theories like that, but literally we have nothing on, on what happened to him after that. Yeah, I don't know either. It might be just one of those cases where he just bowed out. Yeah. You know, because there is there's been a few people that I've known in the past that that just happened to where they're like, uh, you know, I, a few people from the GG days who basically that didn't flame out and then basically said, fuck you, Louis, like a few, plenty of people. But uh, one of the rare cases where they're just like, yeah, I'm kind of done. So they just message me and they're like, yeah, I'm going to get off of Twitter. Or I'm going to get off of this. I'm just kind of done. I got my own life to work to live and all that. It's like, yeah, no problem. See, you. Yeah. you know, and there's been a few people like that. And I'd rather have that happen than for people to flame out and basically just like destroy a friendship. Cause that's, that's happened to me quite a few times, man. Uh, all yeah. I know is that at th this point, it's just like, I do not care. I just, uh, I, I have like the small circle that I have and I, I'm not the only, the only, there's like a few people that I'm close to, but it's not really, it's not really that big of a deal because even now, like the closest person I'm to is probably uh, Sargon. 
Mm-hmm. And I haven't seen them in forever because, like, they, we haven't been able to do any events or anything like that. Yeah. So I can't go hang out or meet them or do anything. So it's not I've been really. Trying, it's... I've been. Sargon used to um, follow me on Twitter back in 2015. And that was like, like, oh my God, Sargon's following me. And I always wanted to keep in regular contact with him because I actually have a book with his name in it that I'm trying to give oh, yeah? to him. Yeah. Um, I got. Uh, it's a book on section 18c in the australian law like in the australian legal system it's basically like you're not allowed to say offensive things about race or whatever and i got i i met the authors because it's in a because um it's written by my university's professors um and i got the authors to sign the book address addressed to him and i've been trying to get in contact with him but he's just so impossible to reach now so yeah, I, I guess the, the thing I could uh, mention is uh, if you got that book, yeah, uh, I could probably that. get you in contact with one of uh, his henchmen. Mm. Uh, I believe it's Callum from yeah. uh, his show that you could just uh, maybe get like a P.O. I don't know if he has a P.O. box or a not mailing yet. address. I've been could... following I've been following them on Lotus Eaters and they said they haven't set up a P.O. box yet. So, uh, OK, well, then there is not much. I don't know if I can. You'd either have to find him in you know, IRL or whenever they get that up, then you could send it to him that way. Yeah, that'd be nice. But, but I need uh, to be able to travel and I don't have the money and the legal permission to travel. So that's always fun. Yeah. Yep. Well, uh, the uh, the only good sign I can't really get into it yet, but I have uh, I thankfully after a fucking year, I have a, a job lined up and I'm basically hey, that's a few good. steps shy of actually starting out and it's it, i i don't want to jinx it just yet because man it has been nothing but hurdles the whole time but yeah. it's just there is an, a, an amazing aspect to it that I, I will likely never be able to admit but i will be moving from the private sector to the public sector hey man like ser- <laughs> seriously good good luck to you because you've had a really rough 2020 and well we all have oh yeah dude yeah. my last year for me was freaking terrible man yeah. it was abysmal and this year this year hasn't been much better but i basically like i i was in such a bad mood during uh, ju- uh beginning of june mm. of last year 2020 basically when uh uh the riots were kicking off and oh, all yeah, that dude. like i i, oh, I thought me too, I, with uh with the whole virtue signaling from all the gaming companies including the the ones that are supposed to be from a japanese branch it's like oh my god yeah bro. yeah yeah oh, I was well, it so wasn't even that dude i was so black i i i legit thought like it just kept escalating and escalating and i thought like wow this is i thought literally at that point based on the way things are going that there was gonna be a legit chance at a breakdown like a civil war it was kind of at the point where well, mm-hmm. i don't know if you could even call it that but basically the blm like types like of a combination of activists and rioters were starting to march on the suburbs and people in the suburbs. And this is the the argument that I had with Sargon that, that he kept, he wouldn't acknowledge that literally suburbanites were forming lines hmm. and blocking their neighborhoods, like blocking the roads with like checkpoints and forming arms lines. And like, it was just a question of, um, like people made a big deal about those that boomer that yeah, had that the, really the really nice that house waved guns around at that at that, their personal that was private absolutely property by the way, which nothing. is legal. They did that was wrong. absolutely nothing compared to some of the fucking things that could have occurred. Hmm. Where the marchers, you had you had activists and rioters basically marching up to the suburb and being blockaded by armed suburbanites, and all that needed to happen was for them to say "fuck it, we're going forward." Yeah. And I, I thought like, holy fucking shit, this is it. Like I, I was so on edge, dude. Yeah. I thought basically they were going to march on the suburbs and the people in the suburbs were going to basically, cause again, these people aren't armed or are, are like militiamen. They're not like, you know, trained soldiers. Well, like yeah. you get, you, you have armed panicky people thinking they're about to get fucking jogged. Yeah. And that, that that's so it was up. such yeah. a it was such a volatile fucking situation yeah. and even in my own area uh there was a uh, a woman in a piece of shit blazer i think a chevy blazer who was in the middle of buffalo 
who just drove through a line of cops, just straight up drove through a line of cops and ran over two cops and seriously injured one. Fucking hell. And the, the whole city was like sucking the dick of the activists and that never went away. And in Rochester, which is not that far from me, it's like an hour and 20 minutes, a uh, pretty big city. Uh, like black people were just straight up targeting whites. Like they were just straight up looking yeah. for white people to attack. So I, I literally thought like, Oh my fucking God. Like, it's like we are so on the cusp of of it being over because the thing is is if it was getting down to basically you know the you know the the the, 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 put in the context of eric cartman's it's a race war sort of thing (laughs) um i'll put it in that context so you don't get your channel banned um (laughs) i thought it was going to be basically i'm not sure what you call it not really a snowball effect but basically uh uh escalation like a snapback effect or what whatever the the actual phrase is but basically a a reaction a chain reaction that couldn't be stopped where the activists march into effectively what is a white neighborhood Mm -hmm. the white neighborhood is basically like they're coming to burn our houses down and kill us or loot us or whatever rightfully afraid yeah and they literally said they it say, on video as well that a lot oh of yeah oh were, yeah i mean dude yeah, there, there was when the when the jews were getting attacked in new york city one of a legit activist was like i'm going to the diamond i'm going yeah the diamond, diamond district, guy. district, oh, district. Fucking hell, yeah and that guy was an actual activist who was in new york city and he spoke to somebody on a camera and he's like i'm gonna go district and burn it down Hmm. and the diamond district is like a disproportionately jewish commercial place that deals with like precious gems and that Mm -hmm. and so basically it it, it's not the the point is is that it's radicalized black identitarians who are engaging in violence and the question is yeah um well basically they're they're grand like the grandchildren of the Farrakhan movement. Like mm. these are people that are way further down the line from the origin source of Farrakhan and the same ideology and the same basic like black nationalist sort of ethos. But basically the fear that I had was they're going to walk into the white neighborhood, the white, the white people were going to draw a line. And I don't think in those particular scenarios that I saw, especially what happened in, in Philadelphia, that, the white people were not going to back down Mm. that they were literally going to stand their fucking ground in open fire or just fight. Which and what happens when, by the way, self-defense is perfect. No, no, no. See, that's the thing. That's fine. And, and problem is you and I are sane. (laughs) Um, the (laughs) issue is you have that happen. You have Phil, it's in Philadelphia or it's in Arizona or wherever the, there's these instances where, where the whites basically stand their ground and say, fuck you, you're not going to attack us. We're not backing down. And we're, we've basically effectively drawn a line. We've created a border. Hmm. You're not crossing it. You're not attacking us. Or we're going to use violence. All that needed to happen was for one city, for those activists and the rioters to say, you know what? Fuck whitey, we're going at them. Hmm. And the whites shoot back. And I was so afraid that it was like the media is like, Basically, because I, I swear to God, all, all you would have needed to happen was one of those actions happen. The media goes, it's race war time. And I mm-hmm. thought this country was going to be over. Mm-hmm. I thought this fucking country was done. I was terrified of that happening because the media, they were so ready. I swear to God, dude, I, I was watching cable news mm-hmm. every day. And I swear to God, dude, the cable news were ready. They were ready to freaking like throw up the Roman salute and declare them uh, on, in favor. I'm not even joking. No, I know. Like, it's, say that they're in favor image. of the black ethno yeah. states. Like, mm-hmm. I I was, they, it was so bad. And I was, dude, I was so afraid. Because that's all that needed to happen. Yeah. That's all that needed to happen was for a group of black riders and black activists to say, you know what? Fuck these guys. We're ready to die. Mm. And this, I swear to God, dude, because the media would have just, the very second that happened, they would have said, white supremacy has risen in America, and this country's over with. Hmm. And basically pick a side. You're either on the side of these white national, these white supremacists, or you're on the side of the blacks. Pick a side. Yeah. And I, I was ready. I swear to God, dude, I was ready for this country to be over at that point. I, I thought it was legit going to be over. Because I, I figured that they were going to do it. I, I, when the, the white people were basically drawing the line, I was like, this is it. They're going to cross the fucking line. They're going to attack. Hmm. 
and these people are not going to back off. They're going to open fire. And I was like, I knew that like the, the combination of social media and the cable media were going to spin it into like, because they, 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 they I mean, well, you have to the understand same people who thought World War three was going to start because Trump was mean to Iran sometimes. Like they're, sure, they're the same kind of people. It, yeah. It, it's not even that like that's actually the sensational part of it that they can capitalize on so there's that but you have to basically understand that the whole point of like the 1619 project and a lot of stuff that is basically akin to that like have you heard of that the 1619 project of like america started in 1619 with the first slave ship blah, 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 and all that you've heard of that uh not that particular one but i've heard of i remember okay. seeing a blm activist holding a sign as like it was like, what year was it? 1448 or whatever. It was like, oh yeah, we we killed Whitey back then and we can do it now kind of thing. It's well, like, oh, the... It's, it's something different, yeah, but it's like, oh my god. The, the rhetoric the, the so point bad. of The point of the 1619 Project is basically to say that basically America is evil. Mm-hmm. That the foundation was illegitimate, like yeah. the founding of the United States is illegitimate. Yeah, so the nation itself is Australia. illegitimate. Yeah, we have something similar in Australia where they classify Australia Day as Invasion Day, even though well, it's everywhere. It's yeah. it's I it's everywhere. I guarantee you, it's New Zealand. It's in Australia. It's in the UK. All over the UK. It's in the United States. It's in Canada. It's in uh, all the white majority nations. Let's yeah. just put it like that. By the way, uh, for, for those who don't know. Um, like 60% of Aboriginals are okay with Australia Day existing. Just wanted to put that out there. It doesn't matter. You yeah, don't never, never ask for the consent of the people that you beat in a war no, or yeah. that did not found the nation. Like either they, I, they I'm basically, I'm this is saying the thing. It to like, put it to perspective for some people. It's like, it's only the left that are trying to say it's invasion day kind of thing. Well, like, the, the problem, them. the problem is, is that like, they say it, they say it, they say it and the normies buy into it and they say it too. And it's like, yeah. well, you know, my position is pick a side. I'm on this side. They're on that side. If you want to be the fucking useful idiot and go into the meat grinder for the leftoids, by all means, I'm not going to stop you. But you're going to be on the side of fucking bullshit and lies mm-hmm. and ideology. So good luck. Have fun. And and so it, what I enjoy about this, though, the, the powerful thing that it actually gives us as a tool, it, and it's the thing that has been failed to capitalize on by what is effectively our side, mm-hmm. is that... And it is, and this I think ties neatly into Billy D and One Angry Gamer, which is yeah. the actual realization that these people are evil. Mm-hmm. Like these people are evil. They're not. They're not misunderstood. They're not. You know, it's not just like this casual kind of malice. Like yeah, we all thought these people. We all thought they were just you know a bit dumb, and we could maybe argue with yes. them to to see things a certain way. No, they they don't actually care about the arguments. They care about winning which is something I've, yes. I've been really pushing, at least on Twitter, since since last year. It's like, look, these people literally don't care about anything except winning. This is all they want. Yes. And that's and that's why yes. they, they could just steamroll us and ban us on, on every platform, because it's like, I don't really care about what your opinion is. It's just, I just want you gone. That's it. Yes, it, it is literally the same disposition as, like, the Italian fascists or whatever other fascists, yes. like... I mean, it doesn't really help them. They got Biden out there saying, you know, we the we, we the government, the, the, oh, the, yeah, yeah, we gosh. the government, yeah, 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 shit like that. Oh where it's Lord. like, yeah, that was, it's that it's was literally, so bad. yeah, it was. I thought I I don't remember whose stream I watched it on, uh, whether it was Carl's or it was um um uh, Stephen Crowder because they both I saw covered it. On it. Lotus um, I that's where I saw it. I I oh no actually I don't think Steven Crowder did cover that aspect. I think it was just Carl. I think yeah. Carl and the Lotus Eaters were the only ones to cover that. Yeah. But um I it is true. Like whether you think you can debate whether you think he actually I I think genuinely that Biden does believe that. Yeah. I think like so that too. is an act, an accurate representation of his worldview. But if you were to ask him like, "Hey, listen dude, I'm with you. I'm I'm DNC insider. I want us to rule. Blah blah blah. Like yeah. Like, like are you like a fellow you fascist tell, like me? Yeah. You can tell it's his genuine opinion because, um, because he wants to basically rescind the Second Amendment or 
well, he says, oh, I want to do this, this, and this. He's basically just infringing. Well, it, it, like, it, it's not, it it's, it's not even, it's, it. it's not even that it's basically, it's switching from the position that the state is the, the only purpose of the state is to in, in effect enforce your rights versus we, the state give you your yeah, rights. That, that was the point. I was, that, yeah, that is was the, the point switch. I was going to lead up to. Yeah. It was, oh, rights come from the that, state and not from the individual. Yeah. That's what that's what yes, Australia yes. has to deal with all the time as well. Like we we are embedded with the philosophy of rights come from the state. We don't have we don't have the same spirit of Americanism where it's no the rights come from God or the individual kind of thing. We don't have that here really. And and it's well, such a Well, all I can tell you is that um the 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 real question based around arguments about about our rights and ab about basically the nation state and mm -hmm. like even that like philosophical arguments um one of the problems that we face and this is actually i think one of the direct benefits of listening to someone like nick fuentes mm -hmm. is that he manages to cut through a lot of the arguments as it relates to uh the more liberal perspective and i mean the actual genuine liberal, liberal perspective down to the actual nitty gritty of it is what you're arguing actually a self-sustaining argument for the actual nation is this actual argument around rights and around like the constitution let's say is this actually a self-sustaining argument to keep it in effect and i think that the real the real hole that he has poked in that argument is that it isn't and i think that sargon has recently come to this conclusion as well mm -hmm. is that that you need to have something more than just the argument for liberty freedom rights the the and it isn't it even transcends the idea of your own responsibility which is like the standard boomer conservative argument mm -hmm. i think that we're we're basically getting down to the actual primordial basis of why we should have a nation mm -hmm. why should we actually have a nation and i think that the problem is is that while the point of rights and liberties and wanting to live in a free a free society is right because in basically practical arguments it is more moral to live in that society because more people being free does probably lead to a better result in a variety of factors of not just having, you know, more moral, tolerant, whatever system, but at the same time, give giving the people the opportunity to make different choices that could lead to actually better results than it would be if it were a more controlled society, even if it were more right wing. Yeah. But we're basically at the, the yeah. Sorry, I'll let you finish. Go ahead. I just well, want the the yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Go sorry. ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, it, we're basically at the point where we have the the tepid man wearing the suit who is like, well, actually, I think individual rights are good. And the communist uh, standing there, it's like, hmm, that's very interesting, but you're so fucking bigoted, and now I'm going to destroy your country. That's where they're at. Like, well, we're, it's, we're on it's, one level, they're on, I want to destroy your country kind of thing. That, yes, that, that's, yes, that's, that, that's the point, disparity. but it's the thrust. It's the thrust of the argument. And I would say that that's where we are. Our side is failing. Mm -hmm. Like we can, we can win on the, the sort of like nerdy factoid, like listicle article kind of like, we're right. We're right about this. Like, like, you know, libertarians are right about economics and that sort of thing. It's like, yeah, that is true, but they don't fucking care. They yeah. don't fucking care. And the problem is, is, is your argument actually persuasive to the, the people that matter to pull that fucking lever? Mm -hmm. And the answer, as far as I can tell, is that while it does work with a small amount of people over time, the bulk, it is not persuasive. And so what is then imperative on us is that if we want to win, we have to come up with a grand narrative or a grand thrust for our side. And the problem is... Although that I I do believe in the concept of championing freedom, I don't think that that is the message that is actually going to win us the day. Well, I don't think that that's not actually going to right. have us beat. Yeah. There's a difference. Well, it, it it's no it all all as it relates to well, this is again getting back to the arguments of of having the the right and having the enforcement mechanism. Back to the island analogy, mm -hmm. the the problem is is that. We, what we need are two things. We need someone like you 
or you know someone that can generally make a an actual well-reasoned well-articulated principled argument for the rules for rights for the system for the variety of things but in actuality what you also need is somebody holding a gun mm -hmm. you need that too you need it none of it matters it doesn't matter what god is in, what is god is god has granted us natural rights or the rights of the individual none of that matters unless you have the power to enforce it yeah and exactly. the thing that we are learning is that this is not our a of violence, opposition. By the way, Susan, just want to just want to say there's not there's not saying we no we're violence, we're we're way. talking about we're talking about philosophical concepts yes and I mean that that's actually what we're talking about mm -hmm. but, but the that, issue but is that like, on our close. side the, our side does not have the actual narrative and the actual thrust the actual argument that can get people to our side outside of, and this is the one area in which that I see co co uh, uh, cohesion. I see cooperation. I see gathering and power. And, and I mean that in the sense of actual political strength and actual moral basis and actual ability to campaign mm -hmm. and actual messaging and actual ability to fundraise. Everything right now is gravitating towards nationalism. Everything. At least, especially, I mean, I can't speak to your context because I don't know, but no, at least the American WA, context. We have a we have a Labour supermajority where Emperor Mark can just do whatever he wants. That's how, yeah. that's, that's my situation. And in terms of how you get out of that rut, I can't answer that question without a sizable amount more information. Basically, we just have, have to, to look up. We just have to become sick of mark shit enough to during the next election just vote him out and i think some well, people it, it, realize... it's amazing that your country is going in that direction when you have the uk basically where there, there's another election coming up in the uk and they're about to, like labor's about to get their shit kicked in again yep yeah we have yeah it's unbelievable we we fetishize government overreach a bit too much over here like, I think it's, we have a unique problem with that as opposed to the UK and even America. I think we, we're, we're too pragmatic in that sense where, we, where we're like, oh yeah, if, if this problem exists, just legislate it or just let the government handle it. And we, we go back to yeah. the pubs that we have to close at um, midnight. And like, I, I guess it's, kind of um, it's like an appeal to tech technocracy. Yeah. Like a or, is that autocracy. kind of what it is? Maybe autocracy, is. maybe. Well, me meaning like these people are the specialists. These people are the experts. Well, the, yeah. you know, I'm saying that, you know, the general idea that people have is, well, these people are the experts. These people are the specialists. Let them handle yep. it. And um, I read I read John Stuart Mill a while ago. I haven't finished the book, but I've read most of it. And he mentions one of the problems with letting the elites, electing the elites is they will elect themselves further and further into into positions of authority that that's something he actually mentions and i 100 percent agree with it this is why you can't just el elect oh the experts or or the right people well that you're, you're you're starting to cut in and out but that wasn't really the the, the question that i asked okay um, sorry uh but uh the question that i asked was is the general feeling among australians mm -hmm. that uh, the, the appeal is the reason why people appeal to the government or vote in, you know, more government power is that the people generally feel like, oh, well, they're the specialists. They're the experts. Let's let them have it, have it yeah, and that, do it. That is, that, that is a, that is a pretty accurate representation of most of the, most okay. of the urban Australians. Maybe the farmers probably don't agree a hundred percent. Maybe the, the more like low, like the low key um southern or northern air um, villages and cities probably don't agree with mark mcgowan's politics but the problem with wa is most of our most of our population is located within one particular section that's actually habitable or habitable. yeah um, yeah so so we're we're too urban in that sense to to really see yeah it. yeah maybe the government shouldn't be involved in everything why not they're in charge of the infrastructure of the city that's like the smallest isolated city in the fucking world it's like what's the why why would the government be a bad thing in that sense you know like a lot of a lot of people yeah. are just too blue-pilled basically yeah in our sense yeah our country. I, I i know what you mean and that's one of the problems of having too much like urbanites demographics yeah 
in a particular country. And I think that's why Europe is the way that it is. Mm. I, I think it's because it's got a lot of urbanization compared to uh, even in, if you look at the UK, it's there's a lot of like, you know, middle of nowhere, you know, but in yeah. the United States is exactly like that as well. Mm. But it um, what was I going to say about. Uh, you're still cutting in and out. Yeah, I noticed you dropped out as well. Let me just try again. Okay. Just be my internet because Australian Let me start internet the call. is garbage. See if that fixes it. And the call. I mean, yeah, yeah they they're slowly fixing it in the United States. Yeah. It's but you know. All right. Um. Yeah, it's getting really bad. All right. We'll, uh, we'll end the call and then we'll. Here, let me. Uh, I'll connect. call you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, be back. Guys, we'll be back. Something. We'll be back in just a tick. Sorry, guys, we're just having connection issues. Probably my fault because Australia is really, really fun. Sup, Niggy? We're back. Yeah, okay. Let's try this. Uh, let's keep this going. Um. Anyways, what was I going to say about... Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's about uh, the the voting issue. Where I was d explaining the idea of having like a general thrust for our side. Yeah. The the, a the like, a, like an overarching oh, yeah. narrative. The, the nationalism. That's what I was talking yeah. about. Like the the fact that that is the one area by which that like the the right is gaining strength and has um the and it's so natural too because for a variety of reasons. But the at least in the American context that that is gaining strength and it's not just the united states where this is true but it's a, a variety of nations but i think that in the united states with trump that this was the big one and i think with the republican party now like it is it is just the inevitable outcome of the way politics are going for the right in the united states like everyone everyone is go basically going from being like middle of the road well i like immigration conservative to basically being like the most nationalist they can be. I, every person who I listen to on the right, with some very limited exceptions, has dramatically switched to becoming more nationalistic in the last few years. Mm. Just everyone. Yeah, I think with and, yeah with America, you have the unique situation where you have the nationalists taking over the Republican Party in a big way, whereas in in Australia we don't really have that. In fact, the the liberal quote unquote liberal party. Um, here just kind of gave up well in wa specifically they're in power overall federally but um we don't yeah what would i i kind of subscribe to um the the idea of a third party like voting alternatively at least in australia because we just we're just so fragmented in a lot of ways but i think america is unique in that you can actually claim the republican party for yourself which uh, I've, I've come around to thinking thinking that way because of you and um, a bunch of your videos where you talk about that issue. So I think you're, well, I think you're very unique in that. Yeah. I, it's happening because I, 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 I've been right about this the whole time. There's been a, a few people that have been out there making the case of splitting off and it might be different for different countries. I know that and um, the UK, at least they're in quite the bit of a, of a conundrum mm. because Labor is basically falling the fuck apart, and the next they got blown the fuck out. The conservatives have some kind of large majority. I can't remember if it is a super majority, but they have a, a large percentage of, of yeah, power it, in it, the UK. It's in, it, it increases dramatically, even in um formerly Labor areas. Um, the Tories um are fucking yes. smashing it right now. It's and, and, and good riddance, by the way. Fuck the Labor Party. Yes, but the 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 issue is is that basically. The Conservative Party is basically the Labor Party. Yeah, like it has that's become issue. the later yeah. Labor Party, mm -hmm. and it's like, well, now what do you do? You basically are turning into a one power, uh, party state mm -hmm. where you have uh, the Conservative Party who can serve fucking nothing. They can serve the some... Labor. They can serve Labor laws yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, what do you do then? And so that's a very unique thing. And I honestly, you know, as an outside pers perspective, I'd even like to say what I could offer if I had any kind of solution to that. Mm -hmm. But honestly, it's so unique of a problem that I don't know what you can do. Like, what do you do with a, like a, a an almost indefinite, uh, 
super majority of one party that is ostensibly your side, but they mm. literally govern only as the other. Like, what do you do from there? And that is a really interesting phenomena. And I, I only wish that I could uh, get Carl to not be as black pills as he is about that situation, <laughs> because it's like he's so black pill. But it's like, dude, you have your entire fucking country voting for the right wing. I mean, come on, man. The problem is like, the, that's, that's... The, it's the same right wing that bans spanking in pornography kind of thing. Like it, it's just those, right, little, right. those well, minor issues. It's like, well, oh, he, of course, we're back to the eighties again because these guys couldn't let the, that the shit problem go, is kind of is that the 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 British the problem is, and I say this for everybody who's British practically outside of maybe the working class, mm -hmm. is that they're fucking snobs. They're all fucking snobs. They think their shit doesn't stink. They're like, oh, nationalism, national pride. How gay is that shit? Oh, I'm so it's so beneath me. You know, I, I am I am a patriot and a nationalist, but waving the flag. What are you a fag? Like it, it's like <laughs> they're it, they're so smarmy and they just don't get it. Like and I and I'll include everyone on, on um Sargon show. I'll go on Sargon show if I had to, had the chance, fly to the UK. I'll go to Swindon and I'll shit on everybody on that show and say that, like, you guys need to fucking humble yourselves because your, your focus should not be spelling out black, you know, black pilling news and then laughing every now about this. If you actually want to win this fucking fight, then you need to take it a bit more serious than the way that you are. And what you need to do in the UK is stop eschewing the, the working class that are proud to be fucking you know, English or British, like yeah. they, they're actually are more like Americans than you or, or like a, a working class Brits, as far as I can see, have more in common with American, the working class than they do with you. Mm. And it, it seems to me that like a lot of like the middle class Brits who claim to be on the right are desperately afraid of actually leaning into nationalistic politics because that's so, oh, it's so uncouth. <laughs> um i and, and in the united states all i can say is that we lean into it and the problem is is that is it directly leading to like you know people throwing up roman salutes and saying oh we hate niggers or anything like that no it's the <laughs> yeah. absolute opposite more black people are joining the fucking republican party mm. more latinos are joining the fucking republican party so the fact is is that we're not losing by this. The only demographic that the Republicans are losing currently are affluent white women. And that is a fact. Hmm. Go look it up. Gaining with blacks, gaining with Latinos, and we're losing affluent white women. Yeah, I remember and you the question that is, last who are we losing? Well. Yeah. That is the question. Who are we losing to who are we are, we're gaining? Mm -hmm. The... The reality is, is that the women we are losing are the same people who want who like kevin mccarthy in the house who like mitt romney who like liz cheney who like jeb bush they like caitlin jenner running for in california for governor they they like these shit candidates who are destined to give the best conceivable concession speech you ever heard oh this is the best concession speech i've ever heard listen to it listen to that language it's mm. so heartfelt listen to the best concession speech i've ever heard they are fucking losers with a loser fucking mindset mm. and that is the question that is ultimately the question because if you look at the difference between especially for the the, the, the difference the breakdown of the nationalists in america versus the neocon neolib uh internationalist element of the right wing they are dyed in the wool fucking losers. They don't care if they win. They don't care. And, it, you know, in some cases, like it was in Georgia and other places, they are actively helping the other side win. And it, it's like that is that. And again, that's the, the, the metaphor that I have about the snake. Where we talked about right. I, I don't know if it's right where we went live yes. or right before we went live. Yeah. That was the metaphor that I used was the snake of you, you it doesn't matter if if you want to be part of the republican party or be a part of the right wing and you are an internationalist or you are basically a sellout to the left wing or to corporations or whatever whatever that's fine i don't care if you're here and you're voting republican that's fine but the problem is that 
when you're actively strategizing with the Democrats to make Republicans lose elections, now you're the snake that's biting us. Yeah. Now you're a threat to us. Now you're just inhibiting us. And I'm not saying, oh, we need to do anything crazy. We just need to rip your fangs out, however we do that. Because mm-hmm. you're, you're literally hurting us. You claim to be part of the, our side, but you're not even doing You're not fighting. The, I mean, this is the thing. When you look at all these fucking the former dying in the wall anti-Trump who helped Joe Biden win. Win, quote unquote. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. Fortified. That, Fortified they, they victory. Did, no, they're not advocating anything for the right wing. Mm. They're... they're the, the, and this is the challenge that I have about the neocons and all the people who call themselves conservatives. They're not. Uh, n- name me one of these fucking people. Hmm. They, I, oh, I don't know. Discord is really bad. As far as I can tell, they are simply. Oh, is it fucking up? Discord has just been like, oh, your oh, your voice man. is like in the red. It's like try to. It's because my internet's so shit. I, I see it go up and down. I'm all green yeah. on my end. Yeah, it it's literally me. Do you have do you have Steam? Uh, I do have in the background or anything. No, I I, I would I just turn have, all that off. I have OBS um and two browsers, and a uh, and a setting thing. Yeah, I don't okay. I don't have anything else on. I. I don't. When I start up my computer, I don't have okay. Steam or anything booted up. I I have to open that manually if I want to use it. So, okay. I, I well, think that's it is what I do. Point. I usually have a lot of stuff popping up. Yeah, I th- I think it's but just my. Internet. In any case, uh, okay. Well, I hope my point uh, came across nonetheless. Yeah, of almost all of it. Came basically, through, yeah. the difference I'm trying to make. Mm-hmm. Okay, the distinction I'm trying to make between people that. I don't necessarily agree with or have separate politics to me. Like, again, it's the argument with libertarians, although it's a little bit different with the libertarians as well, because the libertarians, I'm fine with you existing. I'm fine with you being on our side. I'm fine. You know, I like, I'm not against Rand Paul or anyone who's ostensibly libertarian. I'm not opposed to them. But the question is a, the question is, well, who needs who more? That was the argument I got into with people back in the day was who needs who more. And that was their argument. Well, you need us. And yeah. it's like, no, we don't. Hmm. We we greatly out like the the right wing, the conservatives, like we greatly outnumber the libertarians. Yeah, you need and, you need tampons in men's bathrooms. No, we don't. We need we need to we need to vote out the Democrats. No, you need you need yeah, exactly. to you need to acquiesce to their demands. Why? <laughs> yes, like you got it in one. Thing. You got yeah. it exactly right. That's the whole fucking point. It's, are you actually serious about winning elections Mm -hmm. or do like, it's a question of the people who are actively trying to take down the nationalist movement in the United States or any other right wing movement, wherever it is. Like if you claim to be on the right and you're actively like all you're doing is funneling millions of dollars and doing everything in your power to try to destroy this movement. Like, why the fuck are you doing that? that yeah why at that at that point you just kick them out of the party honestly like that that is well, so, that's so detrimental to the goal it, that it, it, keeping it, them it around is just not good it's just not worth it kicking them out of the party i think is is basically that is basically the question you're raising the right point of like what do you do what is the response to that and yeah. i think that for people that are in the leadership, like such as the case of the ongoing drama of Liz Cheney in the, in the GOP leadership, uh, House leadership for the Republican Party, that is a good example of that person. It's it's not just, okay, we disagree, so defang her and leave her in the room, whatever. She is legit, and everyone agrees now. Like, suddenly everyone's on board and understands, like, no, she actually wants us to lose elections. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah no shit. Too. Yeah. No shit she wants you to lose elections. No fucking shit. Mm-hmm. It's been true the whole fucking time. So the question is, can you, can that person stay in the room? Can that person, can you actually defang them? Mm-hmm. And it's basically what's so funny now is that with her in particular, it's so hilarious because it's just a classic example of finally everyone's in fucking agreement that at the very minimum, we can recognize that she is detrimental. She's actively inhibiting us and hurting us. 
So then it bears, you know, it begs the question literally, like, okay, what then? Yeah. Now Who's what next? do you do? Yeah. And and the question is, okay, and this is the big thing of like the sleight of hand that's trying to be done, especially with her that's going on currently, mm-hmm. is who do you replace her with? She's yeah, gone. That, yeah, you that's know? the hard part because you have such a because um governments are embedded with such nepotistic um cowards and conformists. So it's like, okay, well yeah. even if you replace well, we're talking Cheney, about, who do you, yeah, exactly, who do you replace her with? It, it's party politics. So yeah. it's it's like it is the ex, exact same dynamic, but it even has the difference of like even if they are like a dyed in the wool GOP loyalist. Like, let's say even if it's that kind of nepotism of like, I'm a real Republican and I don't give a fuck. I just want the Republicans to win. I like, donate to all that. Even campaigns that and stuff. would be yeah. preferential. Hmm. Sure, sure, sure. Even that would be, you know, it, it's like, again, Team Red versus Team Blue. That's the dynamic. Of, yeah. I'm Team Red, they're Team Blue. Fuck the other team. Why I'm Team Red. Even that would be preferential to somebody who you don't trust to not stab you in the fucking back, even though you're supposed to be on the same side. Yeah. Hey, I'm team red, but I really like purple kind of thing. No, it's not even that. It's like, I'm team red, except for I'm going to actively help team blue win fucking elections. Hmm. Even though your voting record is consistently red. It's like, if I vote 80% team red and you vote 78 percent team red why the fuck are you helping the other side win their elections yeah it's insane but that's what's going on mm. and yeah, so um, it's actually the question yeah of... uh to yeah wrap, go ahead yeah to wrap it up um another thing i was i was thinking about last year um within the australian context is um like specifically is like why are you helping the other side and i'm thinking about in victoria or you probably heard about it it was that bad it was the victorian coronavirus lockdown that went on yes. for like 10 months okay one thing i i saw in an interview was like one some of the australian conservative party members went on that yeah and it's like it's like oh the the idea of the interview is like oh here's a side that is against the lockdown uh, nope, not these guys. They're like, look, I agree with the government um, doing the lockdown and stuff, but come on, what what, what about Black Lives Matter not needing to wear masks and all that? It's just so hypocritical. And it's like, yes, okay, it's hypocritical, but that's not what you should be fighting against. You should be the yeah. side that is fighting against the lockdown. You should stop. You should stop acquiescing to what the government wants from people and be the side that's like, no, fuck that shit. But no, it's like, yeah. oh, I agree with Dan Andrews locking the down and, oh, you, you should wear masks. But it's like, oh, but what about the hypocrisy? Well, they don't care about the hypocrisy. That's why they do it. Yes. It's like, holy it's, shit. It's literally, it, it gets back to like, and that was the big thing that I think if you, it, it's really the question of if you haven't learned, like, it's, if you haven't learned that they don't care about hypocrisy at this point, like, goddamn, are you fucking lost? Yes, yes, like, yeah. At that I, point, you're stuck, I, in, you're I stuck wish, in 2015. I wish I lived year. in the fucking fantasy land that you occupy. Yeah. Where do you think they give a shit about the hypocrisy of it? And it's like uh, that's you're at least one of yes. the things. That's what they say. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Except rather than being the Chad, they're the soy that have the smug face. That that's them. They're not the Chad. And it works to their favor too, because it's like. Again, it's the whining, like, you're a hypocrite versus, yes, and we don't fucking care. Yeah. Guess what? That wins people over. That It's strength. Mm-hmm. It's strength. It's a form of strength. It's wrong, but it's a form of strength because they literally don't care. And the, the problem is, is that our side is so preening. It's so overly worried about Lolita let her follow them down the same road. It's like, well, yeah, no shit. We're not fucking evil. No shit, you know. See, it's if, like if you if you if you support gatekeeping your communities, then you're just as bad as the SJWs because you want to preserve the community's fucking culture. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Buddy, how about you? How about you fucking drink your soy latte and just stand in the corner while we actually try to fight the real fight? You know, fight. 
Like people who yeah, it... like I I was I was at so here's some trivia for you because you 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 used the term a couple of times when you were reading One Angry Gamer. Uh, the term centrist TM comes up a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually came up <laughs> yeah, with yeah. it. I was the one who coined it. Oh no way, really? Yeah, yeah. That and Billy adopted it afterward. It was like it the centrist TM. For those who don't know, because Kotaku and Action didn't fucking know what it meant because they were just spoken about Billy. Centrist TM is the kind of person who thinks they're in the middle of the thing, but always acquiesces to to the left and whatever they want, and always tries to defend the left. Um, in reality, they're just leftists who are like, "Oh, I'm not communist, but those right wing people are just just doing big, big meanie poo poo things, and I don't like that very much." That that's a centrist TM. That that's what they are. They they promote themselves as, "Oh, I I believe both sides have a." a a point in the argument kind of thing. It's like, oh, well, okay. The communists are literally saying, I want to destroy everything you believe in and fuck your communities, you're a racist and all that shit. And the quote unquote right wing that you deride is like, well, maybe we should just kick him out of the community. It's like, yeah, wow, yeah, 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 so yeah. centrist. I, <laughs> Such wow. I used to have a criticism. Um, what was the, the name of the guy that, uh, that unfortunately passed away? Um, the YouTuber. Uh, uh what did he, he what did he do like what did he say he was british uh he was like a, i think like a reviewer i want to say oh total biscuit yeah total biscuit yeah. i i'm pretty sure that was my criticism of him yeah i remember when would i remember back when you do that. talked about fire emblem fates cuz he talked about that as well um he he was making ridiculous arguments it's like oh is it censorship if your friend says he doesn't want to talk about a thing in the conversation it's like that's not the question that was never the, yeah. that was never the topic it was is this thing allowed to exist in its original form and the answer from the left is no whereas the yeah. gamers are like yes and it's like um that that kind of like unhelpful extrapolation from um some philosophical musings in this really particular context and that means everything you believe in generally is just invalid because of this little thing i i focus on it's like ah. Oh. Christ Almighty! It, it it drove me insane. That kind of that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. I I think I um refer to it then. I'm I used to have a few general phrases that I would use to the arguments that I would engage with back then. But mm -hmm. um, I remember that one of like the things would be would be equivocation. Where well, what about this other thing? And we'll just meander about that for a while. Yeah. And it's like well that that has actually nothing to do with what we're really talking about exactly. and you're just you're you're i forget what the 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 actual uh thing that would be done um uh, filibustering like you're basically just talking to eat time yeah um and... they're using whataboutism to kind of distract you from the main point that you're trying to get at the 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 real the real uh uh thing that i experienced directly going back to chris Reagan, that was this is yeah. another big thing that happened to us and i i took both barrels when it came to chris Reagan. yeah which is i'm not going to talk about this topic I, like this guy brought up x or i brought up x we're not going to talk about x this guy's a fucking fag <laughs> lol and i man i took both fucking barrels of that one yeah i remember and that and the the issue is is that basically it's it it's it really is that dirty tactic of knowing that you have a big audience knowing that you can appeal to that sort of of aspect and it is it is basically and i say that like because it is sort of that appeal that you would see in idiocracy of in the courtroom lol he talks like a fag yeah it, like it literally is just that yeah it's um I have a, I had a main saved on my phone where it's like, well, I have a bigger audience than you, so my opinion is correct. That kind of it's that kind of s smugness, and I, I remember back then that was, I don't want to dwell too much on the Chris Reagan thing because you want to move on, and that's fine. Um, I lost a lot of respect yeah. for Chris well, back old. then. Yeah, it was old, but back then I lost a shit ton of respect for him. I don't, I don't, I used to like him a lot, but now it's like, nah, holy shit, he is so well, useless. Well. He he basically decided that um, I I don't really want to throw around the term grifter because I fucking roll my eyes every time I hear the word. But it it yeah. was it was literally triangulation. Hmm. It was okay. This has run its course. Now I got to figure out what I'm going to do next. Triangulates 
and he did that and yeah. that's the direction that he went and as far as i i've never seen anything po i've not seen anything posted i still have plenty of people that i follow that still follow him yeah. nothing not a tweet not a fucking video jack shit from that guy yeah so it all i can say is that uh the guy made his choice and he'll maintain he'll he'll basically you know uh fall he'll fall with grace or whatever the, the buzz light your phrase is like <laughs> falling with style like that's yeah, that's what it style, is like yeah. you're you're never you're never gonna have any kind of real significance again unless you actually fucking uh really push the envelope and actually try to be somewhat out there with what you believe and yeah. what you push and it's all like that. that it's like that because he's, he's not an untalented guy yeah. he's definitely not an untalented guy but the problem is is that like he he basically stepped into something and blended in and then basically said like all right my time's up i'm out of here yeah and that was it's it. like that sailor moon meme where it's tuxedo mask saying my job is done here but you didn't do anything whoosh that that yeah that that's um well that describes a lot of I people was... who cling to the left-wing identity which i've noticed as well with a lot of old gamer gate types it's like yeah fuck fuck games journalism but i'm still leftist and it's like okay how how how's that a good thing so you disagree with yeah. you disagree with games journalists, but you still agree with them on basically every core tenet that they espouse. It's like what, what, why, why yeah. are you doing that? Yeah. It's like oh, but now I now I want to go on a podcast with Colin Moriarty and talk about PlayStation and how oh, good yeah, Sony God, is. It's like dude. oh fuck off, like yo yo that, wasted my time, like fuck off. That he's definitely the guy. He peaked up for a little bit for a while, like for I think like a year. He peaked up a bit. Mm. But I am very glad that that is another guy who I don't see shit about anymore. And I'm very yeah. glad for it. If anyone was, I, I will say this, Chris has some talent to him. Colin is a total fucking, is a total lightweight. He is, <laughs> he is borderline no talents. And he is. He still kept bitching full, out because Game of Game was mean to his friends. Bullshitter. It's like, oh, shut up. That was Colin's biggest thing. It's like, yeah, I don't know if I should support Gaming Gate because they were mean to my friend. It's like, oh, well, your your friends were literally saying that the entire gamer identity should die. And then they stabbed that, him. They all stabbed him yeah, in the it, back. It's like, fuck me. <laughs> and he learned nothing. No. He, he learned nothing from that. But I, 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 for a little while, and I realized that, like, this, this is, um, as he relates to politics, he's like a uh, Markiplier. Where there is no real there there. It's all persona. It is all persona. So it's like, yeah, fuck him. Yeah. Fuck this guy. So yeah, if, if he's the he's really the guy that if I ever had a bone to pick, that the the grudge is still there. Hmm. Because he he is the real intellectual lightweight. Wasn't uh, he, wasn't that I don't he one believe. of the people who instigated the Mass Effect 3. Oh yeah. If I remember correctly, Colin was one of the forefront arguers from remember what it was exactly but it was with mass effect that he yeah it was um gamer entitlement he coined gamer entitlement that's yeah. what his was and that dude that was such a big deal that was such a fucking big deal and yeah. now all the worst practices in the fucking industry are just commonplace and it's like and now, he's now everyone's dick. everyone's yeah. got a big dick about it again now well i don't pay attention to him i don't know what he says anymore but i well, really but don't care basically I, I, I remember that podcast started off as a playstation podcast it was like wow i love my ps4 and it's like here i am with my ps4 and i use that as a fucking mouse pad that that's what i'm doing with yeah, my ps4 I, right now because fuck Sony and their fucking i bullshit policies like holy shit I really, I, I am actually, I actually put a decent amount of use. I've never been a console guy, but I've mm. always put a, I put a decent amount of use into my PS2, into my PS3. Yeah, me too, man. But man. Absolutely. I, I barely put any kind of time into my PS4 at all. Mm. And the biggest thing that I played on it, I think like the most I played on it was Grand Theft Auto uh, 5. Really? And that was yeah. up until it went to PC. Mm. And then I never played it on console again. Yeah, I remember it's it's such a shame you never got back to Persona 5 because I think that's a that's a really fun game, I think. Well, I, really like I know, but all I can say is that when they promoted Drag Kids in the Americanized version, oh, the it royal was too version. far. Yeah, oh my God. 
Yeah, I I, I was yeah. chomping at the bit to buy that. Yeah, me too. And me too, when they changed that, I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Of yeah. all fucking things, of all, like, even if they, like, they changed it so they, like, made the gay characters, like, less offensive or whatever aspect to that. Like, even if it was something stupid like that, I would have still bought it. Mm -hmm. But when they changed it for the specific purposes of promoting the idea of putting uh, an underage character specifically in the game into drag. I was yeah. like, fuck this game. Fuck this. Of all fucking things. Yep. I just couldn't stand it. I, I literally couldn't take it. I was like, I, I had it pre-ordered. I canceled my pre-order. I was like, fuck it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting this game. Yeah, fuck I've you. done that with, and a, I never I've did. I've done that with a lot of games. And that I, I couldn't believe it. it. I it it shocked me. Yeah. That's no, so fucked up. Um, well, uh, it, it really is just that thing that, unfortunately, with gaming, it is... I, I really think that it's a lot bleaker than people realize. I think that people have this really stupid way of looking at it that they, they think that, oh, they got, like, you know, Watch Dogs Legion. Here's a good example. Watch oh, yeah, fuck Dogs that Legion. game, by the way. I, don't, there is, I never like, played that shit. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that guy. I, I own it and it's it's mediocre. Let's yeah. put it like that. It's it's really mediocre, but it's not it's not so offensive that I wouldn't say not to buy it, but I would say like if you buy it, realize what you're getting and it's it is like like chum, basically. Yeah. It is oatmeal. It is not it is it is left wing bent. It has a self contradicting narrative. It has self-contradicting themes because left-wing people wrote it. Yeah. So it's like they always got to be on the other side of power. And so they have to literally invent things that would never happen. And I, I don't know. I remember talking about this in at least one video where I, I talked about this explicitly about playing the game and how the internal workings of the game literally don't make sense. Like they are literally contradictory because yeah. it is like – in order for what ha happened to have happened, it would have never taken the form that it did in the game. Yeah. But the problem is you want you are left wing devs. You have a left wing bent. You have to come up with a bad guy. It has to be right wing because you are definitionally left wing. So that's what you do in the game. So you have like nebulous, vague support for left wing concepts that in some ways right are innocent. Thing, yeah. They're in some ways innocent, but in some ways they're offensive just from my disposition because it is actively promoting left-wing ideals in a game. Yeah. That is just propaganda. So, but, so that brings me to... Yeah. So I recently bought a game called Ghost Runner. I don't know if you've heard of it. I'm not sure. Okay, it's basically a first-person action platformer where if you die, you can just reset quickly and you get right back into the action kind of thing. It's a really fun cyberpunk game. But what I didn't know going in was that even though they're a Polish development development team, um, some of them are clearly fans of Marxism, which is why you have um, a character talk about, oh, we had this resistance leader called Saul, as in like Saul Alinsky. And it's like, oh, he talked about wanting to take take power away from this, this fucking corporate bitch who turned herself into a robot. And it's like, oh, she only cares, cares about production lines. And I'm like, can I just, can I, can I just side with the bad guy here because i'm sick of you <laughs> uh like well, and, and i didn't know this going it, into the game because no one talked about it right it's like oh yeah yeah play, played 120 fps i was like yeah that's really fun don't get me wrong i, I enjoy playing it but it's that like the story just drives me crazy now um and but but you wouldn't have known about it because one angry game is gone they would have talked about it but you guys decided he said yeah. too many bad words so fuck Fuck you, basically. Yeah. It's like, figure it out yeah. yourself. Pre pretty much when he went away, although at that point, I had, I had pretty much given up as well, and I mm -hmm. haven't really changed my position on it, that, like, the, the gaming industry is fucked, and it will remain fucked, and I, uh, you pretty much just gotta find your joy where you can, and that's pretty much as bad as much as I can say about it, because the, basically, the left is one, and it isn't just in gaming. Uh, like, if any kind of big corporation exists, it is by definition left wing. Yeah, and that's true. The people within it 
are basically, and I've spoken to a bunch of devs, like unironically, they contact me. It's been a while since it's happened, but when well, I was yeah, leaning more into yeah. that, mm -hmm. I had a whole slew of people from big ass corporations and like, I couldn't believe it. Like I had a couple, I had at least one person who I talked to for like a month straight from Rockstar and it was fucking incredible. It was like, it, it it was like an unbelievable experience. Like I'm literally talking with somebody who's actively working on shit for like they were doing online shit for GTA Online. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is fucking insane. And he literally worked in like the main offices. I've talked to uh, two people who worked at Activision, somebody who's like higher up, I guess. But it's like the problem is, is that basically all of them have told me the same tell, which is basically it's done. Like the 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 corporation itself is just left wing, like yeah. it's coming from the top, so it's over, like it is fucking over. I think uh, I would say that I would, um, I would what, reframe it in a ahead. way. Um, I would reframe it. Generally, I agree that yeah, the I don't like saying it, but yes, the SJWs have won the gaming industry. Like that, that's fully in their control. Um, but I think the the problem with just saying that is we don't really think beyond okay well what can we do next after we've come to that conclusion and the conclusion sure it, the conclusion i've come to is basically build your own games yeah like, yes yeah, yeah. it's harder that's... i know it's harder than say writing a book or whatever like okay that's definitely something you have to overcome but if you can make your own games and appeal to the people like the kind of anti sjw gamers if you could give them something that they want They'll give you money and you can have your own little communities, just like back in the 80s. You can have your own communities where it's like, yeah. okay, I like this thing and I can finally not want to kill myself kind of thing. Um, yeah. You have to let you have to let the, the gaming industry basically kill itself. Um, and you, I, you can I do don't that know, by not I don't know money, if that's... I, I think that it's just going to be a very slow decline because it all is, the numbers yes. show that they are very slowly losing money they're very like all these franchises that go woke they're not they're not making bank on them anymore they're not going to push them forward because some of these games cost like a hundred million dollars to develop because of just inflated costs yep and they're not gonna they're not if they are going to get that back it's going to be by a few million dollars and that's it's not going to get investors into your fucking like it, it like yeah, it's we're learning. They're basically Cyberpunk, taking the, the same. <laughs> Cyberpunk. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Cyberpunk is uh, like all, all I know is that even though they bragged about how much money they made off of that, and I'm not trying to shit on CD Projekt Red, but they are literally going to kill their own studio. Well, they're like, already doing it. The the director for Witcher Three resigned because um, the the atmosphere in the studio was such that even though he was found innocent of, bu of bullying allegations, um, no one in the studio wants him around anymore. So they're already culling their talent. Yeah. So I yeah. said this a little while ago that I, I had an inside source that knew devs at, at CD Projekt Red, and they, same, they said the same thing to me, that they're basically going through the same stages as uh, Rockstar would be a good equivalent. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess you could say Bioware, but Bioware is the more extreme example. Mm -hmm. um, but it's basically talented people who are like probably like utterly left wing, but they're not SJWs. So they don't resist anything. They just go along with everything um, and they have no real power. Uh, and that the, the people at the top of the company are just fucking useless. Uh, like, Oh, I'm excuse me, but I'm apolitical, so that means I'm gonna do everything left wing. So it's yeah. like, God, you guys are that's what I hear about CD Project Red. That's yeah. what I hear about it. Is that the people at the top are just useless corpo faggots. Yeah. And they just stand around and let all the left wing shit happen. And uh Bioware was similar. The two brothers, uh or whoever it was, not the brothers, that's Rockstar, uh the two main guys at, at Bioware were the exact same way. Yep. They were generally left wing, but they just left the let, let the left wingers do whatever the fuck they wanted. Yeah. And what did they do? They promoted left wing shit. They pushed out all the right wingers. They pushed out all the talents. Do you and think then they, they left? Do you think they went along with it because it's like, oh, they're left wing. Surely that's out of good faith. 
Whereas if, yes. if a right if well, a right wing person I, I, did it, they would have been like, hey, I do know about that. Hey. Um, kind of I funny. I don't really know what the impetus is for the people at the top. I don't know what it is, but I it doesn't really matter. It, hmm. It's just that is what happened. That I I have an inside source at um. I had an inside source at CD Projekt Red, and that is explicitly what they told me about it. And I had a person in Rockstar, and I, I didn't know this to the degree that I was being told, but basically Sam Hauser, I believe it was, basically radicalized. Hmm. And now he is effectively like an SJW. And he got fucking moved. He was like, okay, you're an SJW? Out. Yo, nigga, this is our cash cow. <laughs> what the fuck? You're out. And uh, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it because I wasn't even being I wasn't even being told by by I wasn't being told that that was going on by somebody within the studio and that could prove that he worked there. Hmm. But that is allegedly what happened to Sam Hauser at Rockstar was that he basically got woke and like take two and like the other corpos. I could be like, uh, yeah, Sam, we owe everything to you. But, bro, we want to make fucking money. Hmm. These are satire games. Like, and the thing is, that's what happened. He became serious. That's what happened to Sam Hauser. It would be like, uh, is it Trey Stone? Uh, you know, the people behind South Park, the two people there. Uh, uh, Trey, Trey Park, I think is one of them. Trey Parker or uh, yeah. whatever Stone. I forget what it is. Yeah, I know, I know the guys. Yeah, yeah, it's two, it's two guys behind um, South Park. If they got really serious and left wing all of a sudden, yeah, if they bought into like, their parodies, yeah, yeah, literally, like they literally, they literally bought into, like they no, no, they literally became the parodies of left wingers in their games. Yeah, like they literally became the out of touch left wing stereotypes they put in their games. That's what happened to Sam. Matt Hauser, and Trey. Probably. Matt and Trey. Matt yeah, Stone I'm Matt and Trey. Trey thank you. Yeah, thanks, chat. Sorry about that, but uh, the. That is effectively what happened to Rockstar. And so basically, when you basically have the guys who run the whole fucking show, at least one of those brothers becomes radicalized, you're telling me that's not going to destroy the company? Yeah. Uh, like, that's the problem when so much of one studio is one fucking guy. Mm -hmm. And, dude, if you look up his credits, and it's when I, I made a video on it, the guy was responsible for an unbelievable amount of the content of their games. Yeah. And they're like, okay, bye, nigga. Bye. <laughs> bye. Gone. Bye. And it's like that. And so basically, what has Rockstar done since then? They're not even doing anything with online anymore. No. They haven't done shit with Red Dead 2. They're not doing shit with anything anymore. No, what no, the the last thing they did with GTA 5 is put in a literal casino that gives you no money back. That's what they did. They put in a literal fucking casino. <laughs> It, it as it, such. It's I, will, I will only defend it for the sake that the shark cards existed prior to that. Yeah. And that the casino had been promised for an incredibly long time. Yeah. It, it was promised for it was like just bad years. timing because of the whole the legislation. Yes. Being yes. Proposed. Yeah. Yes. It was really bad timing, but the problem is, is that you can ha you can hit them from both ways. Hmm. They roll out something they promised years before they actually delivered on, and it, in the release itself was pretty shitty. Yeah. Uh, or you basically condemn them for the fact that they have pay to play or pay to win, and I mean, I, and honestly, with GTA Online, the if you want to complain about anything, a overzealous banning b cheaters everywhere c whatever it is the rocket bike mark ii broke the game there mm. you go those are the big things that make gta online crap mm. cheaters fucking um being banned when your account's slightly off mm. and uh like your cash doesn't match up exactly you can you get three strikes you're done forever buy a new fucking game Yeesh. and uh the uh and i have two strikes on my account <laughs> Uh, not that I really play it anymore, but I got two strikes, dude. And, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, the rocket bike they put in that game, whatever it is, the Mark II, it literally broke the fucking game. It, it literally broke the balance of the game forever. Hmm. And it makes it unfun to play. So, if you're, I don't, like, people bitch about shark cards. Like, I, I bought one. I bought one five fucking years ago, however long it was. Yeah like to me it was not a big deal if you're playing it you're doing it just for the grind you're not doing it to whatever so 
I, I, that's my thing. It's the lack of focus. It's like the same thing. Like I was going to say about Watch Dogs Legion. You're focused on well, you can buy some points in the game. Shit costs money in the game, so you can buy that. It's like yeah, but I, I played the game. And I know somebody who beat the game. I know two people who beat the game. I never did beat the game, but I'm eventually going to go back, especially now, six months later, they just put out character customization in the game. Mm. It, it's like the game itself is not shit, and people are complaining about the absolute wrong things when it's like the the pain part of it is not pernicious. It is not pernicious in that game. Yeah. As Louis. it would be with maybe like, Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Can you confirm live on yeah. stream that your character created in Watch Dogs Legion will be a Guido boss character? Uh, no, because oh, that's not one of the characters you that you can create. Because, dude, they just, they literally, I think, put it in today. Yeah. Oh. They literally put character creation into the game today. So oh, basically well, how, from there... How are we going to get based Don Sargon then, Louis? How, how yeah, we, yeah. Well, you, you could, you could probably that? make him. <laughs> you could probably make them now because it seems like they because it was amazing. I could tell from the very day I played the game at launch and there's a booth in the game where it shows like basically like you can customize your character. Like it has that aesthetic, like it looks like a booth to where you could change your character. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? What is this thing? And six months later, they're like, yeah, by the way, character creation. And they put it all in in a day. It's like what the fuck like yeah i can't believe it's been and, six months i thought it's been a year you know oh i know it feels like a fucking year because yeah. it's probably you no know, one playing the game but it's like it, that kind of shit they had it all ready day, like dude they also had the online screen from day one and it took them six months to yeah. implement it like that is rock star levels of slow mm. and with none of that rock star hype. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, all I can say about Ubisoft is uh they are they exist on borrowed fucking time. I I swear to god that every game that they publish that is not going to run in the red is a fucking miracle. Because I, I'm holding out hope that Far Cry 6 is not going to be absolute fucking dog shit. Well, I've, but... I've come to the conclusion that it will be just because it's Western, but that's that's a separate discussion. I It's a rule. It's a rule of the day. Well, the difference yeah. is um, Cyberpunk 2077 was fairly, it, it, it's slightly above mediocre. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not absolute fucking dog shit, though. It's a lot of things, but it's not absolute fucking dog shit. Uh, you, you might say that out of anger because maybe you were hyped for it. Yeah. But it's trying to come up with an actual objective or at least more objective point of view of looking at something. For example, Watch Dogs Legion is not absolute fucking dog shit. However, the question is, is it more good than bad? Hmm. And I would say maybe with a customization that they just fucking implemented today after six fucking months maybe it's more good than bad but prior to that i definitely would question whether i would say it would be more mm -hmm. good than bad because it has a lot about it that is okay that is kind of cool but there's all these really weird artificial limitations put on the game that don't make any fucking sense. Like, if you want to create some badass super soldier, it is you spending hours with the game rolling dice and you desperately trying to find that character in the game. Hmm. And it is it is the worst thing possible. It makes it really fucking grindy. And... uh it is bad for that reason, and I don't know what the fuck they were thinking when they did that in the game. And I could say similar things about State of Decay 2. State of Decay 2 is exactly like that as well, where they should have given you some ability to control traits for the people you populate, and instead it is totally fucking randomized. And it fucks the game so badly. Hmm. Uh yeah, I just wanted to to wrap up my point I, with with I that. the game so much of a grind, hmm. and the only difference is 
is the the difference is is with State of Decay, which made the same fucking mistake versus Watch Dogs Legion. Watch Dogs Legion realized, holy shit, maybe we should customize this game where it's in a like it's part of the feature of the fucking game is you could play any fucking character. Hmm. Maybe we should make that part of the game as well, since it's literally a feature. Character customization. Why wouldn't you include this? So as far as I could tell, they meant to implement it from day one, and literally the game got rushed out. Hmm. As far as I can tell, that is what happened. Well, that's the that's the general thing they do with so many fucking Western games. It's actually kind of embarrassing, honestly. Yes, uh, it is. Well, that's the thing, is that I don't know why people are worried, because that's my real problem. People today seem more worried about Watch Dogs Legion having some kind of monetization where I've never seen to use to use it ever hmm. that's a bigger problem than the fact that six months after the release they're putting out online they're putting out character customization where there were details for that as though it should have been there day fucking one hmm. yeah that reminds me of it i like, don't know why people, i think the gaming community work yeah i think the gaming community is kind of because they're all on reddit because of course it's reddit um they're basically like the only issue that matters is monetizing video games and literally anything else doesn't fucking matter. Um, so you would have you have situations where um, there's a game called Devil May Cry Five um, that came out in 2019 and that had a that had a monetization system that really doesn't actually intrude the game overall. Yeah, mm -hmm. it shouldn't it shouldn't be there, but it's it's so invisible. Um, so people focused on that is like, well, how how can this game put that scene in there? And and then they ignore the fact that still to this day, in PAL regions in Europe and in in Australia, one of the cutscenes on the PS4 version for those regions is still censored, but not the American one. Like that that is just completely gone out the window in terms of discussion. Like no one wants to talk about it, and the only way you can get it normally is to play it on Xbox or PC, which is how I'm doing it. I play on a PC now, but it's like. It's like motherfucker. There are more. Th there are more important things than monetization. I know. I know. Reddit likes to have this whole big meme. It's like big corpo bad because monetization bad. It's like yeah, okay. Well, how about how about all your other friends that are going over to Japan and trying to ruin everything that they make over there? Well, you, it's like you no, you still, don't. Like you about complain that? about okay. you complain about big corpo, but you buy every one of their fucking games. Exactly. And never yeah. Them. It's like then stop giving them money. No, I That's, have to play a new I, I, thing. You think I, I forget what it was, but I had a few statistics a, a long time ago um, where it was basically, oh, uh, one of them was uh, the one game, Greedfall. Yeah. Uh, Spider's game. Mm -hmm. Not the, the, I like the studio. I still like it, but they got a lot more misses than they do hits. Let's put it like that. Mm -hmm. And is this Greedfall is it? I don't know. Um to the guy who's uh, asking about DMC. I don't know if it is. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so the point of Greedfall is it's a game that people lavished and I bought expecting it to be good. I pre-ordered it because I like spiders and I thought it was going to be a good game because it seemed like they were kicking it up a notch. And it's a game that literally just falls the fuck apart in the third act. Like, it just falls the fuck apart. Hmm. And no one finished it. Like, next to no one finished it. When you get to the third act in the game, it shows you on Steam, like, how many percentage of people get that achievement. It was, like, 2% of the players. Hmm. And, like, five months in. Like, five months in, 2% of people had actually reached the third act of that game. So no one had actually reached that point. They played it for, like, 20 hours, lavished it in praise, and then never played it again. Yeah. And I think that that's... I think that that is something true about a lot of games that people praise and say are fantastic. Yep. They, they put 20 they play, hours into yep. it. Absolutely. And they, they drop it and never play it again. Yeah. Uh, and that was true for fucking um, Mass, uh, Mass Effect. It was true for every Mass Effect game. There yeah. was more people that didn't finish Mass Effect than did. The majority yeah, um, of people that admit, played Mass Effect didn't finish I'm the game. I admit I'm guilty of this because I have such a huge backlog. Um, I... Like the the problem overall, because I suffer the same problem, is you just need to be able to focus on the fucking thing and finish it. Stop letting yourself get distracted. Yeah, well, but it's... so many people just want to fucking be like Lamau Reddit meme, Lamau Twitter meme, Lamau. 
Oh, by it's, the way, new game came out. Yeah, soy face. Yeah, that's what they do. Every every game needs a hook, mm -hmm. uh, and I can tell you that games either have it or they fucking don't. And I think that that's one of the big issues with uh, a lot of games. That it, correct yourself for your little echo, real quick. Yep, hang on. All right. So, uh, point was that. I think that a lot of games either have a hook to them or they don't. And that is one of the big things that people kind of look past. And that if I really cared more, I would talk about and sort of elaborate on. But I, I am basically like, I am the the actual like, uh, I don't know if you call it like a, a white pill or a black pill or exactly what you, the clown pill, like what exactly pill you'd call it. But I'm I've basically <laughs> accepted it for what it is. I don't like if people want to go off and do their own thing. That's basically how it can quote unquote improve. Is that's other the people only thing just we go can do their do own thing because because you can't just kick out you can't just kick out the people in um the companies because you literally you're we're all nobody's. no it, it's it's literally the companies yeah so there is there is no actual chance anymore to correct any of this like it is simply going to be every single company on this track. Every single company that involve these politics that go the same way, that make the same sort of characters, that involve the same sort of politics. Every game has a fucking resistance now. Everyone is part of a resistance. It's in every fucking game. And it's all, it is all like code words and dog whistling for the left wing. Yeah. It is, it absolutely is. Uh, the, the, it's so often the case that if you listen to developers, if you get them talking a little bit about politics, they will lean into the real life politics. So you absolutely know that they're putting this in the game. They're dog whistling to other left wingers. Yeah. So, um, especially it's, one it's, company, especially, yeah, yeah. One company, especially that does this is Sony's fucking Twitter account. Like, especially during the BLM thing is like, well, property can be rebuilt. It could be remade. It could be all this, this. And it's like. Uh, you're the representation of a company that puts in DRM for a PlayStation Vita and puts in a time bomb for your consoles to stop letting people yeah. play digital games. And you want to talk about restoring property or it could just be rebuilt. Well, like, don't worry about property. For, your your for entire the business runs on copyright. <laughs> the whole thing. The entire, the entire fucking purpose of that for the corporations is it's... It's really just kind of like I think EA has pretty much epit epitomized this is that it's it really is just managed decline. Like that's all it is. Like yeah. they just want to keep their corpo influence in politics. They want to keep their corporate influence in the market, but they're not getting any bigger. It's it's just managed decline and they're they're giving up yeah. effectively. Like the that is really what it is. The only major company I can think of that doesn't necessarily go down the same route as the others is um ironically it's Nintendo. Now yes, yeah, yeah. yes, Nintendo That's the only has, one that I'm aware of. But I Yeah, Nintendo has a bunch of problems that and I do not like a lot of the things that Nintendo does. But if you force me I don't me play to, their games. Yeah. <laughs> if you forced me to choose between them or sony and microsoft and ea and all that if you force me to choose i will just go nintendo because at the bare minimum they won't censor third-party games for example like that that's a statement they their president made um not long ago um and they will let me play the booby games with with minimal problems it's like okay so they're the least bad out of everyone else despite everything that we went through back in um 2015 and 2016 with the whole nintendo of america thing it seems like they are not as overtly censorious nowadays as they were back then now yes they're sneakier because they changed the dialogue as opposed to the costumes but that's better progress than what we saw back then where they cut out entire content you know yeah and it's like th well this all, is the final world we're in, where that... nintendo is now back in back in the thing where it's like oh yeah i like playing my nintendo switch now wow that i wouldn't have said that fucking six years ago i i would say that is is it relates to that particular topic of like the booby game sort of thing like yeah. i i my general like it's i don't really, really play those thing. games I know that. yeah yeah but the the position that i take on that is um 
unless you come up with some kind of alternative like unless you stage some kind of like like um, basically my my thing would be if you want to actually do something like everyone claims to be some sort of like four-dimensional chess big brain cryptocurrency fucking investor <laughs> literally and i'm not even joking like literally stage uh, an investment coup for nintendo and yeah, that, that's just what I would take do. it if, over if i was a millionaire i would actually be an investor for literally Nintendo. just and I would organize be like, hey a, so how about a... this thing um are you gonna are you gonna stop doing this and they'd be like well, well it's very important it's like no i give you money you do this thing now you stop you, st you shut Any... the fuck up and do what i want that's what i would do your your choices are basically to create your own markets which is basically impossible or the more the the thing you could actually do is basically get a bunch of people that like basically trick people into buying a stock, make a bunch of money off of it. So basically create a cabal, defraud a bunch of people <laughs> and get their money and then put all that money into a, a corporation and then use that money to actively leverage over the, the board of directors and get them to simply accept all the games that you want on that console. Like, and again, that's just the nature of power. Yeah. If you don't have power if you're not the one holding power then it's somebody else if it needs to be you in order to get what you want and it isn't then your choice is to be acted on you so they act on you or you literally have to seize power yeah that's what it's things, not that complicated yeah. that's these are the all strategies. publicly traded corporations mm -hmm. yeah um, that's one of the strategies i would normally propose but the problem is most people are not millionaires so that that's really up to again them. Um, have people, people invest in it. some scam cryptocurrency and get their money and then do it it's not that difficult as right. far as i can tell if people can collaborate to do some stupid shit over whatever for no reason then wait for your opportunity or create your own opportunity if you're serious about it but yeah the the complaining about it doesn't matter all you need to do is, is, is stop like it's why i think the sort of like uh, cultural commentary thing has kind of died out because is it's, because it's, in it part that that's why it, it didn't work and it's really just uh speaking into the ether or you know speaking to the choir uh and it's one of the you know the the ironies of being called pastor louis is <laughs> you know talking to the choir of my audience but it really does come down to the seriousness of being a tactician the question is do you want to win or you just want to bleat at, you know forever about your rights if you want to win they're gonna have to fucking do something and uh i would say that anything out of a direct power move so petitioning or those kind of moves that could result in something but likely not going after direct control of power over a corporation and basically taking a slice of the market itself that's what the nationalists and the actual true right in the united states are doing to the republican party mm -hmm. we're not splitting off we're not creating our own political party we're not doing anything like that no we're taking over what exists and there's far more that you can do with that even at a diminished capacity than it would be starting from zero yeah i agree because because the structure is there so why not use it okay yes i was thinking of wrapping up with one last thing what i wanted to do was i wanted to um i wanted to offer i wanted to have a white pill section in the sense of i want to give you something to do after the fact to have some fun and enjoy yourself because um, the last couple of years have not been great for everyone um so what i am going to do is something that you have not you have you have neglected sir you have neglected your duty to watch some anime every now and then <laughs> so uh, I, yeah it's been quite a few years yeah so i actually have a recommendation for you specifically that i think you'll enjoy uh it's called it's called saga of tanya the evil or just tanya the oh evil. i've heard of it okay. i've heard of it it's the uh, the blonde hair lowly and yes. it, it's like what is it reincarnation or something yes uh <laughs> The basic plot is this Japanese businessman, this hyper capitalistic businessman, who's like, "Oh yeah, I love, I love um, individual liberty and all that shit." So he gets reincarnated by God to be this little girl, and basically in a fictional, in a fantasy Germany, where it's like you have the worst conditions, and now you're you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna praise me by the end of it all. So basically, you have this little girl now who's like ultra based, ultra nationalistic, is like. 
fuck fuck these invaders i'm going to fuck them up kind of thing and then it gets to the point in the movie where you're literally fighting communists by name oh yeah <laughs> yeah so please by all means watch the show watch the movie you'll love it it's one of my favorites lately i uh, like my my Twitter profile is literally a picture of her of Tanya because oh yeah because yeah, in yeah. the oh, I got I got the books right here actually so I will oh yeah the... uh, let me just let me just pull out an excerpt I'm trying to remember actually I'll pull up Twitter just quickly because I bookmarked it I'm pretty sure bookmarks got a. I will find it eventually. Hang on. It's right. I know here it is. Well so in in the book there's a there's a quote here that says So of course she laughs at the fanatics, the blind believers. She can't stand that those dumbasses are just like the blind followers of communism and other dogmas, essentially another type of religion, who built mountains of corpses through social experimentation. The feeling stems from her views on humanity. Thinking is sacred because trial and error is inherent to existence. When unthinking people force their dogmatism on others, she wonders how stupid the world could be. Yeah, it's pretty base stuff. Yeah, states are honestly so well, evil. I... Sorry, yeah. Uh, go ahead, you can finish what you're going to say about the yeah, show. I just... <laughs> states are honestly so evil, they take good people and turn them into members of an evil cult. We need to consider their potential for grossly warping people's true natures. For example, the hateful Soviet and East German secret police caused massive harm to human nature. Behold society's fear under the eye of the Stasi. Freedom. Give them mental freedom. It's high time the human race realizes that individualism is the only path that will save the world. Drop mic. Yeah, I, it, you probably had the people who probably wrote that are probably right wing. I, I couldn't imagine like some non political person writing that kind of shit. Apparently, the, the guy. Apparently the guy who wrote it is a little bit leftist, and this is apparently his kind of caricature of... Oh, really? That's hilarious. Yeah, I know. So it's, it's apparently <laughs> no, that's his hilarious. parody on Japanese salarymen and that kind of, like, hyper-capitalistic um, per perspective, but well, he, he just fucking dropped red pill, left, right, and center. It's yeah. fucking... Oh, well, you gotta I mean, watch the, the, the movie at least, that... man. There, there is a lot of uh, old base stuff of like uh, of that kind of nature that comes from people that are fairly left wing, mm -hmm. um, who just they they, they just want to create something interesting. Yeah, and they still have that mindset. Uh, and I was going to say, as it relates to, I think that that is basically the the real difference of why. Um, and I guess this may go without saying of why there is such a rise in the popularity of like Japanese media and other media. It's because like you have these random people being like, well, let's come up with this cool idea. Let's do this cool thing. Yeah. And it's even with like the commercial corporal aspect of like anime, manga, all that, where it's like, I forget what it, the genre is called, but it's like Isekai where isekai, you, yeah. you wake up and like uh, you wake up in a fantasy thing. Yeah, you, uh, you it uh the translation of isekai is another world. So yeah, it's okay. uh, it's people being transported to another world, kind of right. like Alice and, in Wonderland and, kind of thing. And as far as I understand, like that's turned into like a corpo thing where that's yes. hot, so they milk the fuck out of it. It has, yeah. So the but the point is is that even though you might get like corpo garbage or mediocrity, you still get good things. Mm-hmm. And I would say that that is the distinction between Eastern media and Western media is that in Western media, like we like, it's just everyone has given up. Like it's just everyone you're either on board or you're fucking, you're working for these people and you're keeping your fucking mouth shut because I got kids and all this shit. Yeah. It, it is so abysmal at this point and it's why i say about western media um and, I, and by the way i just want to stress the point that i think that's why eastern media and especially japanese media is so popular hmm. it's literally nothing more than oh look at this cool thing look at this cool fun thing look at this interesting idea listen to these jokes hmm. listen to these funny things being said 
is literally just standard entertainment. It is like there, even if it a, is like you know, there's a there's an isekai about a guy who brings his smartphone with him, and one of the girls, I think it was that one anyway. It was one of the isekai anime where one of the girls is like. I hope you're not one of those male feminists who pretend to be nice to women and they're actually shit. And it's like, oh my God, did they just say that kind of thing? And they actually yeah. genuinely did. I'm like, oh my God, please, more of this, please. Fuck yeah. You. <laughs> so yeah, that, yeah, that's my recommendation. Tanya the Evil. I can, okay. I can link you up. I can link you up if you really okay. need, if you need me to. Um, I won't, I guess I won't say how YouTube, I I'm innocent. Or... He buys the official release, I promise. But yeah. Well, is there anywhere I can rent it? You know, is it uh, on anything like you can, Amazon Prime or Netflix? Or it's on Crunchyroll, uh, I think. Yeah. Oh no, I can't. I can't yep. go to Crunchyroll, dude. Fuck them. Yep. Okay. I I I'll hook you up. Um, after the stream, oh, okay. I'll hook you up. I know. I know a good place. Um. All right, but, but yeah, yeah, I can't um, go to Crunchyroll. Like I, I used to have a Crunchyroll account, but they yeah, they went way well. too overboard. Yeah, I um. I made a big deal about canceling my subscription because this was when High Guardian Spice w was announced. And it's like, okay, based on Crunchyroll statements, they said they took 50% of the revenue they make from subscribers, and that 50% went into the show. So I made a whole thing on Twitter where it's like, okay, so I've I've been subscribed for that many years, so you use over $200 of my money on a project that I did not give you that money for, so I'm cancelling it, kind of thing. So, yeah, I, I don't... Yeah, yeah it... I've, I haven't used them ever since. Fuck them. That reminds me. Oh yeah, the the one. Um, there was a freaking uh a uh, porn company like uh what would it be uh, a hentai company that made uh like it was like Western versions of of uh, like Japanese content, like basically Western people making essentially Japanese hentai games. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember who who what their name was, but like I like the they other basically came out. Like wasn't it Western I don't characters remember. being Japanified? Like I remember, there's a Jason uh, Voorhees waifu figurine. I know. I don't remember, but whatever the company was, mm -hmm. they they were making that kind of head time games, and they they went pro Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, if you, uh, if you don't support Black Lives Matter, like effectively, we don't want you as our customers. And I was like, fucking wow. Yeah. And I basically I retweeted them and I was like, this is like one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Like you're objectively saying if you don't want like, well, like, I, I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was like, wow, this is the craziest thing I ever seen. And they blocked me on Twitter. And I was like, I guess I'm never buying from you again. <laughs> was it Manga Gamer? Was it? I don't think it was Manga Gamer. That would be crazy. I don't think it was them. It was some it was some. um. Was I it, don't remember who it was. Was it J-List or? No, it wasn't J-List. No way. That guy's an absolute boomer. I he stay he stays he gives that a wide berth. Yeah. Uh, I forget his name, Peter or something, but he gives that a wide berth. Probably for the best. Um, I I don't remember the name of that company. I just remember that that they. We're creating like hentai games effectively. Mm -hmm. And they kind of had like a slight left wing bent to them, but out of nowhere, dude, it was just like you're either Black Lives Matter or you we don't want you as our customers. Was it and I or like Nutaku? basically Nutaku maybe? Im Nutaku. I think it's a Faku subsidiary. Or at least my I think it might have been them okay. maybe yeah maybe i it, it's been a while and i don't really remember yeah it well let me see i'll go on twitter and i'll see if they blocked me new i guess i'll put that i'll have to put it in google mm. because uh i don't see it otherwise uh twitter oh here we go no, I'm not blocked by them. Hmm. So it's just I a, don't remember. It's just a distribute. Is it Sekai Project? Maybe that might be it. Yeah, because they've been project. they've been a horribly inconsistent company as well. And I backed their Clan Egg Kickstarter years ago. Let me see here, Twitter. Fun fact, guys, to listening: if you have the Clan Egg Kickstarter book in that big collector's edition, my name's in there because I actually backed it. And I'm on the first page. Let's see here. 
I'm on Sekai Games, and they don't have me blocked either, although mm. I don't know if this is the right one. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember Subverse? what it was, but... Was it Subverse? Like the nah, studio nah, FO, not it studio FO? Um, Because they didn't... Their controversy wasn't BLM, it was Arch Warhammer. That was a whole thing. Um, I remember where they were like... Um, it was so wishy-washy. That, that was frustrating. I could have sworn it was BLM. I, I thought that was it. But I'm, I don't see any of these people having having blocked me. Mm. Oh, oh, it might have been Sekai Project. Mm. It might have been them. Did they create a new account or something? No, I think they have... They should have, have just two accounts, I'm pretty sure. Let me just check on Twitter. Because they, they have an at Sekai Games underscore, and then there's another one. Yes, it was Sekai Project. Yes, yep, it was them. Okay, I'm blocked by them. Yes, it was them. I'm not. I, I blocked I, by them, but yeah, yeah, they were it. I I I could have sworn it was BLM, but it might you might be right. It might have been about uh, Arch Warhammer. Well, but that, that was for, they like that melted was down. That was for Subverse, not for Sekai Project. They didn't have anything to do with that. Maybe well, was... I don't remember which it was, but yeah. Sekai Project was the company that basically spazzed out. It might have been Black Lives Matter then, because they, yeah. they have me blocked. And I, w I bought a bunch of their fucking games. Yeah. I had a thing with PQ where they blocked me briefly, because I criticized them for supporting BLM, if you, if you were aware of that. Uh, I don't know. It's been a while since I've done yeah, anything. Yeah, they're, they're one of the they were they were the the publishers that got censored by Sony, um, initially, where they were trying to bring over Omega Labyrinth. Um, they were they had okay. to cancel their game because Sony wanted them to censor just about everything on it. Um, okay. But then after that, um, during BLM, it's like, hey, P we at PCube support Black Lives Matter, and it's like, oh wow, great, I. How much money did I give you guys? Wow. Okay. Uh, not not giving you money anymore. Thanks. And they blocked me. Initially, they unblocked me after the fact. But it's like I don't really care if you unblocked me. I'm just not giving you money anymore. Fuck you. Yeah. Like, well, I you. I don't remember exactly what it was. I it, my memory says it was uh, Black Lives Matter. But mm. I would say to anyone listening to this, do not buy from Sekai Project. Yeah. Do not buy them. Uh, buy anything from them. It doesn't so. help that they still release gimped censored releases anyway. So it's oh, yeah. probably not worth it, yeah. Like they always have a thing about like eighteen plus patches that they really don't really like doing. So Yeah, well if they're not if they want to go down, they can have fun trying to negotiate with the left to get their shit not, you know, have them have a market. Yeah. So hmm. hope you end up in the gutter, you fucking faggots. That's uh, <laughs> that's my opinion. Yeah. If you, and my position is you're on our side or you're on theirs, and clearly they're on theirs. So good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Okay. Um, Be careful who you ostracize. Yep, exactly. Uh, so I was thinking of wrapping up just about now. Yeah. Um, chat, if you have any questions for Louis and myself, please send them in now. Uh, I want to wrap up in the next 15, 20 minutes, if possible, because I, I haven't had good. lunch yet and I'm hungry. We here at Brand support cause and stand against ism. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Well, dude, this is actually worse than that. This for them, Sekai, was freaking literally a fuck the fans moment. Yep. It was literally a fuck the fans moment for them. Yep. Uh, and it's rare. Those are rare. Mm. Yeah, especially these days. I... Um, fuck the fans moments these days don't pay so well. From no, no, they fucking like, don't. Some, like an example I'm thinking of is um, <laughs> like uh, Nexon. They had a they had like this Korean beat 'em up game, like MMO beat 'em up game, and they mm -hmm. and they said, um, oh, we had feedback from people that said it's a cool game, but I don't want to play in front of my kids, so we have to censor it for the people who play it at night when their kids are asleep anyway, and we we're not gonna uncensor it. And guess what? The game shut down, <laughs> like five months yeah. after it launched it's like wow big okay. surprise yeah who would have guessed well it, it's just it's just i mean that isn't really a fuck the fans moment that is just a total out of touch retard moment where they it's a fandom audience moment basically they're chasing yeah. a fandom audience yeah uh 
I I don't really know what's wrong with people in corporate atmospheres. I hate the corporate atmosphere, so I never want to be one. I learned that yeah. over time. Uh, unless I basically was in charge of it. You know, that would be the only way that I'd ever tolerate being in that atmosphere is that I have some amount of power because yeah, uh, me too. it seems like it, it seems like the, cor- the corporate atmosphere is basically you have really competent people at the top. Typically, from my experience, there's some really competent people at the top. They're like 90 hour working weeks, you know, a workaholic types <laughs> and the people below them and in middle management are like a combination of either decently competent or like i've been here 30 years and i'm literally fucking retarded and cannot do anything but i've been here 30 years and i'm untouchable yeah and um, if any if i fuck up anything you're taking the blame yeah i remember um mark kern um or uh the former wow guy um he's cool by the way i i think his game should be should be worth supporting um he I i remember him saying one of the issues with big companies is middle management like they're just they're just in the way all the time and i think that's um i think a good example of having no middle management was when uh they where the guys created doom um back in 1994 um like that like that kind of like okay it's just a bunch of guys getting together it's like no one's really overlooking them that much kind of thing it's like we're just gonna make a cool fun shooter game and oh look we revolutionized the industry kind of thing and i think middle management would actually have gimped that that particular series initially yeah um yeah grums mark kern uh former world of warcraft developer he's working on a game called ember it's pronounced yeah it's a yeah. mecha kaiju game and i i haven't supported it yet i i, I need to eventually when i can <laughs> I'm not too I'm not too hot on mecha games, so if it comes out, I'll give it some thought. But I'm not really big on mecha games. It, so one of the things we'll I one of the things I focused on was like really good smooth movement, like being able to slide across the ground and fly and all that, because you're fighting giant kaiju with other people. So they put a big focus. Yeah, on I mean, it looks things. interesting. You know, yeah. I I follow the guy and all that. All I know is it like if I I thought about this a while ago, but if I were to make a game, it would basically be. Uh, I, and I think I can make this into like a real hit. It would basically be com- combined factors of GTA and basically Life is Strange. Like, imagine oh, Life is Strange <laughs> as like an unbelievably like crazy fucking intense game that is effectively a narrative game, but it has like a kind of like bully open world atmosphere, you know, oh, aspect yeah. to it. That'd be cool. Can the but main character? It's... Can the main character be Nick? Nick twenty twenty. <laughs> no, no, it would oh, basically, please, if I had to on. do it, it would be create your own character. Oh. I think that that would be a, a okay, either then default your best friend, or create your, your own character. Your best friend should be Nick. That's who he should be. Sure, he should be sure. Friend. Hell yeah. But it, it would basically that. be that. It would be a, a, a Life is Strange environment, and it could be a variety of at, like settings. But mm. it would be that aspect of sort of like over-the-top, uh, slightly satirical aspect of GTA because that is in part what made GTA such a fucking massive property mm-hmm. is that it was over the top and exciting. And I think that a lot of games are either boring, they take themselves too seriously, or they are like just generally mediocre. Like, mm. I think this is very true for Ubisoft games. Yeah. Where they are very they're just generally undercooked like every fucking game like even when they have very like provocative concepts provocative ideas they never fucking follow through with any of it and i'd also say that's kind of true for cd project red yeah uh so we got a question from noir saying how do you think society would be now if we didn't have a rating system in gaming like the esrb now uh, I just want to follow up with that by saying, uh, actually, Louis, you've changed my mind on rating systems over the years. I remember you saying a long time ago that the ESLB and all that shit should just be scrapped entirely because it just gets in the way. Yeah. It's, it's shit. I w- back in the day, I didn't quite agree with you, but I'm at the point now when I'm like, yeah, let's go, let's defund the classification well, board, let's throw them the fuck out. I don't need it's... to fuck them, kind of thing. It's a scam. Yeah. Like, no matter which way you look at it, it's a scam. 
it's so obvious when you actually do any kind of research into it that in the American context, I'm sure the the actual like there's variations of bad. And in Australia, it's quite obvious what the bad is. It's fucking random asshole apparatchiks who are like, I don't know what the fuck's in this game, but I don't think you need to have it. So it ain't coming here. By the way, this same game, this other game that is all the exact same things, except for they might be worse. Okay, that game's getting the green light. Come on in. It's it's just random. It's just random as far as like the it's the, so roll, roll a die. Yeah, the way I, I learned that some people talked about the actual submission process. Like there was a guy who was in the board um, and left it a while ago, but he said um, when they get game submissions, it's just a written document. They don't see the game. They don't play the game. They don't do anything. They just get the written document and then they compare it to the rules. Um, and then they just ban it because yeah. usually for drug, for drug related things, that's what they usually do. Okay. Um, but yeah, they, well, don't, they don't do anything like that. So how, would, in... how would we be different? Um, how would society be different if we didn't have any of that? Um, I don't know really what the impact is on society. I think there, I think you would see the like video games cause violence, that sort of thing. That would be way worse hmm. that you would see it be an issue on the right again. I would be very confident in that, that the right would be talking about video games because it seems like it is that the chum aspect. It mm -hmm. is that red meat, useless, pretend to be doing something kind of issue that if the ESRB didn't exist and wasn't like to total corpo scam, that the the right wing basically won't attack because it's it's our ideal. It's a It's a monopoly that we created and has total control and has total control over the market. Yeah. Isn't that good? Uh, so the right has no real argument anymore outside of video games, bad, get married so you can be a fucking, so we can tax you. So you know, get, that's pretty get, much the right. Get position. married, have no opinion afterward. Just work. Yeah. Kind of pretty thing. much. Yeah. Get, get married, have kids vote for us, pay taxes. That's, kind of the right wing's position when it comes to a lot of things that's why what, what gets in the way of philosophy carl just in case you're watching um, this well it isn't it you. isn't really dadism it's uh, really yeah. fucking cynical conservatism it's yeah. a really cynical form of conservatism yeah i'm just i'm it's, just poking, I'm it's, just poking it's, fun because he likes to talk about being a dad i'm like yeah okay i don't really care sure like, good for you. um I, I would say that the only reason I'll push back on that is because I think that it comes from another aspect of conservatism that is in many ways just cynical. It is it is really yeah, I agree. just um, they don't really care. They just the only way in which they care is, you know, hold on, re re correct your mic real quick. OK, thank you. The the only way in which they care. Is you we can't get you to do what you want you what we want you to do yeah we want you to do x you're doing y so therefore we're going to say whatever we think is going to get it get you to do what we want you to yeah that's that's the problem they have you're doing y so we'll take y away from you yeah yeah exactly <clears throat> that's really the problem they have yeah and they're doing currently the same thing with pornography it is a really fucking stupid argument that I've seen coming from the right about pornography because it's kind of it's not really the it it thing, but it's always kind of like lumbering around in the background. Yeah, they, the anti pornography aspect of the right, yeah, and that, it's the yeah. arguments are really fucking stupid. Yeah, they what they do is they take legitimate issues like sex and child trafficking, and then they say porn bad on brain, therefore ban it, gone, bye bye kind of thing that's yeah a, that's and a, they 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 don't they don't, they they don't, don't limit address themselves. the issue of usage yeah they don't yes. limit themselves uh and it's not a persuasive argument i no, i've seen not. people debate it it's not a persuasive argument and the thing is is that the problem is from my perspective it isn't even like defending porn or principle it's i don't want the right to win hmm I want the right to win. You've got a good anti-porn argument, by all means, let's hear it. But you got a shitty one, shut the fuck up. Exactly. I want to win. Good argument or shut the fuck up. Yeah, I literally made a whole video debunking um morality and morality and media when they did the whole steam, the whole valve thing, if you remember that happening. That was when they went after a bunch uh, of porn games. Yeah. Yeah. I I made, yeah. I literally made a whole 40 minute video just debunking so many things that they did it was like oh well video games called sexual assault 
you have no evidence. Here's the actual evidence saying it does the opposite effect kind of thing. That uh, yes. did a whole thing. It, I mean, that. it literally, it, it makes people, like, it, it, if it influences anything, it, inc it influences being an antisocial shut-in. It mm -hmm. influences you to go rape somebody. Give me a fucking break. Mm -hmm. But you know what's funny about that organization is that all their arguments are through a left wing lens. Yeah, they, I they cooperate that. with them. Yeah, they they talk, they said as much. So it's like, oh yeah, we adopted this to make ourselves more palatable in today's society. It's like, and yeah. realize that those people there are actually conservative. Hmm. The people that run that are actually conservative. So yeah, realize yeah. once again, yeah, the Jesuit snakes, people. snakes. There's snakes in the room. There's snakes that claim to be on our side. And they are going to stab us in the fucking back. They're going to bite us. Be aware. So that's one of the big things on the right that needs to change is be aware of the snakes in the room that are ready to bite us. Yeah. Um, and uh, got to wake the fuck up about it. Jimmy Holes uh, mentions Brittany Venti. And that, that kind of logic with porn is like, yep. Uh, she had a whole she had a whole thing with VTubers where she said they're promoting pedos. And, and everyone just told her to shut the fuck up and go away because no one cared about what she said. I... I listened to her. She did, I think, one or two videos on it, and I'm confident I listened to one of them. And yeah, the problem, replay. yeah, the problem, uh, if I remember correctly, because this was a while ago, was that the argument itself was just erroneous. Yeah, that I I was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt, and I just really wish that she would have approached it in a better way and thought about it more and constructed it better it was really one of those kind of videos that you really want to construct and i think that unfortunately when people basically shit on her she basically doubled down and was like no fuck all of you it's like ah like and the end result the, of the, that by I, the way is she got threatened with a defamation lawsuit so oh by who uh by by cover hollow life the the people in charge of oh, a lot of the really? yeah she got threatened with a lawsuit for defamation um because wow. she was saying um gal gooda which is the the vtuber girl she's a shark yeah the girl. shark the shark girl yeah. um she was going on about how they're promoting pedophilia and they're trying to attract pedophiles and yeah she got she got hit with a, a, a legal threat for that so I don't, I don't know if wow. she said anything since then, but I think I remember her mentioning it's like, but I got a thing from them and it's like, well, you, you kind of fucking deserve it. Don't you? <laughs> I don't know. That, that's yeah. Just, that's just I, I mean, opinion. I, I would be, I would be a lot more sympathetic if the argument itself was, was better constructed and you, if you're going to come out, if you're going to go that hard, you got to have some solid fucking evidence to go that hard. Yeah. And which is why if you yeah. don't mm. you got to be tepid you got you got to enter something and float an idea because it's a lot easier to defend you even if i think you're wrong if you're actually trying to put forward an argument and say listen this isn't something i can just prove this isn't something that i fully vetted but this is an opinion i have let's talk about it i think that it would have been far more palatable in that sense to defend that kind of argument and say listen just because somebody is putting forward this argument doesn't mean you need to shit all over them yeah because i i think what the the lowly thing is that the the obvious nature of it is is that that there are going to be pedophiles that consume the product yeah i don't think i don't think anyone but, denies that what people have what people always have a problem with is saying if you like it, you're also a pedo. And it's like, well, no. Yes. That's, 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 and the that's problem not, is, no, is that, a connection. It, no. and, and this is the, the big argument that I've had with several people and the, the big blow up that I had with Dank and yeah, and all that, which he, when it came to which he has is, changed his mind on, which is good. He He's like one of the few people who actually wanted yes. to change his mind. Uh, Brittany and a bunch of, and the, the Sterling Griff people, the, the politicians, they will never change their mind on the issue ever. Yeah. Like well, never, never, I, never. I can tell you that with Dank, uh, not only is he a, a very a very friendly person to me in real life, uh, mm -hmm. very, very, uh, more than just chill, just very like a warm kind of personality, Yeah, uh, which you wouldn't expect mm -hmm. with this kind of like, you know, uh, stature and tats and all that, that uh, you wouldn't expect it. But man, he's a very friendly guy. And I can tell you with him, the differences I would say that, or oh, I don't really want to insult anyone. But uh, with Dank in particular, I can tell from talking to him, the guy's sharp. 
Okay, this this is not like a slow witted person. Dank mm-hmm. is a pretty quick witted person. Yeah. And I would say that he was speaking from his own experience to something that he was fairly unfamiliar with that he hadn't really put a lot of thought into. And mm-hmm. when I talked to him about it, he actually started considering the the serious implications of it and the fact that the people that he would see himself more sympathetic with, I guess you could see more emotionally. The problem is, is that they don't actually distinguish anything. There is no distinction for anything. It could be like um, any kind of like general anime or any kind of manga where there is no sexual dimension to it at all. Mm-hmm. It is cute girls that fit the dimension of Loli just doing cute things. It's totally slice of life and innocent. Mm-hmm. There's nothing about it that's sexual. It is totally innocent. And there, it, like the problem is we can distinguish that where there is legit straight up like crazy fucking hentai shit that exists out there. Yeah. And I, I and used then to there's on, like, I used to be on the anti lolly argument side back when I was a feminist, this was many years ago, but I used to be on that side, mm-hmm. but I've since changed my opinion. Um, quite radically where I'm, well, well, I'm all, all on the whole lolly is free speech thing. I'm way on that yeah. side. Yeah. Well, the, the issue is, is that it's pretty much just the, the 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 all the things you're confronted with as it relates to that particular issue are things that can apply so easily to just everything else mm-hmm. and the fact is it's so like I, I it's been a while since i've laid out the arguments but it's basically the the whole imp- the whole idea of regulation of standardization the actual gradient setting the standards well who do you put in charge like there's so many problems revolving around that, that even if you were to take the side of, well, no, it needs to be regulated, you've just created a problem by which that you're just going to be censoring art and there is going to be no recourse. And you you only feel that way because you think this is gross. And it's like, now yeah. you've just opened the door to apply that to every fucking thing else. Exactly. And that's why obscenity needs to be removed from your constitution. Like you, like well, you, it's from you have the ability um, to get rid of it eventually, because you yes, you decide the First uh, Amendment, and you need people that will actually go to court and be like, no, First Amendment. But a lot of them yeah. go with plea deals, and that's a problem. Yes, well, that's that's in particular the lowly issue itself is that people take plea deals because yeah. they're desperately afraid. And I, under this administration, man, I don't know. Maybe you should take the plea deals. Yeah, because fuck, man, if the difference is. You get some, you know, you get a fucking uh, a rigged courtroom full of fucking retards that are it's like it's basically idiocracy where everyone's retarded. And I mean, what what can you do uh, with this Supreme Court as well? Full of fucking, you know, it's a conservative majority, except for all the conservatives that are there are useless. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not a good time for that in that sense. Uh, so basically. uh you got to really pick your battles, but the reality is of the actual law itself around that. And there's a bit of a distinction between the, the, the lowly issue, what it, which is in federal law. Yes. Um, but it's also the issue of obscenity. Like that's basically the standard by which that it's, uh, it's upheld mm-hmm. that the problem is that obscenity itself as, as basically a legal definition is, is subjective. It's morally there based. is a false yeah. yeah it's morally based and there's this false notion of no this actually is like a real serious standard and everything that I've read around it it is literally it is literally assertion like mm-hmm. that is its basis is just everyone saying no it's true no it's serious no it, like it is people just re- reiterating all one after another that it's a serious standard if you look at the gradient it is it is purely subjective mm-hmm and all you need is guess what hey guess what biden packs the courts and uh all right-wing thought is obscene uh, is obscene yeah there you go country's over first amendment's done you know or, it's or not i even i don't know it's why like no one talks about opinions of violence they're all incitement to violence they could just say that as well if they really well, want to be a um no because it. It, it doesn't have it doesn't have the actual standing that the standing under the Supreme Court in the United States is 
you could, you can and ba- basically incite a mob and get away with it under Supreme Court precedents. Hmm. The problem, so there's a lot of leeway there, even under su- the Supreme Court. And even under the useless court that we have now, they probably would still enforce that. But all you need is uh, th- somebody intelligent to pack the court or they get it through legitimate means as eventually these people die off or quit and they they stack the court through you know going through the process because they control congress and the white house and they literally overnight say all right-wing thought is obscene and it's literally game over in a day Hmm. and i don't know i don't know why no one has thought of that but me i have not ever seen anyone raise the issue and i think it is because that the right wing are the defenders of the uh they defend the obscenity standard yeah and, they introduced um, it. yeah yes it benefits them and it, it does benefit them because i think they want to use it to start legitimately going after pornography yeah like they they want to start taking down like basically the sort of stupid laws they have in the uk about like spanking and yep. shit like that about women and all that the conservatives in the United States want to do the same thing. Yep. And the way and, they want to do it is through obscenity as a precedence. And that's why and yeah, that's why conservatism is just not a winning ideology because they because they would rather because they're so they they want to use the government um for a problem that is for the individual to sort out for themselves, minus child porn, which that should be where the state comes in. Sure, but, they want to apply but that's it for everything they, else they as well. They literally created a new standard related to because they had the issue of like ch- child sexual exploitation, which is its own thing. Yes, but then they had the issue of basically distributed illicit material that was related to um, a performance. So it yeah. literally wasn't the actual sexual abuse itself, or even I I, I can't remember the exact thing, but it was basically like paraphernalia or, or or advertisement for the sexual acts featuring a minor mm-hmm. and they created a standard to say and i believe it's the ferber standard that any material that involves the actual exploitation of a child is itself illicit material and is therefore banned and it is based around the concept of the living breathing actual person that is being exploited in that you know the creation of that material yes which and is that is cutie, a cutie far, should be banned under that in my opinion yes it cutie is a gone. far better standard it is it is a legitimate substantive objective standard and that is the exact kind of standard you want to have in law Absolutely. because there is no negotiation there is no twisting it there is no manipulating it and getting around it it is simply that standard and the beauty, you know, or I guess not the beauty, but the horrific irony is, is that the thing with drag kids and all that cabaret shit that's going on, it violates that standard. That is not constitutionally protected expression or speech. That is specifically set up with existing precedents as being not constitutionally protected. Mm-hmm. But the reason why it's allowed, look at where it's going on. Seattle, San Francisco, New York City. It, it is literally getting back to the to the primordial. If you you have laws, if they're not enforced, you have no laws. So it might not be it might be illegal, but if no one's enforcing it, guess what? It's going on and it's permitted. So those laws just don't mean anything. Yeah. For real, to wrap up with a real clown world statement from Abrahamic religions, bow before hate. Uh, he says, cuties legal, light novels banned. What a country. Yeah, in Australia, we gave cuties the second highest classification rating, which is MA, 15 plus. Uh, yeah. So not even R-rated, not even X-rated, not even banned, MA. So that means teenagers yeah. legally can watch basically real child porn on Netflix. Yes. Fucking it, Hong it, Kong. I... It, 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 that was one of the most stomach churning things I've ever seen in my life. And yeah. I've seen a ton of shit that's like crazy, like snuff shit and all that. Like the, the fucking New Zealand shooting and all that. Like, yeah, 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 you know, right. I've seen some pretty fucking crazy shit in my lifetime, but man, I watched that and I, I, it's been a while since I've done the review, but I literally had to pause that film several times. It was so bad. And I'm yeah, I, you said and you for real. Like, yeah, you gagged. I remember you saying, yeah, it, it was so bad and i um 
I, I, I just, I couldn't believe it. And, uh, I don't know. It's just funny that that kind of stuff is something that is encroaching. Although the way the French are going, I don't know how much further they're going to be tolerating that kind of thing. <laughs> I think the generals might p- pipe up and have something to say about that kind yeah, of stuff because maybe, the person who made that video was a Muslim. actually say, no, child point bad, actually. <laughs> that that guy uh, or the girl that made that film was a Muslim activist. Yeah. That's who made that film was a Muslim activist. Mm. Maybe and, that's a uh, there. <laughs> hmm. uh, well, it, I don't know. It's basically that it's that merger. It's like Islamo leftism. Yeah. It's it really is true. And that is one of the things. Like that is one of the things that came from those people who came from France. That was one of the things that they were playing with was um the rejection of the idea of the age of consent. Mm-hmm. That was one of the things that they if you go read their shit, uh you can go look this up. They explicitly rejected that idea. Yeah, did they? Because it was basically a boundary. Didn't they also talk about how it's like, oh yeah, um, playing with kids is a sexual thrill because you get really close to touching their genitals and shit. And it's like, ew, dude, fuck off, no, just shut up, kind of thing. Like, I, I swear uh, it's been a while that. since I I've read any of the things that I've been passed my way from those sort that of. That was like, a passage um, I saw, and I just wanted to fucking die. It was so bad. It's the post. It's the postmodernists. If you yeah. go read their material, that is one of the things that was like. I don't want to say universal, but was disproportionate, was the rejection of the age of consent. Yep. And it's why, like, I'm very, I am very suspicious now about anything as it relates to children when it comes from them, because it is, it's always, you have to just assume that these people are evil. And that is almost always the true case of what the reality is, Mm -hmm. because it's always some maneuver. It's always some power play. It's always yep. a tactic. It's always for some other purpose. And it's just rules for radicals made real. And uh, you have to understand that these people, I, like people would call them moral relativists, but I would just say that they're immoral. Like mm. they celebrate immorality. They are all universal hedonistic. Yeah, they and use, I don't they know. use moral relativism to subvert you and put their own thing in place. Yeah. That's what that actually is. It's, yeah. They don't actually that's, believe that's good in way of the relative um, cultural differences being like a yes. equal moral value. They just want you to die. That's they just – that is go. a tactic. I, I agree with you. Yeah. I think that's a very good way of putting it. And I would say that the the thing – it's one of the reasons why I've said for quite a while that I am a, an, a, an opponent of hedonism because i think that that is something they want Mm -hmm. and the issue with like that sort of mindset and that sort of philosophy is like why wouldn't you stop with the sexual abuse of children like what is the real limitation that you have to stop exactly there they that that's something i've i've been thinking about a lot as well with my own thing is like okay what is my limiting principle on x topic and i always make sure there has to be at least something that makes yeah. it consistent, something I can cling to. It's like, yeah, this is the standard I operate on. Um, yeah. And, and the, the only do that. Their standard yeah. is just the, their standard. They don't have any other yeah. standard. It's just what I want. It's, it's power. Thing. That's their standard. Power yes. by whatever means or mm-hmm. by any means. You know, it's just what, what can, what gets us power? Well, that's the thing to do. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty mm-hmm. transparent that that's where they are. Uh, and in in the case of that sort of um uh uh issue itself it's just one example of the greater issue and it's why i dichotomize it between sides is i i'm never going to see myself as on the same side as the people that are having little boys basically you know set themselves up in a position where they are a suicide waiting to happen like that is the thing with drag kids. That is that is the inevitable outcome, and everyone knows it. That they are going to be fucked up, and that they are a suicide waiting to happen. Yeah. And I, I, I just look at it, and it is sexual exploitation of children. It is. It is just legitimately, definitionally that. Yeah. And I don't know why you think we have common quarter with them, uh, and so that I would say that to the people that would would push back uh, towards us that, you know, the centrist TM thing, that's what I would push back on them with. 
What? But you, at the same you time... To, you want to kick out the people who think drag kids are fine? You're just as bad as the SJWs. Like, yeah, yeah, but the, the same thing to the right, I would say that, um, as they would say, well, you might say, but you're still degenerate on the porn issue. It's like, well, you guys have to understand that you aren't going to fix the the drug you haven't fin you haven't fixed the drug issue by banning drugs no. you haven't fixed the whatever other issue let's just say porn is an example for the you haven't fixed that by let's say you banned it you wouldn't fix it it was overnight you'd have a massive black market and the problem is is that if you actually want to get people to uh i guess masturbate less or use less pornography whatever or uh, play less video games, or smoke less, or drink less, or whatever, do drugs less, you actually have to start at the source. Mm -hmm. You actually have to start at the the impulse to want to do whatever X is. And you have to give them an, the, the option to choose something else and for that to be the plausible choice. And I think one of the... Uh, the biggest black pills, if you want to, is the there were statistics that just came out the other day, and it's basically like you know, uh, America's ba uh, birth rate is now equivalent to like Japan. Like no one's having kids, hell, no really. one's getting married. It's just it's done. It's gone. It's it's record lows every single time they they do the stats. Fuck, I didn't think it's it was record that bad lows now. every single time. Jesus. Um. And the I'm not surprised by that, especially with the, sh the lockdown. Um, but it's literally at record lows. It is way below sub uh, sub replacement. Mm -hmm. It is like 1.41 or something. So it's way below replacement. And the marriage rates are crumbling. The rate of being like single and virginal and all this are skyrocketing. Yeah. Like all the numbers are the worst conceivable thing. If you are a conservative, if you want people getting married, getting into relationships, getting together, having children, being stable, they are all in the opposite direction that you want. And they literally have nothing but demonizing men mm. to get the, those stats to change. It's literally I've seen this from several people that are all are self-described conservatives. They have nothing to change those numbers and it's why they're not addressing the source they're not addressing the source why why are women not getting married why are men not in, in getting into relationships why are men choosing porn over relationships they just refuse to address any of the things that could be a source and it, it, eventually with the nationalist right if they take power, porn is going to become a, a wedge issue. It's going to become an issue that's popular. To, it's going to try to. It's going to be like a unifying thing for the right in America. Mm. That you're going to have the people that are like nationalist light or not really that conservative, but this is a, a a chum issue that they can jump on. It's just a red herring they could throw out there and say, "Yeah, fuck porn." And you're going to have the nationalists and the conservatives who are vehemently anti-porn, like they are unbelievably against pornography and i've listened to them talk about it and that is that is in the background that is waiting in the wings in the united states is that we have a very serious anti-pornography movement coming you know no pun intended yeah uh <laughs> and they're gonna be dead fucking serious if they get control of congress that's coming that is coming they're there that movement is waiting to rear its head and part of it is trying to get men to marry women that is part of it and the issue is is that like you know in my lifetime i have had sex with women and those relationships were not very good and the problem is is that literally i had a choice between continuing to have sex and being in a not good relationship or breaking up and I chose bro breaking up Based. more than once. <laughs> and it's like, the issue is, is that like with conservatives and it's like, oh yeah, don't you want to get that pussy? It's not good enough. Yeah, exactly. It's not good enough. 
And I, I, it's one of those things where I think that this is one of the positive aspects of being a liberal in the right wing movement is that they really, 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 really don't want to take up the issue of like identitarian male politics. Like they'll, they'll have like all the idea of, and I've seen Darren Beatty sort of have an offshoot of this. He's like a right wing thinker who worked for Trump. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, policy wonk guy and he has aspects of this of like and so is nick fuentes he's touched on this too of in their own ways of like i'm gonna be uh nick fuentes's example is i'm gonna go to the gym i'm gonna get ripped i'm gonna be the strongest slave in the corporate plantation <laughs> and darren Beatty's is the same thing i'm gonna be the biggest strongest macho man who's going to salute the rainbow flag and die for nothing overseas. Yeah. Like it's that thing. And conservatives have a real problem with that. They do. Yeah. Of their only aspect of being a man is being a fucking simp. Mm -hmm. Literally. It's being this state. Chad, like this, it's being this like statist, uh, simp, uh, you know, like they're the ultimate like fedora tipper for women, you're the ultimate fucking status. Like it, it, it's something that's outmoded. It's obsolete. And yeah. it's, it's not it's appealing because I, I also remember what was her name? Lindsey Graham. She was a girl who got hounded by a university for sharing Jordan Peterson. Oh, her, her, the, the, yeah, the, she had the one chick. Um, yeah. She had a thing where she's like, ew, porn, bad and gross. Ew. My boyfriend has never watched porn. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Bitch. Yeah. Sure. Sure. He yeah. Didn't. He never watched porn. Okay. Yeah. All right. You just die on that hill while we go and try to actually do something else and not complain about that. Okay. You know. Yeah. She, uh, she really killed her own relevance. Yeah, she, she did. But like, I was a big, I was a pretty big fan of her generally. It's like, oh yeah, she's a pretty cool girl. She, she's like, she's right on these issues. And then it's like, ew, porn bad. It's like, okay, bye. I don't really care if you think yeah. I'm bad. I, it's, it's, well, it's like literally I say, literally going to be a losing issue for you, but whatever, you know. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not a winning issue. It's it's something that is, according to conventional wisdom in society, I think, relatively from what I understand, most people view it as a vice, which I think is correct. I think the category, the categorization, is right. Yeah, but I agree with that too. It, the the problem is, is that. It's basically like we have a problem with heroin. Well, okay, you can ban it, but is that going to stop the impetus for people to do heroin? No, because I'm never going to do heroin because I'm scared of it. I think it's dangerous, and I'm I don't you know I care about my life. Like those are the things. Yeah, uh, I've, I've had no I've had no drive to try any drugs. I've I've never had that like incentive. The, or anything. I've, I've just the not only in trying it. The only temptation that I've ever had was I've had several opportunities to to do weed, and I I I basically it's a combination of being afraid and also like legit. Uh, uh, I have like I have a very negative view of stoners, hmm. and even though I had friends that were stoners in the past, like I had a negative view of being a stoner. Uh, the only real, like the real temptation was I went to, I don't know how well you followed me this, but I talked about, I know I've talked about this more than once. I've been subscribed I, I went since, to, since you started on YouTube. Okay, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> um, going to a few ho uh, college house parties and being offered Coke more than once. Okay. And I, that was probably the closest that I've been tempted because uh I didn't have that negative bias towards downers. I don't like downers. Like when I get, when I get, uh, I drink a lot of alcohol. It's basically 80% of the time I start feeling sick or I feel sad. Hmm. If I drink enough, I either feel sick or I feel sad. Maybe about 15% of the time. Like I just go from, I, I, it's like, a, uh, I just become very confident and very loose and not really manic, but just, uh, very confident. I try to start having fun, enjoying myself. Like that's that's about fifteen percent of the time if I'm pretty liquored up. Yeah. So you do it during um, weren't you drinking during some of the Life is Strange two streams? I think you were a couple of times. Um, I stopped drinking at one point. Yeah. And 
outside of having a beer with a meal, I don't really drink much at all anymore. Yeah. Although uh, I can click very close to restarting last year. That's all I can say. Yeah. And what, at some point, uh, uh, one of the things that I used was just uh, uh, the problem that I had was drinking beer as like just a daily fucking habit. Yeah. And I really started to dislike that. I really started to dislike the habit I formed around drinking beer every single day. Hmm. And uh, I noticed it progressing, like getting worse and drinking more every day. And I was like, yeah, this is becoming a legit problem. I need to fucking stop. Hmm. Uh, the only thing that I can say about alcohol is that uh, I enjoy a, a good beer, a good beer with like a, a sort of a hearty meal. And that liquor sometimes uh, can definitely crack the ice uh for social situations and for like evening you out hmm. like that i think is a defense of liquor is that if you have problems with being in a social venue or social situation or even if you're like you're very worried about something you're nervous or whatever you're having problems sleeping i i would suggest that rather than you know flipping a coin on uh you know uh uh what is it like Tylenol PM and those sort of things like uh, nighttime AIDS, whatever Right. that sometimes like a couple shots or a few shots might actually like even you out and genuinely make you feel better. The difference is between dealing with the source of the stress. Yeah. I, and yeah, I found my experience with alcohol has not been that extensive mainly because I can't afford it, but in situations where it's available to me, I don't actually drink that much. And if I, the most I've ever drunk is um, five drinks in about seven hours. So I, I space it out really evenly. Like I don't drink consecutively mm -hmm. one after the other. I always space it out. Um, but I always find it's like you said, it's like, yeah, the, the whole, the whole buzz and how like, kind of like uplifts you. I had that experience um, where I have alcohol and I'm better at speaking. Like I could speak. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. I I've, I've had that. I don't know about it, it, it's. I don't know about clearer in my uh, situation, but well, I was a lot. Like, I don't I was, stutter when I talk. When I like, yeah, when sure. I have alcohol, I don't stutter. It's really weird. Maybe yeah, I, I could see that. I could see that because it it, it uh, because part of that I think is I understand it, is mental, like mm. uh, like a, a difference between you trying to articulate your point and you thinking about the point you're trying to articulate. Yeah. Uh, it breaks down the barrier for me. It breaks down barriers for me where I can just kind of like lower my guard a bit, um, or or try to take a step back from trying to say a certain thing, and then it's like relaxing basically. But I don't, again, I, I don't drink that often, so I I usually do in social situations because I think that uh, it helps me. Uh, it it basically gives me enough positives that. It gives me something to do in the meantime. Uh, I usually try to experiment a little bit when I go out doing, you know, social drinking. I try to order different things to just see what I like or don't like and tend not to like more things than I do. Yeah, I've tried that a couple of uh, times. Yeah. And uh, the thing that I can say that it gives me is basically it allows me to relax in a way that I wouldn't otherwise unless I was around friends mm. that I, there's a few like weird social situations that I was in, um, especially at different events where it was like uh, the thing, you know, the one event with uh, whatever it was uh, blah, 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 Mythicon or whatever a few years ago. And uh, yeah, the thing in Mythicon. Philadelphia, which I think was the same organization, uh, both of which had Sargon. Mm-hmm. The second one had Dank in Philadelphia. That was good. Uh, and I I would, you know, just have a few drinks just to kind of keep me light, you know, just keep me kind of like uh, casual, relaxed, not really worried about anything. Because I'm there. I'm not there to be stressed out. I'm not there to really worry about, you know, what anyone thinks of me or anything like that. So if... You know, you got a couple of drinks in you. It pretty much nullifies that instinct that I would have otherwise. Yeah. And it, it very much allows me to enjoy myself a lot better because what I loved about that is, uh, the, especially in Philadelphia, I had a couple really like, um, I met some really cool people there, but I also had some really awkward encounters with a handful of people. And 
it allows certain awkward situations to be turned into something positive where it was a nice interaction. Mm -hmm. And then I had a couple negative ones where I just basically like the whole filter of me giving a shit about you. It just goes away. And then I just like, I started, um, I don't want to talk too much about it, but basically it was in the after party and it was this one girl and she's trying to cling on to Carl. And I was just trying to hang out with the guy, but he's busy. Everyone wants to talk to him and she's kind of clinging around. And she made like a couple comments to me that were kind of like sneery, like sneering and that she like kind of insulted me. Yeah. And so I just started making fun of her and I just started <laughs> bullying her. And basically I just made the situation. I just made the situation so awkward and I was just so enjoying myself regarding that, that she just got up and left. And I was like, Hey, mission accomplished Fly the banner. Yeah. I'm like touching down on whatever the USS Ronald Reagan, like mission accomplished. Because <laughs> that was controlled. the whole thing is like, I was just there to enjoy myself. Like I met a bunch of cool ass fucking people there. Yeah. You know, I had, I had the one guy that was like basically hosting the event. I was back in the VIP VIP area with dank, just hanging the fuck out. And this guy comes out, he's like, yeah, I need to get the fuck out of here. Because some of Tim's people ratted me out. Tim Pool's people ratted me out. Yeesh. And fuck, and I meet the same guy later in the bar who kicked me out. And him and I just strike up and we have a good fucking, like, serious conversation. It was great. And it was like a couple hours earlier, the guy's like, yeah, you need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so the whole if you're if you're at an after party if you're at a social event you want to enjoy yourself absolutely okay you know well, that's what it's that's what you're there for yeah we'll wrap it up with one last question from okay punk underscore 22 hey two of my favorite youtubers having a casual discussion sweet thank you uh he says do you have any fictional stories that both of you like uh yeah i like i like um i like sci-fi I'm a big fan of sci-fi and giant robots, and um, I like my slice of life stuff. Although that that's a saturated market, so that's kind of a given. Um, I imagine so. I've been, I've been, I read the, I read the Hobbit earlier this year, and I've been meaning to get into the, the rest of the the Tolkien books. I just haven't haven't done it yet because I've been busy with stuff. Yeah, I um, I don't know really if uh, I haven't really been um watching very many things uh yeah. i've watched a few random movies from time to time that i've i've uh, there's only been a few i haven't reviewed on my channel and they haven't really been that interesting at all mm -hmm. um i've just been kind of re like re-watching a lot of things outside of just watching like i i've been consuming a lot of political stuff yeah um i've had to take a break in a lot of ways from that i just can't just can't stomach about a a bunch of channels yeah it, it's crazy. it really it basically and well i gotta say if you listen to like you know the stream that i just had with sargon that's unfortunately one of the side effects is you get a little bit too black pilled yeah you know it kind of pushes you over that edge but it's basically uh, and i said this to him uh that you you pretty much need to uh as i put it like stare into the abyss and gain an understanding hmm that there there really isn't any real stress in that uh you know if if basically everything folds uh you you just need to make sure that you are in the position that you are confident in your own strength mm. that you can rely on yourself or that you have a small group of friends or your family or whatever. Like, even if you don't even have that, and I, it, it, as it relates to my family, it's pretty spotty on that. Mm. But you, you basically just need to um, look past the, 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 the frightening aspects of the, the situation that you're in and in areas like gaming where i think is you're absolutely saying to be black pilled find your joy where you can but in society itself um and i've had a bunch of people actually uh quit my channel like i had a bunch of people unsubscribe and uh, message me over uh um subscribe star like it was at least two dozen people who were like i'm black pilled i'm done i can't take anymore um 
And I haven't really talked about that much, I don't think, but it's been the case. Like I've had a bunch of fucking people quit supporting me because they're blackpilled. Yeah. And if they just said my, you know, content was shit, I'd take that as, you know, or you're not putting out enough, I'd accept that on the chin as well. But uh, I think that that's the case for a decent amount of people is that they're just straight up blackpilled because they think that there's not really uh, a way to recover. But I, I think that basically um, it's all about the... Um, the I, I guess the the positive view is sort of like the the Nietzschean sort of sense of it is that you you need to start with or the Peterson kind of sense of it a, a bit where you need to start with yourself and make sure that at the very minimum you are content enough to the degree that you're not flaming out and all that kind of thing or depressed or suicidal anything like that yeah uh, and it's why I wouldn't begrudge anyone from taking a break from politics itself because. Um, you, you just need to be, make sure that you're content because, um, irrespective of, of the worst things happening, the, the worst conceivable things that can come to mind, you know, in, 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 you know, for a society, for your nation or whatever it is, the worst things that you can imagine, um, you need to get over the shock of, of the, the horror that you see. You need to get past that. You need to move past that. That's part of looking into the abyss is being able to, you know, oh, God, they convicted Derek Chauvin. Oh, God. It's like, well, who cares? Fuck, fuck him. Who cares? Yeah. You know, you know, you, you got to get past that. <laughs> that concept of is it unjust? Yes. Is he literally guilty of committing three murders or two murders in a manslaughter? No. Was it a lynching? Yeah. And I put that on Twitter. But am I am I losing sleep? No, hmm. no. I'm not. I'm not losing sleep over that. I'm not black pilled over that. Yeah, yeah, and I agree. There, ha there you... has to be a there has to be a balance between being aware of issues, which um, this is something I struggled with. Um, it's there's being aware of issues, and then there's um, losing sleep over the issues. And I, I've I've had to yes. kind of I've had to rebalance my life in a way where and my mentality where it's like, okay, yeah, that news does suck. But now I'm going yeah. to now I'm going to go play my my booby ninja game, um, Senran Kagura. I'm going to play that, and I'm just going to have fun and um, not worry about that because if I if I don't, I'm just going to kill myself, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah that, I I that, think that's that... something we all need we all need to do. We need to recalibrate ourselves and unplug from the internet for a bit, like read a book or touch grass is another yeah. thing touch grass yeah i I, yeah. I agree i i agree with that completely and i i would say that this is my current criticism of carl at the moment other than failing to monetize his company to the degree that he can and not working in a way that would make him a millionaire not enough uh it is it, it, it's <laughs> failing to actually uh uh for lack of a better way to say it self-actualize in the way that i think he should and knows better he, i think he knows better that he needs to do this that um Politics is abstract, and so are people getting unjustly convicted or murdered or anything else. You need to be worried about your family. <clears throat> you need to be worried about your friends. You need to start with yourself and be worried about yourself. But in terms of absolute fucking strangers, tragedies happening to them, well, that's, that's humanity. Welcome to it. Welcome to yeah. humanity. Tragedies happen. And the question uh, that you should have is rather than stress yourself out over bad things that occur, um, you need to understand what you can do to actually see positive change in the small ways that you can. Yeah. And that can mean like you're, I think you said you volunteered. Yeah, it could yeah. be as something as, as simple as that. It could be knocking on doors, phone banking, uh, fundraising, donating some money, donating 20 bucks, anything like that. Like uh, doing something like that uh, goes a lot further than um, just complaining about something or being blackpilled. And the other problem with being blackpilled is that while we're whining and we're depressed and we're, you know, tense and we're, you know, all the other negative aspects, our, our, our enemies 
are on the march and they are ideologically possessed. They're all miserable and fucked up and they got everything, you know, they're addicted to drugs and depressed and psychotic and all this shit. And probably and they push through saying how many of them. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're degenerate. The Bullish aspect of life. Yeah. And they <laughs> they fucking push through and they're on the march. And so what I want for people is not to mirror that miserable aspect. I don't want people to suffer. I want people to make sure that they're content with the life that they have, that they can find some kind of happiness, and that if they want to delve into politics, they do so in a manner that is constructive, doesn't have to be in a big way, it can be in a small way, and that there are far... If everyone were to take that advice... If everyone were to to follow that kind of example, to do small things, to uh, it, it could be if you don't have the money, do small things or volunteer in your area. Uh, but if you have the money, go to events and basically whatever your cause is, your cause is your. I guess it is. If I'm using the phrase correctly, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I am actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, it's it's uh, it's very late at night here. Yeah, uh, or early in the morning here. But the, the point is that there's ways in, by which that you can change the world. And you look no further than people volunteering for things, people joining things, people donating money, people raising causes, people trying to create buzz around issues, uh, writing certain things. You know, it's writing, it's memeing, it's, there's a million things that people can do that are all small things, that are positive, that are constructive, that create things. Those things are all great. And a, a good example of this, uh, to bring up Nick Fuentes, another powerful thing that he did was he literally <clears throat> like created a cabal of his own people, went to these, uh, whatever they were, I forget the name of the organization, um, uh, like the two, the student organization yeah, for I, Charlie I find, Kirk. Yeah, I think I know, uh, Turning uh, Point USA. Yeah, Turning Point USA. He got all of his people, he coordinated all of his people to show up to these events and literally just ask questions. Hmm. And it li it literally changed the GOP. Yeah. it All they did was show up to these events and ask questions. Some of them, you know, obviously more constructive than others and real questions. Um, you know, going off about the Jews, to me, is just kind of like, okay, yeah, thanks, yeah, guys. The, the, but, problem, the problem is... Um... I really want to wrap up, but basically, the yeah, problem sorry. is the yeah, it's all right. Uh, the problem is that the alt right can say one or two things that people would generally agree with in a normal context. It's just they also pile it on with, but but did you know that 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 it wanted six million? That kind of thing. It's like yeah, it's like okay. Yeah, they yeah. Unfortunately, there's just kind of a lot of baggage that come with them, yeah. and my hope is with somebody like Nick, is that from what I can when I listen from him. Uh, I do not think that he is a dumb guy and I don't think that he has found himself in that position just out of pure happenstance. Um, I would say that he, he's somebody that I would say is probably not exactly philosophically aligned with myself and that he would, would repudiate a fair number of things that I would uh, believe. Yeah. But the difference is is that he is very well focused on the issue of winning and how much that matters and how much that all of the abstract ideas that have come out of the right don't mean shit. And I think that that is the thing that has really changed the GOP. And I think that's why uh, he, he just got uh, prevented from having a flight. And he got mentioned on Tucker Carlson. Yeah. And it's like, there's a there there. And it's like, does this guy probably believe bad things? Probably so. And I think that his, a lot of his followers are probably the, the crazy Aspie people that Sargon dealt with in the past and so have I in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not nice people and you don't really want on your side and dealing with you because no. they are pretty irrational. But the fact is, is that if somebody comes to your table, if somebody comes to your door with shoes covered in shit and they make a true statement or they ask a question that you can't fucking answer, that is an impetus for you to fix that issue. Yes. 
you can you can say like, well, I don't want to hear that question because they're I don't want them in here because their shoes are covered in shit. But it's like, well, they just asked a question that you can't answer, and they're right fucking there. Yeah. Okay. And it, it's about being more honest. That's all I'll summarize. Yeah. But that it's about being more honest in in solving this issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, thank you so much, everyone. For, for watching 37 that's actually amazing I've, I've never had that many people watching a live stream before uh, during it anyway um mm -hmm. thank you thank you louis for coming on i had a really fun conversation it was a very long conversation but i kind of went into that knowing <laughs> it's it the way happen. it goes <laughs> yep that that happens but that's fine um yeah basically i'll wrap up by saying um weep ethno state now say tell your mom that you love her and fuck the communists and and china and sure. fuck all that shit so i'll just end with that thanks everyone have a good night have a good day and see ya